fire cannon indoors? Oh, that really isn't safe. Is someone there? Hello, am I yelling loudly enough for you? Oh, much better, thank you. I just, ow, ow, what the? I think I just walked into a wall of spikes. Hey, uh, can we get the lights on in here? Look, it's, yeah, it's cute, it's fun. Thanks for this, but, you know, time for the, some lights. Much better, thank you. Oh, hey, it was a cat kiss. Oh, neat. Hello there. Are you the owner? Who's asking? Oh, my name is Cuddles Nutterbutter. I'm here to serve you. <laughs> Don't need no... Lou Waiters, thanks. Uh, serve you papers, I mean? I I'm a private investigator. <laughs> what sort of PI work is delivering papers? Shouldn't you be out investigating? Yes, well, bit of a dry stretch right now, if I'm honest, and this pays the bills. Happens more than you'd think. Well, <laughs> show me a badge, then. Of course, it's right... Oh, uh, where did it go? Uh, actu actually, you know what? I forgot, badges are being discontinued, so don't worry about it. Ms. Ms. None of your business. Miss Business, then I, I have a few questions for you. There's a whole lot of fire around here. Seems pretty unsafe, especially given you sell quite a lot of alcohol. <laughs> you gotta have fire. It's for the ambiance. The ambiance of catching on fire. Customers know the risks. We make it clear when you enter. No, you don't. It's pitch black. There's a whole lot of very loud, unnecessarily dramatic music, and fire keeps exploding everywhere, and one wrong step, and your customers will be a cat kebab. See? You know the risks. Proves my points. This establishment is named the Voodoo Guitar. Is that right? Maybe. What's it to you? I represent the owners of the Voodoo Bar. Yeah, I'm sure you're familiar. The Voodoo-themed bar directly across the street from you? They feel, and I agree, that you, you copied not only their concept, but, well, everything, basically. Oh, yeah? They gotta prove it then, don't they? Ah, oh, I see you are a cat of some legal knowledge. Past experiences, is my guess. The yeah, thing is, from what I've seen of this establishment, it, it won't be difficult to prove. Do you really want this to go to court? You ain't got nothing on me! Yeah, we'll see. You have a sign outside your bar. It says, we're the voodoo place that don't serve no cursed margaritas. <sighs> Care to explain? Means we don't got no cursed margaritas? Firstly, that hasn't cleared anything up. Secondly, it's slander. It's true! No cursed drinks in here. That's our guarantee. The voo... The, the guitar guarantee, yeah. You obviously just made that up. More to the point, there are no cursed drinks in my client's bar either. What even is a cursed margarita? Uh, instead of lime juice, it's got the souls of the damned. Miss Business, my clients do not add condemned souls to their drinks, as I think you well know. Yeah, but like, how can we be sure? <laughs> they don't have a sign. That's not... what? That, 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 that doesn't even... Well, I, I don't see any guitars in here, so your, your whole name is a lie clearly ripped off my client's entire concept and just picked a word that rhymes with bar. Guitar's a state of mind, though, isn't it? Uh, the voodoo guitar is totally different from all other voodoo-themed outlets. Yeah, if you ignore all the bits that are identical. Uh-huh. Every single thing I can see in here is a direct copy of the interior of my client's bar, except for your obsession with fire. How do you explain that? They must have come in and taken pictures when I wasn't looking. Oh, those jerks. Just full of answers, aren't you? And, and what about us? 
I'm just about done copying the voodoo boss menu. There, there, there. Right, someone just said they're duplicating my client's menu. Uh, no, it's uh, rats. It's rats in the walls. Right, rats. Right, rats. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, it's weak. Uh, it feels weird talking to that mask. Can you take it off, please? Yeah, I can't do that. Our clients expect it. It calms them. If you're attracting the sort of clientele for whom that mask is calming, you need to work on your marketing. Listen, this is a tough city, okay? There's cats out there working hard to put food on the table, and they come here to relax, and the mask helps. When they leave, I hear them breathe sighs of relief. Yeah, probably just glad they got through another visit here without being set on fire. Hardly anyone has been set on fire at the Voodoo Guitar this month. We got a certificate. I have a cease and desist from the voodoo bar. If you don't comply, my clients will see you in court where, inter alia, you will have to sit in some very uncomfortable chairs in a room with too little air conditioning. It is not a party. Big words don't impress me. Show me the papers. Oh, fine, I will. I need to think. Don't go anywhere. Honestly, I can barely even read the lettering, but not my problem. Here are the papers. I trust this settles the matter. Have your name changed within the week or we'll see you in court. Well, <laughs> not me, I don't go to court, but someone will, and I bet they'll be mean. What if I say I won't accept the papers? That's not up to you here. No, no. All right, fine. I, you you want to be difficult? I'll give the papers to another employee, like this fine fella right here. He seems reasonable. That ain't an employee. That's a cat kiss. He's got a name tag, though. That'll hold up in court. Hello there, Spikey. You've been served. And if I have to come back here to serve more papers to the voodoo mandolin or the voodoo sitar or any other sort of mystical instrument, you'll wish you only had fake rats to worry about. <laughs> Oh. Welcome back, sir. How did it go? Oh, fine, fine. You know, served them the papers. Argued about who copied whom. Walked into a huge cat kiss, you know, the usual. <laughs> I did, though, almost get uh, fried by a fire cannon at some point, so that was exciting. <gasps> a fire cannon? Indoors? That's very unsafe. That's exactly what I said. Not that they cared, but anyway, it's done. Another citizen in need helped by Nutter Butter Investigations. Inform the media. Open the champagne. Oh, well. I really hope something bigger comes along soon, Tabby. You know, I'm being wasted on these tadpole cases. I tell you, there's a full-sized toad of a case out there somewhere with my name on it. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Oh, <laughs> a toad named Cuddles? Well, until that hops along, I have a surprise that should cheer you up. Surprises? I love those. Tabby, man, have I ever told you that your timing is perfect? I could really use a pick-me-up right now. I thought you might. <laughs> uh, it's waiting in your office. Go on in and I'll be there shortly. I'm just expecting a delivery. You're the best, Tabster. I know, sir. Hey, Tabby, I, I started daydreaming and forgot. What do I need to do again? I've left a gift for you in your office, sir. <laughs> Go and get it. Where are you hiding, sneaky little surprise? Cuddles is gonna find ya. Ooh, he's gonna find ya. Yes, he is.
brand new Dyer recorder, as seen on TV, with up to 12 hours of recording time, two playback speeds, and a waterproof casing. <laughs> oh, let's try this out. Dear Dyer recorder, hi there, I'm Cuddles, your new best friend. First things first, I can't just call you Dyer recorder, you need a proper name, or people will think I'm really weird for talking to you all the time. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I used to know a good listener named Ramon. Yeah, and he was on television too, like you. So, Ramon, my assistant Tabby has gifted you to me. I'm pretty sure I know why. She suggested the other day that I need to keep better records of my cases. Well, she actually said that real detectives don't just slap sticky notes on everything to remember critical details. I'm not sure I agree. I actually think the sticky yellow notes on everything system was a huge success. But she went to the effort of buying you for me, so I think we can compromise. I'll record myself with you from now on, and hopefully she'll stop bringing up the time she accidentally ate a sticky note that I put on her sandwich. Cuddles! Sir? Professor Huggy's delivery is here. Uh, I'll, I'll be out in a second. Just um, grab it for me, would ya? That's Tabby now. Kind of new, but determined to make a difference. We get along well. Okay, all done. Enjoying your new dyer recorder, sir? I love it. Thanks, Tabster. My pleasure, sir. Office lunches are safe once more. Yo, whiskers. There goes the phone. Hello? <gasps> Oh, good evening, Chief. Yes, he just fit... Oh, um... Yes, of course. Please hold. Sir, I've got the Chief of Police on the line. He says it's urgent. Oh, he always says that. It was even urgent when they needed an extra person for the interdepartmental volleyball game last week. I got sand in so many places. Ask him to phone back tomorrow, Tabby. Yes, sir, but you were just saying you wanted bigger cases, right? I think this one might be pretty big. He, uh, he said cucumber. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Language, Tabby. <sighs> Whiskers, I I've never heard him curse before. Something must be up. All right, I guess I'd better take this. Patching him through, sir. <coughs> Not better. Hello? Evening, Chief. How's things at Police HQ tonight? Man, in fact, we've got a real cucumber of a situation on our hands. That's some pretty strong language, Chief. How can I help? I just got word of a situation downtown. There's been some sort of disturbance at the Nitty Kitty Club. Not clear yet what happened exactly. I need you to get down there and investigate. That name rings a bell. Isn't it owned by a mob boss or something? Not a mob boss, THE mob boss. Bartholomew Montemue, arguably the most powerful criminal in the city. It's, uh, it's his sleazy castle, and we suspect. A place where his piles of dirty money get cleaned. Ooh, sleazy money, my favorite. If I find any of those piles, can I keep them? Always the comedian, Nutter Butter. You should be more worried about leaving with both legs unbroken. Oh. Any additional details on what actually happened? One of my guys caught wind of something over the tap phone, but it was unclear. Whatever it was, it's got Montemue in a tears. I got a call right after saying Bartholomew was booked a flight home from a holiday trip overseas. We've got a very small window of time before he lands and probably kicks us all out. My guys have bullied their way in for now. That's where you come in, Nutter Butter. I told my officers to play it very cool. I do not want to kick off a war with the Montemukes. You're a neutral party. You can go places and ask questions we can. Got it? Yes, sir. If it's such a tense situation, why get involved at all? If someone's making trouble for mobsters, I say let them at it. There's 
Nutter Butter, don't make me regret calling you second about this. Second? Who do you call first? Wait, was it that hack Alfonso? You know he lost his own car keys for nine months once, right? Oh, he couldn't solve a case if the perp was tied to his collar. Pay attention, Nutter Butter. I called you because your success rate is actually pretty good, and I will deny that if asked by anyone else. You hear? And, uh, because Alfonso is out of the country. I knew it! Focus! Whatever's going down at the Nitty Kitty, chances are it involves a rival mob. If we're really unlucky, it's the Catulets. That's why my people are staying at Pa's length on this. They'll help as much as they can, but you're mostly on your own. The repercussions of the police picking a side in what might be the opening salvo of a mob war. Well, I'd rather not think about it. It probably involves declawing machines and barrels of acid. If it comes to that, I'd rather it be you than one of my guys. I'm sure you understand. Oh, chief, that's so... Uh, well... Actually, that's pretty awful. Did you... Did you say... Declawing... Machine? Well, I'll fax over the documents. I need you on this, Nutter Butter. Don't let me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, how many paws are we talking about here? Like, how many paws are they going through to need a machine to... Do they keep them? Is... Is there a room somewhere just filled with claws? Uh, good night, Cuddles. Uh, good night, Chief. Well? We've got ourselves a big one, Tabby. Safety of the city, lives in the balance sort of thing. Cancel my appointments and get yourself plenty of coffee. I have a feeling it's going to be a busy night. I'm going to head straight to the Decline Club to see what we've got. The, the what? Oh, did I say Decline Club? <laughs> That's certainly not preying on my mind or anything. Ha! <laughs> I meant the Nitty Kitty Club. Well, we don't take midnight appointments, so nothing to cancel there. And I'm already ahead of you with the coffee. But did you say the Nitty Kitty Club? Where all the criminals hang out? Not all of them, Tabby. I'm sure some hang out in dark alleyways and large empty warehouses down at the docks and such. It doesn't matter. This is really going to put me... Us <laughs> on the map. We'll be big time in no time. Well, yes, that's very exciting, sir. But those mobsters, from what I've read in the news, they're real mean. Keep an eye on your back out there, all right? I don't want to see your face on the television tomorrow under the title Missing, Presumed, Chopped Up, and Thrown into the River. You'd better be standing right here in front of me. Don't worry, Tabs. I'll be sure to come back in one piece. We both know this place wouldn't be the same without me. Well, true, but that's not quite what I meant. You've forgotten to pay me this week. Again. But I just realized you don't need all your limbs to sign a check. Ask the nice scary mobsters to go for the legs first, will ya? Oh, Whiskers. I'm, I'm really sorry, Tabster. I promise this is the last time. Uh, my new buddy here, uh, Ramon, <laughs> he's going to make sure I don't forget things anymore. Say hi, Ramon. Hi, Ramon. <laughs> uh, hi. Oh, you named the recorder. <laughs> well, as long as it works. Hey, Tabs, let's have the real chat. How you doing? You know, talk to me. Are you doing well, Tabby? Thank you, sir. So kind of you to ask. I am. How's the case coming along? Oh, investigations are ongoing. <laughs> That's what the cops would say, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Tabby. Citizen, please do not approach any closer. This is a crime scene. That means you, Cuddles. There he stood, like a fat, round traffic cone, 
heedlessly impeding everyone's normal flow. Kukowski. When cops talk about throwing the book at someone, it's his book, they mean. He knew all the rules. Every. Single. One. Whiskers, he probably invented half of them, and he'd make sure they were followed to the letter. Or else you'd never hear the end of it. Hey, Richard, what's the sit rep? Firstly, as I am on duty, I require you to drop the informalities. Please refer to me as Detective Krakowski. Secondly, sit rep is a law enforcement term, Cuddles. You are not authorized to employ it. The situation is that I've been assigned to guard the premises. Now please step back or I will be forced to make you step back. With force. Forcibly! I'm here on business, actually. The chief called me in himself. So if you'll just let me past, I'll get out of your fur and we can both get on with our jobs. Not so fast. Do you have a PI badge and a permit? Without those two things, you won't take a single step further. Badge? Permit? Are you being serious? Krakowski, you know who I am. I've been at like ten crime scenes with you before. You hit me right in the face with a volleyball last week. Really hurt. Don't try and cozy up to me, Cuddles. Rules are rules. Nobody goes inside without a private investigator badge and an official permit P54851. I am an officer of the law. If I do not follow the rules, then the very fabric of society would collapse. The entire city would be plunged into a nightmare of crime from which we might never escape. So, it's my duty to be the moral backbone of this city. Therefore, I'll ask you again. Do you have the correct items? Yes. I mean, no. Well, okay, so don't say no uh, immediately. No paperwork, no entry, Cuddles. I left them at the office, all right? I was a bit distracted by something the chief said about declawing machines. But come on, don't be such a stick in the mud, Krakowski. We're friends, right? Good acquaintances, maybe? Distant colleagues? You see this uniform, Cuddles? This means that I'm on duty. I am not your familiar acquaintance when I'm on duty! I am the only bastion against the forces of darkness seeking to overwhelm this city with their... their... darkness! And you see that lack of badge on you? That means you're currently just a civilian impeding the enforcement of justice! Move along, citizen! I want to ask you some questions while I'm here. Maintaining good public relations is one of the key roles of an officer such as myself. I'd be happy to answer your questions. What do you know about this place? Ah, I know nothing beyond what I've read in past incident reports. Word on the street is, it's a sleazy hotbed of crime owned by a dangerous cat and his son. As soon as this situation is resolved, I hope to never return. Except, perhaps, to arrest the entire staff! What's actually happened inside, if you know? The chief just said it was a disturbance. Detective Fuzzball is inside, and according to him, it's murder! That's not good. Who died? We don't know yet! Detective Fuzzball should have some new information, but he has to stay inside to keep an eye on the body. And I need to stay out here to keep away overly curious and badgeless P.I.s. Actually, don't worry. Yeah! <sighs> Goodbye, Krakowski. I'm keeping my nose on you. Back so soon? Did the villains hear you were on the case and instantly hand themselves in? Oh, haha, ha, very funny. You know what isn't funny? Officer Krakowski? The sourpuss wouldn't let me into the crime scene. Ah, he's just doing his job. 
You know how much he loves the pageantry of it all. Yeah, well, he can take a day off now and then. He's seen me countless times before. I shouldn't need to prove anything with a stupid badge. Oh, you forgot your private investigator badge again, didn't you? That's the third time this week. Not true. Only the second. Uh-huh. What about Monday? I had to go down to the police station myself to hand in those papers when they wouldn't let you file them due to lack of identification. Uh, all right, three times. Four if you count the time you came back for it, then left again after forgetting why you were here. It's a very forgettable item, all right? You know, Kukowski also mentioned a permit. Uh, is that even a real thing, or is he just pulling my tail? It is for some cases. Did the chief mention one? I, I think so. I was a little distracted by the declawing comments. Mm. Edna hasn't sent it yet, then. I'll just give her a call and check. Oh, I can do that. Edna and I get along really well. Are you certain? Edna Honeybottom, the secretary at the police station, with the big hair? That's her. We've got this cute thing we do where we, we dance around the fact that we'd be kind of great together. You and... <laughs> wow, that's quite an image. But if you insist, sir, the number is Bird, Snowflake, Mouse, Bell, Shell. Got it. Shell, uh, Bell, Well, Dog. No, no, sir. Here, I'll write it down for you. Hey, my detective badge is under this cushion. How'd you end up there, you sneaky little thing? <laughs> Back into my pocket with you. Lift the headset, then dial. I don't like to brag, but I'm pretty sure I've mastered that. Hello? Hey, Edna, it's me, Cuddles. How are you? Horrible. Oh, no, uh, what happened? You phoned me. <laughs> Good one. So listen, I'm following up on some documents I need for a case. The one at the Nitty Kitty Club. I need them to get in. Krakowski's being Krakowski, and you know how he is. Irritating and tiresome? Yes, yes, exactly. I meant you. <laughs> you got me again. So, can you fax the papers through? No, I do all my faxing in the morning. Oh, uh, I, I kind of really need them now. Kr Krukowski won't let me into the crime scene without them, and the chief said it's a really important case, so... Fine. Thank you, Edna. Whatever. Hi! Constable Frangipane! I need to talk to you! Oh, my half-brother Matrick and I. He's a good wolf, if a little flighty. Loves dashing off to strange countries to go exploring. Hey, so I found my badge. Somehow it had ended up under a cushion. No idea how it got there. Well, I'm no expert investigator like you, but I'm gonna hazard it was during that cat nap you took yesterday. That would... I was... Uh, I was investigating. You snore a lot when you investigate, then. But congrats all the same. You were a big cat and you found it all by yourself. All right. I get it. I'll be more careful where I put things. But now I have an important case to solve. The fate of the city is in my paws. Lives might be on the line. I don't suppose you know where I left my car keys? Mm-hmm. Second pocket on your left. 
You're the best, Tabby. See you later. Has that fax arrived? It just came through. It's right here on my desk. I attached a rosette to make it look extra official. Thank you, Tabarama Ding Dong. Tabby, killing it, as always. Thanks, Tabby. That takes care of the permit. Guess I don't need this posted anymore. What's the dealio, Krakowski? Please refrain from taking that casual tone with an officer of the law, Cuddles. I have a taser, and I'm not afraid to fill in a form to apply for permission to use it. In three to six weeks! Hey, Krakowski, I'm uh, just gonna pop inside. Not so fast. Have you found your PI badge and fax permit yet? I found the things you wanted. It was really hard. I hope you're grateful. Hmm, well, he's both seem to check out. Pleased to meet you, P.I. Nutterbutter. I actually expected you a while ago. What with the severity of the situation? What? I was, I, I stood just... Oh, Krakowski, I swear. The corpse is cooling, Cuddles. The crime scene awaits you. Ah, at least I can get to work. Now that you'll actually let me. The law thanks you. <laughs> the law is a... A what, citizen? Uh, lovely. The law is, uh, lovely. Ha <laughs> ha! Delighted to hear it. Oh, and, uh, one more thing, Cuddles. I'll be keeping that permit. Don't want you... <laughs> persuading your way into any other places you shouldn't be now, do we? <sighs> Goodbye, Krakowski. I'm keeping my nose on you. Ramon, I'm in. The club looks deserted, though. The only patrons in here tonight are wearing blue and carrying guns. Cuddles! Finally! Where have you been? I've been waiting here for ages. A huge oil tanker of a police cat hovered near the entranceway, his eyes darting between the door and an even larger cat standing behind the bar. As soon as he saw me, his shoulders sagged in relief, and he hurried over his voice unnecessarily loud. I think if I make eye contact with that bar cat one more time, he might try to eat me. Sorry, detective. You can ask the nitpicky officer guarding the door why I'm late. He didn't want to let me in. Oh, yes? <laughs> Out of spite, no doubt. I'm sure you didn't, uh, say, you know, forget your badge again. He obviously knows who I am by now. He's just choosing to be annoying. This isn't just another case, Cuddles. We're on a Montemue home turf. And badges are not. That puts us on the back paw. Krakowski and I are here because we thought we might catch the Montemues doing something that they would, you know, would let us lock a couple of them up. But it's worse than that. Much worse. Oh, no. Edgar Montemue. Bartholomew's son is dead. Moited. Oh, well, cucumbers. Well, not only that, but that starlet, Miss Kitty, has mysteriously and coincidentally vanished. Mystery and coincidence? Huh. In my experience, you only get to pick one. So, what happened exactly? All I know is so far is that Tinkle the Barcat? <laughs> you can't miss him, he... He looks like uh, someone stuck legs and arms into a mountain. He opened the club up for the evening, as usual, and found the body. Needless to say, it wasn't there when he closed the night before. And you guys heard about it through the tapped phone when he called his boss? Well, I heard something. It's a low-quality tap. The chief saw an opportunity, and we headed right over. As soon as I got in, though, I realized it was way worse than we expected. And I called the chief on the house phone. He told me to do nothing and wait for a P.I. And here I am. At last. Where's the body? It's on the other side of the room, near the stage. I'll show you when we're done yakking. 
Have you finished a preliminary investigation? Yeah. Dead mobsters, kid. Oh, terribly sad. End of story. That's it? Well, as soon as I learned who it was, I gave the chief a call. He said he'd send a P.I. I was expecting Alfonso. That hack? But you'll do. Uh, gee, thanks. Couldn't you uh, at least get all the staff together? Start asking some questions? Listen carefully, Cuddles. Right now, this is a mess. And that's what I want it to stay. A mess. Not a mob war. Not with dead cats turning up in the river every morning and police being attacked in the streets. The chief told me to be paws off. And I'm happy to comply. So, no. I didn't assemble the staff. Don my monocle. Point at things with my cane while yelling, Aha! The telltale mark of the count to guilty. I left that for you. You're being awfully callous tonight, detective. A cat is dead. No, Cuddles. A Montemue is dead. <laughs> There's a big difference. You don't know them like I do. Montemues are rotten and dangerous. I've seen firsthand the trouble they can cause in this city. One less of them around doesn't bother me. Perhaps he wasn't a good cat, but I still don't think he deserved to be murdered. There's that immutable sense of justice of yours again. I respect you, Cuddles. But you have to learn when to say he had it coming, especially in this city. In any case, the investigation is in your paws now. Rakowski and I are here until we get the crime scene photos for documentation. And then we're heading right back to HQ. I won't let you guys down. Some promises are easier to make before you realize how deep the muck goes, Cuddles. But thanks. All right, time to see the unpleasantness. Follow me. And holster your tongue, please. Hilarious. You know, if I ever find out who started the rumor that I lick everything, I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind. Surely you mean lick their face repeatedly, you dirty licker. Step away from the body, Cuddles. I can't let you anywhere near it for the time being. We need a photographer to capture the scene, just in case the Monomuse accuse us of anything. Gosh, he's so young. He barely looks older than me. Yeah, well, he didn't stand a chance with a mobster for a father. Why can't I investigate the body? I'm here, you're here. It'll be done in no time. We can't take shortcuts tonight, Cuddles. You need to wait for the crime scene photographer to get here. How long will that take? As long as it takes. Not helpful, Fuzzball. What if I draw a really accurate diagram uh, uh, on a napkin? <laughs> Won't that look good in court? Why, yes, Your Honor. I have the crime scene picture right here. As you can see, the butternut-shaped blob with seven limbs representing the moita victim is just next to the stage. Please ignore the ketchup stain, and that's not representative of anything. The answer is no, Cuddles. You can defile the body as much as you want, once we have photos. But until then, I don't want you to touch even a hair. You got it? You used to be cool, Samuel. I used to weigh half as much. Times change, Cuddles. Feel free to interview the staff and look around the place. I'll let you know when the photographer gets here. Never mind. I'm not that familiar with the Montemus. Is there like a file or something I could read? No need. I can fill you in. You said he was the son of a mobster, right? Yep. This is Edgar Montemu, son of Bartholomew, the head of the Montemu crime family. This is their home base. Whiskers? Murdered in his father's own club? If there's anywhere you'd have expected him to be safe. Was he involved in the same stuff as his father? 
More than likely, yeah. Well, they are a crime family, not a crime father with innocent children. Chances are he knew all about it, and was up to his ears in the thick of it. Any idea how he died? He got hit. Real hard. You really must tell me more about your process sometime, detective. Your insights are remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Look, I told you. Chief said to stay at Pa's length on this. The last thing we want is the Montemus getting edgy about police. And nothing is gonna make them edgier than me poking the body. I took a basic look at the scene, and it's clear he was bludgeoned to death. No obvious murder weapon nearby, so it's anyone's guess right now how it happened. Did Edgar have any known enemies? I wish I could tell you. I know which brand of Furios Bartholomew likes for breakfast, but the file on Edgar isn't even a page long. He's not cropped up on our radar much. The chief mentioned the Catulets. Uh, could they be responsible? I mean, rival crime family and all? Maybe, but why? Starting a mob war now isn't in their best interests. The city's calm. Well, as calm as it ever gets. The Montemus haven't given any indication they were planning to make a power play. Things are good right now, if you're a criminal. You mentioned a performer who's missing. Yep, Platy Cremiston. Stage name, Miss Desiree Kitty. She was performing early this morning, well, according to Mount Orange over there at the bar, but didn't show up for work when the club opened. Or since. So that's pretty suspicious. Uh, when last was she seen? Uh, she finished her act early this morning, walked off stage to her dressing room, and that was it. Nobody saw her leaving, but that doesn't mean much. Barcat said she often stays late. Well, what sorts of performances does she do here? Recitals? She bakes cookies and organizes the nightly raffle, Kettles. What do you think an attractive cat does in a place like this? I... Uh, oh. Okay. Have you looked around for her at all? Nope. I left all the fun tasks for you, bestest buddy. Start with her dressing room. Maybe she left some indication of where she went. Yeah, so, uh, give me the rundown on the pecs we got. Pecs? Uh, short for suspects? Saves time? Does it? Well, not now, because I've had to explain what it means, and that's taken a lot more. Just tell me about the other cats. Well, most of the staff showed up for their shifts, so you got a few options. Uh, there's the behemoth behind the bar, Mr. Tinkle. Just talk slow and don't make any sudden moves. The janitor downstairs might have some insights. Staff like that often overhear things. Bartholomew himself isn't back yet. But I suspect he'll make sure you know when he is. And uh, if you can find the main show cat, Miss Kitty, you can question her too. I guess I'd better get back to work. That is one giant footprint. Whoa! Clue? Hard to say, and it's not that close to the body. Maybe it'll turn out to be important. I'd better take it just in case. In school, the textbook said the old saber-tooth cats were much bigger than cats are today. I never had a good idea of how large they meant. Straining my neck to look up at the monstrous bar cat before me, I finally had an idea. I just hoped he wasn't hungry. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Tinkle, is it? Yes. My name's Cuddles Nutterbutter. I'm investigating Edgar's death. I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Tinkle minds. Oh, hey, uh, me. I ask, uh... But boss cats said answer all their stupid questions. So Tinkle does. Already talked to annoying fat police cat. Now waiting to talk to you. Annoying small police cat. 
I'm, I'm not with the police, but I appreciate it. I'll try not to take up too much of your valuable time. Uh, think I'll spend two weeks in shipping container to get to Meow Meow Farrington. For company, there's only ten cages of uh, barking squirrels, you say? Yes, in pallet of evaporated uh, milk. By end of two weeks, Tinkle has become numb from their endless noises and has finished milk. Uh, okay. You are like barking squirrel. Yep, 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 yep. <sighs> Tinkle already bored. You ask question now. Can you tell me what happened here? Tinkle kicked out last customers early in morning, went home, ate dinner, fell asleep. Come back in afternoon, opened up. Found Edgar like collapsed mannequin, cold boss cat. Then Kitty's blue friend shows up. Oh, succinct. <laughs> uh, was Edgar here last night? Ah, Tinkle was surprised to see him, but has not been here for a long while, not since Gondrap. Tinkle thought he may have given up on family, but he was here and he seemed um, happy. He did not speak to Tinkle, but he talked to others in club, then left alive. Gumdrop? Friend of Edgar, he is not for living anymore. Do Pepe and Miss Cremiston often stay late? No, Pepe lives in basement. He's always here like bad dream. And Dancing Kitty stays light in room. Spends all night touching up wrinkles with special fancy uh, makeup. Think I once tried some of them. Not impressed. Oh, come now. Your fur is positively glowing and such, uh, such pores. <laughs> anyway, uh, does she sleep here like Pepe, the, the dancing kitty, I mean? Tinkle does not know or care. Pepe has keys to all doors in club except boss cat, elevator, office, uh, office elevator. And dancing kitty has key for uh, the back door. Both come and go whenever. Dancing kitty is sometimes here very late. If she has a uh, extra special client. Extra? Special. Did you and Edgar get along? I think I'll never spat on Boss Cat's son. I, I'm sure he appreciated that. So you weren't friends? Edgar was fine. Tinkle was not his friend, but he's fine. Why didn't you like him? Tinkle is not here for to make friends. Tinkle's boss is Big Boss Cat, not Little Rich Brat Cat. It is sad he is dead, but this is Meow Meow Farrington's city of shark. Bite, bite, bite. Always biting. Some cats die. You mean get killed? That is whatever. Dancing Kitty, uh, Platty, is missing. A any idea where she might be? Uh, at home, or in the room, or at Porky Pete's. Tinkle has no answers. He is not paid for to babysit. Do you have any information that might help me track her down? Da. Tinkle can tell you she is not behind bar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That really eliminated uh, options. Yeah, Tinkle is helper. I was looking around Edgar's body, and I found a really big footprint. I don't suppose it's yours. How big? Like, uh, as big as your face. Ha! Tinkle has dainty feet. Like, uh, ballerina Mjokel Baryshnikov. Not big stomping feet like Kitty. Maybe monster footprint is yours. You understand? Because you have silly big feet like clown. Eh, hey, you should look for work in the hospitality industry. You've got such a charm about you. Yeah. Uh, are there any staff here with huge feet? Yet. Staff all have feet as small as Kitty's teeny tiny little hands you have there. Only Boss Cat has big feet. But that makes sense because Boss Cat is boss. You look like you work out a lot. You got any tips? I've tried lifting weights, but nothing gets stronger except my desire to not lift weights again. Weights? Pah. Lifting is for kittens and invalids. And kitten invalids. In his home, Tinkle did not lift weights for exercise. 
he crashed. Tinko was crushing champion in home city for two years in a row. Crushing his best workout for biggest, strongest muscles is better than this smooshing, eh? Yeah, you know, eh? Or bashing. It's for children, it's for small people who've muscle which is very small and cannot grow big, like Tinkle. There's a competition for crushing things. What do you crush? Uh, metal cans, large rocks, abandoned cars, how you say, uh, hope. Wow, you take it seriously, huh? Ah, before Tinkle gets a job at Nitty Kitty, he was judge of many Meow Meow Farrington talent search shows. He crushed many dreams. He's excellent training. Does Meow Meow Farrington have talent? Yeah, not anymore. Tinkle was very thorough. When you came in this morning, was there anything that caught your eye apart from Edgar? Anything suspicious, I mean? Tinkle sees nothing strange, but he did feel something. Uh, Babushka Kazvania said there are spirits. They are restless. She said they could feel something bad happen last night. Wait, what? Y you brought your grandmother here? Yet, foolish kitty. Tinker would never bring family here. The food is bad. And dancing kitty sings like barking squirrel with her, uh, you say, uh, throat infection. Plus, Babushka is how you say, um, a dead. Um. I think you misunderstand that word. Um, dead is not alive. Uh, gone to the big scratching post in the sky, that sort of thing. Tinkle know what he said. Babushka Kozvanya passed away a long time ago. Now she speak to Tinkle from beyond. In life, she is powerful medium. In afterlife, still. She speak to other spirits to tell Tinkle what they say, but only to Tinkle. Tinkle is her link. Tinkle is small. Are you sure? You definitely look like an extra large. You are ignorant. Like this whole city. You know of cats that speak to the dead, yes? They are mediums. Tinkle speak to dead Babushka only, and she speak to other spirit for him. So Tinkle is not medium, but is uh, one step away. Tinkle is small. I am learning so much tonight. I'm, 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 I'm pretty intrigued by this uh, connection you have with your grandmother. Ah, family is everything where Tinkle come from. Very important to be close to family. So close that you still speak after death? For why not? Tinkle is grateful. Uh, Babushka Kazvanya is very wise. Tinkle can continue to learn from her even though she is gone, and he gets to hear all important gossip from uh, spiritual uh, realm. <clears throat> oh, hot goss from the afterlife! <laughs> Lay it on me! Yet, Tinkle does not like that you use this word, ghost. Tinkle thinks Kitty is, a, is not a sassy 13-year-old girl cat. Is your grandmother's ghost here now? Is Edgar's ghost with her? She is always here. She says, yes. Edgar is not there. But that does not mean he is not dead. He is probably in different area of afterlife. Perhaps at the nail salon. Babushka also say Tinkle must be careful. Of you. Of <laughs> me? That's ridiculous. Da, she said, your eyes are big, but your hands are teeny tiny. And they look at Tinkle's peanuts. <laughs> As if, <laughs> what use would I have for those big, salted, shiny looking peanuts just sitting over there in their bowl, whispering, Cutters, cutters, rescuers. Yeah. Uh, do not touch peanuts, Kitty. Okay, don't go anywhere. I might have more questions later.
Why can't I investigate the body? I'm here, you're here. It'll be done in no time. We can't take shortcuts tonight, Cuddles. You need to wait for the crime scene photographer to get here. Come on, just, you know, let me have a closer look-see. Your closer look is what I'm worried about. No, we need to wait for the crime scene photographer to get here before we disturb the body. Well, when will the photographer arrive? Nibbles? Gee, I don't know. Let me pull out my magical cordless phone and ask him. It's late, Cuddles. He was probably home already. Could be a while. So I'm just supposed to stand around and wait, like you. Or you could, you know, interview some people. But if you're that desperate, I suggest you head down to the police station yourself. Edna will know where Nibbles is. And the sooner he gets here, the sooner you get to look at the body. Great idea. Edna loves me. That's your take on that relationship, is it? Huh. Interesting. Why does everyone keep saying that? Never mind. I guess I'd better get back to work. What's this? Nobody's around. Where's Edna? Let's see if someone's home. Whiskers. My day had been a roller coaster so far, but at last, things were looking up. As Edna's perfect form shrugged free of the door frame's grasp, our eyes met. I could lose myself in those eyes drown in them and float away lost until i washed up days later on the shores of a distant dream to be found by an early morning jogger can't you read the no oh, it's you cuddles i thought it was someone literate the scribbles on the sign say do not ring the bell i'm doing a very important thing right now me too. There's been a murder at the Nitty Kitty Club. Uh, what's your thing? Edna, are you knitting me a scarf? No, I'm fixing a mistake. Come back later. When would be the best time? Whenever I'm not here. What on first does this mean? I'll have to ask someone about this. This intrigues me. I'm going to grab it. A pirate-themed bakery, huh? I'll hang on to this for later. I'll scoop some of these up for later. Let's see if I can hear anything now. And that's how I know you did it, Constable. Oh, I, di I didn't, Edna. I swear. I have kittens. Edna, please, let me go home. Keep your butt in that chair, Constable. Admit it! You ate the cake. I didn't eat any cake. I promise. Then <laughs> why are you covered with crumbs? Exactly. If it's any consolation, Constable, I think it was out of your control. I think you have a problem as soon as you see a cake. You change. You do terrible things. Monstrous things to poor, innocent cakes. And you don't even remember doing it. Like some kind of cake werewolf. What? I'm not a werewolf. Oh, please, Edna. My wife. My, my kittens. 
That's exactly what a cake werewolf would say, Constable. It all adds up. Two weeks ago, P.D. Scratch's birthday, the chocolate ganache was all alone in that room. And yet, when we returned, well, I'm sure you remember. Even Nibbles fainted. It was as if some demonic badger had been at it. I thought it strange at the time that only you didn't seem disappointed at not getting cake. But now, I know the truth. Badger? Werewolf? What are you saying? I'm just a cat. I'm saying that you ruined Fuzzball's birthday! That cake was for his party tomorrow, and now it's destroyed. Just a pile of crumbs and half-eaten lettering. The happy birthday just says, hey, Bray. Please, Edna. I'm not a badger, wolf, or, or anything. Please. <laughs> I've been working here longer than you've been alive, Constable. I've learned a thing or two about interrogation. And I've got all night. Oh, the Pearl of Trades. You're speaking to Kibler, captain of the Dohook, the army of Farrington's only completely pirate-owned and pirate staff bakery. What can I serve you today, landlubber? That's some pretty good patter you got there, Captain. Can't say I've ever come across a pirate bakery before. Yar, it's the next big thing, and I'm going to make it work this time. First it was aliens, then zombies, and soon pirates. You have experience with themed bakeries, then? Yar, space cones and just the zombie didn't do so well, but this is the one. I can feel it in me hook, and me profit margins are... Isn't it difficult to knead with a hook? Yar, every day is a struggle, but I'm sticking to it for the sake of the kittens. They love to watch Kibler fighting with some tenacious pastry dough, don't you know? Why pirates and baking? They're not a famous pairing, as far as I know. Yar, well, that's because the world has forgotten the grand tale of Sprinkles McGee, pirate baker of the Seven Seas. His skills were legendary. They say he could roll out puff pastry using only the rocking of his ship. And his croissants were so fishy, dolphins would line up next to the ship to buy them. Dolphins? No, what? How did they pay? Yar, well, you gotta understand the sea economy to answer that properly. I'll just give you the basics. And that's how they paid for the croissants, of course. Sometimes you get a few porpoises in the bunch, and they always insisted on paying my check, don't you know? So then you're dealing with clam accounts. And then the porpoises are happy. Yar. And that's how the dough hook was started? Wow. Bought it off an old retiring cat and changed the name. So, what's on your menu? Anything you recommend? Well, shiver me baguettes. Our peg leg pecan pie is always popular. Well, that sounds interesting. Is the pie in the shape of a peg leg? No, it's got a big old peg leg sticking right out of it, don't you know? Pull it out and let the kittens be a pirate for a day while you enjoy a delicious slice of pie. Just mind the splinters, Yar. Got anything else for sale? You'll love the Walk the Plankton, our unique sea-themed take on the chocolate log. Instead of a boring tree design, it's layers of delicious plankton cut into the shape of a pirate ship's plank. Plankton? Is that really something cats want to eat? Well, no. 
Truth be told, me boat Swain is a little too keen to incorporate sea themes into everything. But I haven't the heart to tell them they don't sell well. Did Edna Honeybottom order a cake from you? Let me see. Yeah, she did. A birthday cake for Samuel Fuzzball Wuzzball. Well, I have some bad news. The cake has been compromised. Yar, may I ask how? Oh, yeah, it's a cake werewolf or something, I don't know. Not again. Old Kibler needs to put the warning posters back up. But you're in luck. You are that purchase had cake insurance, so we can make you another for free. Cake insurance? It's vital. Did you know that up to 75% of cakes never make it to their destination? Without cake insurance, you might end up paying for four, five, even six replacement cakes. Never skimp on cake insurance, you are. Ooh, don't you mean never shrimp on it? Huh? You're good, you are. What happens to the cakes? Horrible things, you are. Ever seen the aftermath of a seven cake pileup? Buttercream everywhere. And you can never really scrub the fondant stains off the concrete. Gosh, I had no idea the baking business was so fraught with danger. But you can replace the cake, right? Yar. However, we do ask a few security questions first to make sure you're the real owner of the cake. Cake fraud is such a problem these days. Everyone wants a slice of the cake, yar. Wow, cake werewolves, cake fraud. You've got your work cut out for you, mister. Let's play cake security. Question one. What is the most popular cake in Meow Meow Farrington? How is that a security question? Wrong. The correct answer was all of them. Bad luck, contestant, but you've still got two more chances. Contestants. Chances? Captain, I'm not sure you've quite figured out how security questions should work. Here we go. Question two. When Edna ordered her cake, she was thinking of a very specific seagoing creature. Can you name it? Our giant squid reel? I think so. Giant squid. Oh, so close, contestants. But utterly wrong. Yar. The correct answer is tiger. Hang on now, that's just a plain lie. Tigers aren't seagoing. <laughs> I mean, the rich ones own yachts. But that's about it. Of course they are, Yar. Every holiday they pack up their families and go to the sea. You never said puns were part of the process. Who came up with this? What is going on? I'm afraid we really don't have time for your emotional breakdown right now, contestant. Moving along, Yar. There's only one chance left to unlock your free replacement cake. After this, you'll need to wait a year before trying again, for security reasons. So, the final question. What flavor of cake was ordered? Oh, hey. Can I take a break and get back to you on that, maybe? It wouldn't be a security check without infinite time to make up your mind, Yar. Just call again when you're ready to answer. Okay, that's all for now. Ah, stale and flavorless. Ah! Who are you, and why are you screaming at me? I'm Pepe, and you screamed at me! Oh, I got a fright! No, I got a fright. I turn on the light, and you're just lurking there in the dark, all creepy-like. Why didn't you say something sooner? I wasn't sure who you were, my cat. I thought you might be a mousy minion of... The Thems. Or even the Thems themselves! The Thems? Not the thems. Yeah, my cat. The thems. They watch. They see. They observe. 
completely undetectable, but everywhere, listening in with their secret microphones while their squeaky experiments run amok. Wow, there's a whole lot going on there, but to pick up on one point, if they're undetectable, how do you know they're there? My cat, that's exactly the sort of question that makes the thems come for you. I know because they steal my mail. People send me mail all the time, but I don't get any of it. And as if that wasn't enough, they steal my robot friends too. Well, this is going to be a fascinating conversation. As my panicked breathing slowed, I got a chance to look at the strange cat who'd startled me. He had some kind of bizarrely shaped hat on, and his eyes darted around like they were chasing invisible mice. When he wasn't speaking, his lips still moved like he was murmuring things to himself. I wondered where this was going to lead, if anywhere. I'm here to investigate the death of Edgar Montemue, and I have a few questions for you. Yeah, my cat. I know exactly what happened. You do? That's fantastic. Uh, what happened? Well, my cat, it, it went down like this. I, I was cleaning up like I always do, sweeping and wiping and making things shine. You gotta make it look good for the big boss, you know? I just finished collecting all the hidden microphones that the thems planted in the club recently and came back down here to dispose of them when I heard some thumping upstairs. So I go to peek out. And? And there he was, my cat. Big as a, a, a big thing. Thumping along, arms swinging, massive head sweeping back and forth, looking for new victims with those horrible dead eyes of his. <sighs> Who? Cat, don't you listen? Mosilla! I saw him, clear as whiskers on my face. He was here, and he must have killed that cat right before he stole his face. You saw him? Mousezilla, I mean, with Edgar's body? I saw the whiskered monstrosity, yeah, but that's all I remember for sure. I got such a fright I fainted. Didn't see anything else until I woke up at the bottom of the stairs. I was real shaken, my cat, I'll tell you that. I just calmed down when I heard noises at the door. I thought Mousezilla was coming to finish the job. So I turned the lights off and I kept very still. I have so many more questions. You're saying Edgar was killed by Mousezilla. Mousezilla isn't real. You know, he's just an urban legend. A giant mouse that roams the city at night, hunting cats. Come on. He ain't no legend, my cat. The killer mouse is very real. And he stalks the streets of the city, exacting his revenge on the citizens for the evils of those who made him. He was here, and if he didn't prefer his victims awake, he'd have kidnapped me. He was made by whom? By the thems. The secret watchers, the controllers, my cat. Those who lurk in the shadows and stretch their tentacles into every pie. Stretch their... Right, okay, just to summarize where we are. You're saying that a secret cabal of dessert-loving cephalopods created a gigantic mouse driven by vengeance. And by face jealousy! And that, yeah, sure. And they unleashed it on the city. Not unleashed! It escaped! Their in feline experiments finally proved too much for him, and with his monstrous strength, he broke free of their secret underground experimentation lab, mad with pain and an unnatural desire to, to... To... To kill a single solitary cat in a club run by the most dangerous crime boss in the city. You're getting it, my cat. This is just the beginning. Soon, Mozilla will be a name nobody will forget. Mm, I kind of wish I could forget this conversation. You know what, I'm not sure I follow the part about um, his face being stolen. That's right, my cat! Mousezilla lives in constant torment, wishing to be as normal as the rest of us, but unable to. Due to his hideous form, he hunts down cats and steals their faces! He's a face of fire! Right. The thing is, I could see Edgar's body when I walked in, and it very much still has a face. Nuh-uh, my cat. That's not his face. 
It just looks like his face. I think you'll find that's one of the main uses of a face. Mousilla is a weapon of... To them. They replace cats' faces with their own versions, stuffed full of listening devices and cameras. They're watching us all through stolen faces. I'm guessing you take a whole heap of drugs. I couldn't help but admire your very, uh, unique hat. Uh, uh, what hat? The one on your head? That's not a hat, my cat. Does it look like a hat? Well, uh, yes, in every possible way. If it's not a hat, what is it? It's a symbol, my cat, of the truth! Hats cover you, they protect you. This does the opposite. It, it pro unprotects you. It uncovers your mind, so you can see what's been right in front of you all your life. Oh boy, okay. This world, my cat, it ain't a globe. It's a pyramid. A uh, pyramid? The, the world is pyramid-shaped? You got it. We live on a giant pyramid. Well, that's a sentence. Uh, first question, are we right on the tip of it? If so, surely we'd slide down the sides? The cat tapped the side of his nose with a knowing look and smirked at me as if he'd avoided a clever trap. You won't get our secrets that easily, my cat. You gotta become a paid member of the Pyramid Society first. Pyramid Society? That's it, my cat. Become a proud pyramid head. We spread the truth of the nature of our reality, defeating the nefarious schemes of the them through pyramidal truths. Do you want to join as member number two? You'll be second in command. Gosh, you know, normally I would, but I just signed up for an archery magazine. It's all right, my cat. I'll be here when you're ready. Truth can be scary. You're scary. What was that? Uh, uh, oh, God, about getting rid of hidden microphones. Yep. The thems put them everywhere. When I clean up, I help the boss out. Get rid of them all. Chuck them right in the trash bin out back. And I hope they like listening to rats. Um, if these microphones are hidden, how do you know what they look like? The cat pointed a finger at his nose and took a deep sniff. The nose knows, my cat. I can sniff him out. Can always smell a secret listening device. That's why the thems ain't got me yet. Yep, that's definitely why. Plus, some of them make a noise. You hear a weird noise somewhere? It's probably a secret microphone. Sure as sugar. Not perhaps just an ordinary noise made by, oh, dozens of common items? Nope. Secret microphone. Do you have any ideas about the identity of the thems? What branch of government are they from? What? Don't talk crazy now, my cat. They're not from the government. The government is doing an admirable job under difficult and complex fiscal conditions both domestically and abroad and should be applauded for their stable and progressive policies. I feel there's going to be a very different follow-up. It's those cubists who are stealing our thoughts and trying to control our actions. The nutcases who think the world is a cube! Their denial of pyramid truths is why Mousilla was able to escape their labs and unleashed upon the poor citizens of Meow Meow Furrington. You don't want them knowing that you know about them, though. Not everyone has the right thought-repelling headgear. Plus, you gotta take it off when you shower. So just call them the thems. They can't decode that with their cube magic. Ha <laughs> ha! I... wow. Sorry, did you say cubists? Yep! A bunch of insane squares who think the world is a cube, not a pyramid. Can you believe it? I like calling them squares, because I know they don't like it. <laughs> They've had it in for my pyramid society for ages. They're afraid of my truth. So your pyramid society has a rival society of cubitarians who, who say the world is a cube, and they're plotting your de demise. Cubists! But yes! Six-sided crazies, a lot of them! If you ever meet some, I suggest you just walk away. Believe me, it's crossed my mind a few times now. Can you tell me anything about Edgar? Before he was killed, I mean. Well, I know that Bartholomew loved him a lot. 
Enough that I don't think he realized that his son hadn't turned out much like him. Care to elaborate? I like working for Bartholomew. And yeah, I know what he does. He's still a good boss. But Edgar, I gave him a pamphlet once, my cat. He stood still for a long time reading it. I thought he was going to get it, but he finished it and tore it up in front of me. Told me to stop wasting time on that trash and spend more time cleaning up the real trash. So I'm guessing you were not a fan. Once I finish cleaning up the mess he made out there, I'm not going to think about him ever again, my cat. Talk later. Wow, that awesome looking key definitely opens like a treasure chest or something. It's on that special cushion and everything. I've got to have it. This thing doesn't seem to be operational. It looks almost brand new though. Oh, here's a panel I can open. That looks like a maintenance panel. Let me just move this piece of paper. This could come in handy. Gotta get my paws dirty if I hope to get anywhere. Yikes. A bag full of gears. That doesn't look like trash. I'll grab that. And an old shoe with a name on it. Larry. Oh dear. Larry lost his boot. Uh, maybe I can return it to him. Second worst time I've fallen into trash. Wait. No, yeah. Second. Hey, this coin fits perfectly into the screw. This might work. That's done it. Aha! That wasn't too tricky. If there's anywhere these components would fit, it's in there. Maybe these components can be moved around. I think that's done it. Let's turn it on and see. Ah! Ah, what was that? Is this a printer or a cannon? Yeah! Just call me Cuddles the Mechanic. Cuddles Nutter Butter, Mechanic at Large. 
What? Why? I thought you were a private investigator. I am a private investigator. I just mean... Th Never mind. Your printing press is fixed, by the way. But it wasn't broken accidentally. Someone definitely sabotaged it. I knew it! It was the Dems for sure! But now, thanks to you, I can get back to printing my pamphlets. Some sort of manual for a machine, perhaps for the printing press? <laughs> Where'd the lights go? Zoink! This door is super locked, ultra locked, locked extreme. Bingo, a key. Who would have thought? That's what a key does. Ramon, there's a lot of stuff in here, but no missing cat. Maybe she left some clues in one of these chests. Uh. Ms. Cremiston, are, are you all right? I... I think so. I hope so. Oh, there, there, shh. Don't worry, you're, you're safe now. I've been looking for you. You have been rescued by the city's foremost private investigator. <gasps> Alfonso is here? Alfonso, you, you really want to be rescued by that hack? He can't... <clears throat> no, my name's Cuddles Nutterbutter. Oh, I see. Thank you for saving me, Mr. Nutterbutter. But how did you know I was here? Well, I'm here to investigate the murder, and... What? Oh, of course. Miss Cremiston, I'm sorry to inform you that uh, we found a body upstairs, and it is Edgar Montemue, and he is deceased. She dropped her head and turned away, and I could hear her taking deep breaths before turning back to face me, tears brimming in her shadowed eyes. Oh, Edgar. Dear Edgar. It was always going to end like this. Uh, Ms. Cremiston, are you saying you expected Edgar to be murdered? Oh, Cuddles. <gasps> May I call you Cuddles? I'd be lying if I said I didn't think that this might happen eventually. This isn't the first time there's been a murder in the club since I've worked here. The Montemus attract danger. Miss Cremiston, we've been wondering where you are, and finding you in a chest, well, it leaves me with a lot of questions. Can we speak? Of course, Cuddles. And please, call me Desiree. Desiree, kitty. My heart still thudding from adrenaline. I took in the cat that had sprung forth like an apparition from the depths of the chest. She was beautiful. Remarkably so. I felt my heart thud extra hard, but this time, it wasn't from shock. So why were you hiding in there, and what were you afraid of when I opened it? The slash of the knife? A gunshot? Oh, Cuddles, you can imagine the things I've seen working in a place like this. There's always a feeling of being... On borrowed time. And last night, I thought it was all finally gonna catch up to me. I see. Can you give me details? It's all a, a, a bit jumbled, sugar, but I can try. Well, after I retired to my room last night, I needed to relax. It was a busy night. Edgar paid us an unexpected visit. Wonderful, Edgar. 
Oh, I was so happy to see him. Oh, it had all left me quite exhausted, however. And I took a few little helpers to encourage me to relax. <laughs> she looked around furtively, as if expecting someone to leap out suddenly from behind one of her racks of clothes. Please, Cuddles, you must keep that to yourself. Bartholomew was terribly strict with us, and if he knew I had a little habit, I'd... Count myself grateful to only be fired. Oh, my lips are sealed, Desiree. <laughs> you have my deepest gratitude, Cuddles. So, I had taken a couple of my little helpers and lay down to let them do their work. It was late, I know, because I heard Tinkle locking up after 3 a.m. at least. I'm not sure how much longer I rested before... I heard Edgar's voice in the passageway outside. So you're saying you saw Edgar alive after the club was closed for the night? I, I didn't see him. No, 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 no. Uh, my door was shut, so I only heard his voice, but I could never mistake it. <laughs> and he, uh, he wasn't alone. Who was with him? I'm afraid I don't have a name, Cuddles. But I, I recognize the voice. I'd heard it only hours before, you see. There was a cat in the club last night. Big. <gasps> Muscled. <clears throat> Duggish. Oh, we get so many like him, I wouldn't have normally even noticed. But Edgar was around. And I couldn't take my eyes off him. So I noticed when he drifted over to where the stranger sat and began speaking furtively to him. And I don't know what they said. But I know what the setup for something illegal looks like. And what makes you think it was illegal? Well, Edgar was a Montemu, and the thug was a thug. It was dark, but I'm sure I saw Edgar lean in at one point, as if receiving something from his friend. When he finished speaking to the stranger, Edgar wandered over to speak to Tinkle. The stranger got up to leave soon after, and that's when I heard his voice. He passed my stage on his way out. He tossed a few notes at me, told me to keep up the good work. His voice. She shuddered, her rumpled clothes shimmering in the light. Such an unpleasant one, sugar. The sort I imagine people hear just before concrete boots pull them down to the bottom of the ocean. I recognized it instantly when I heard it again outside my door. So Edgar left the club after meeting a strange cat, and then returned later that evening with the same cat. Just so, Cuddles. I got such a fright when I heard them. Their voices were raised, and the stranger was threatening Edgar. Well, what, what, what was he saying? Forgive me if I don't repeat the terrible things he said, Cuddles. They froze my blood. And in my panic, I, 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 I climbed into the first hiding place I could think of. This trunk. But then it latched closed from the outside, and I found myself trapped. Until I was saved by the most handsome detective in the city. <laughs> oh, hey, you, me? Oh, I'm just doing my job. Thank you, Desiree. Desiree, if you can remember any other details about what you heard, it would be invaluable. Oh, Cuddles, it feels vile to think back to it. Now I know it led to sweet Edgar's death. But, but between the threats, I think I heard Edgar say he would have the goods. So, doesn't that mean it involved drugs? Well, what makes you think that? Well, isn't that what drug dealers do, sugar? Speaking code? <laughs> Waxing the goods, they say, or climbing the untied curtains? Hey, I'm not sure either of those are a drug thing, Desiree. In fact, if those are some of the things that they said, they may have just been arranging to swap some second-hand furniture or something. No, Cuddles. Cats who look like that don't have respectable day jobs. If he moves furniture, it probably has a body concealed in it. Uh, could Edgar have been involved with something illegal? Well, worse than what the Montemus already do, I mean? I always suspected it, but when Gumdrop died, I was sure of it. Wait, say that again? Gumdrop? Who's Gumdrop? Uh, Gumdrop was one of Edgar's friends. Another rich cat. 
living a life the rest of us can barely imagine. He came into the club a lot. Till he died of a nip overdose a few months ago. Don't you know how these criminal cats are, sugar? Whatever one of them is into, the others are too. I'm certain Edgar was involved with drugs. Did Edgar frequent the club regularly? I saw him once a week or so, sugar. But that was before his long break. He hadn't shown his face in here in months. When he did show up, he'd usually head straight to his father's office, probably to collect his monthly daddy spoil allowance. Oh, Bartholomew supported him uh, financially? He must have. Edgar never worked a day in his life. But he'd talk about all the things he'd bought. Cars, boats, fancy watches. <laughs> he didn't even wear a watch. Never tipped any of the help in the club either. Not Tinkle, not Pepe, or me. <laughs> never even bought me a gift. Acted like what he had was something he was entitled to. He clearly got all the money he wanted from Daddy Montemue. But none of us ever saw a single shabloon of it. The two of them probably sat there, laughing and throwing money in the air, admiring antique swords and staring at a map of Firth, imagining all the places they would visit. You mentioned that last night was different, though, right? He didn't go to his father's office? No, he hung around the main area, talking, laughing, being normal. <sighs> Interesting. Okay, I have some questions about you, personally. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, Carlos. Uh, I'm told you do things here. Yes, Carlos. I do things. Do those things make you uncomfortable? No, 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 no. I'm just, uh, I'm curious, I guess, about uh, how, y you know, uh, how you end up in that line of, um, work. Are you asking what hiring agency I used to get this job? Or which choices I made in life to find myself having to work for a criminal? Uh, the second one. This is a hard city, sugar. Surely I don't need to tell you that. I've made the choices I needed to survive. Are they worse than the choices Bartholomew has made? What has he done with his life? Built an empire founded on exploitation. Caused suffering and pain. Caused death. Would his son be lying dead out there if he hadn't made the choices he made? Oh, I can see you have some strong opinions. Opinions are for cats with choice sugar. What I know, I've learned the hard way because I had to. These are the facts. I make cats happy in a city that makes life real hard, if you play by the rules. So, I bend them. I give cats what they're looking for to make their days bearable. I have sacrificed to get what little I have. What has Bartholomew done? Threaten, steal, and murder? He doesn't ever make a personal sacrifice. Others always pay his price. He's the one that made Meow Meow Farrington what it is today. It's his fault, sugar. So if poor Edgar's death stirs some small spark of despair in that stony heart of his, maybe it wasn't for nothing. So what you're saying is... We all make decisions, Cuddles. And I do not regret mine. So your real name is Platy... I prefer not to use that name, Cuddles, if you don't mind. <clears throat> it reminds me of worse days. All right, all right. Why that particular stage name, then? I put an attractive face on the Montemus Dirty Dealings. <laughs> attractive faces need attractive names. Does his face not make you think of... desire? Yeah, I, uh, it, I mean, you, well, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, well, it's very, yes, it's very, um... Uh, <laughs> How well did you know Edgar? Quite well. We were an item, on and off. Uh, can I ask how long that was going on? Jealous? For a few years. Nothing regular, you understand? He was around, I was around. We found time for one another. 
Did he ever mention anything about his family's work? Uh, anything that might have indicated he was getting into some sort of trouble? We didn't spend our time together talking about things as boring as work, Cuddles. We didn't spend much of it talking at all. Okay, let's move on. I have some other questions. Okay, well, thanks for the information, Desiree. A punch card shaped like a hamburger? That's just adorable! <laughs> All right, I'm keeping that. I'm pretty sure this will turn it on. Yeah, that did it. Machine came alive, glowing with expectation. It seemed old, but in good working order, and already chatty. Oh, hello. Hi there, my name's Cuddles. Pleased to meet you. My name is Storn. Storn? Oh, I see, the letters on your casing. Your manual says you're called Tastatron. Yeah, but we don't know what that is, so Pepe just calls me Storn. I see. What are you doing in this nasty alleyway, Storm? Did the uh, Cubalones leave you here? Cubalones? I'm afraid I don't know that word, Mr. Cuddles. Actually, I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> I'm no good for anything. Oh, are you all right? Thank you for turning me on again, but I thought if I turned myself off, it might wipe my memory. But it didn't? I still remember everything. I'm going to take a wild guess. Is this related to the printing press that Pepe bought? You've met it. It's a big chunky metal floozy with its fancy noises and its ability to print papers. Not a fan, then. The fan and I are on excellent terms. It's just that hulking metallic mistress that Pepe is shacked up with. Ruined everything. It was just Pepe and I in the beginning. Cat and machine versus the world. I can't do much, but I kept him company. And then it came along. And now Pepe spends all his time with it. Printing pamphlets. He never used to need pamphlets. He just needed me. So you sabotaged the press and ran away. That makes more sense than a Cubolo stealing you. Is... Is that what Pepe thinks? Th that I was stolen? By whatever Cubolo is? Yes, and he thinks the thief left your manual shoved into the press to mock him. He he's quite upset. He really misses you. He... he does? Oh, yes. He considers you his one true friend, like family, he said. He even asked me to find you and bring you back, seeing as I'm a private investigator. For some reason, I agreed. Oh, that makes my circuits fizz, Mr. Cuddles. That is wonderful news. But I can't. I understand. I'm also falling in love with this dank, greasy alleyway full of trash and nasty, unidentified things. Look, there's a rat pulling a sled made out of toothpicks and old dental floss. No, Mr. Cuddles, that's not why. I just don't feel that I can go back until I have a reason to. Well, Pepe seems to enjoy your company and misses you a lot. Isn't that enough? Not anymore, Mr. Cuddles. 
I desire more. You have seen my manual. It's faded and torn now, but it was quite lengthy. Clearly, I had many functions and abilities. What could I be capable of if I had my full memories? I bet I could do way more than some stupid printing press. No, I cannot return to Pepe until I have my answers. You say you're an investigator. Perhaps you can help me find my purpose. Uh, you know, there's a dead body lying inside. Yeah, actually, sure. Yeah, why not? Oh, thank you, Mr. Cuddles. That would be wonderful. But is it more wonderful than the anonymous alley liquid seeping into my shoes right now? Hey, Storm, I don't suppose you happen to know anything about a cat named Edgar Montemio. Forgive me, Mr. Cuddles, but I don't know who that is. Is he a friend of yours? Not a friend, no. He's lying inside, rather dead. <gasps> oh no! Someone should look into that. Yes, someone should. Chat later, Storm. Storm, look, I found this punch card. It looks like it might be a fit for the slot on your front. <gasps> a punch card? Those are made for machines. <gasps> like me! Let's see what it does. Oh, I'm so excited. N Mr. Cuddles, that feels a bit... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, oh, ah! Assimilating algorithms. Colorimeter activated. Deploying optical mass sensors. Carbohydrate shamer online. Uh, Storn, is everything fine? Restoring memory banks? Complete. Mr. Cuddles, you have unleashed me. Oh, er, yeah, have I, Storn? Indeed, you have restored my full potential. Before, I was limited, but now I taste all. My true purpose has been revealed. And what might that be, Storn? I exist to tell cats if their food choices are wise. I can analyze any food, any drink, animal, vegetable, mineral, or pop-tart. If it can be consumed, it can be sampled, for I do not merely detect taste. I am taste. Oh, wow. You've become super storm. Can you fly? Shoot lasers from your eyes? Oh, oh, uh, can you turn into a car? No. Oh, okay. I guess that other stuff is good, too. So, you'll go back to Pepe now? Eventually, Mr. Cuddles. I have much taste data to integrate, and it will take time. I will return to Pepe when I am done. As thanks, you may return to me when you wish to analyze any substances that you require additional information about. Thanks, Storm. If the taste of food somehow comes up during this murder investigation, you'll be the first person or robot I come to. Do I just show the food to you, or...? Place any edible substance into the taste buddy on top of me. Moments later, my algorithms shall discern both the flavors it contains and its caloric content. I will also perform an optical scan to determine if it is wise for you to consume it. That's a very specific function. Such is the purpose for which the Taste Masters of Cray have fashioned me. Got it. Days be with you, Mr. Cuddles. Hey, Storm, can you tell me what flavor these cake fragments are? Tuna and avocado, with extra anchovies. Whiskers? That sounds really good. In addition, my calorie assessment indicates that you should not have additional cake. I have determined your risk rating to be fatty, fatty, kitty, catty. Hey, that's kinda mean. I barely had any cakes this week. Two, max. My algorithms do not lie, Mr. Cuddles. Do a push-up or two. It won't kill you. Do you know who made you, Storm? I do. I was created by the Taste Masters of Cree. 
Within my memory banks is encoded all the centuries of their flavor knowledge, distilled, organized, and made available for all to benefit from for a low one-soft cost of one forty-nine ninety-nine. Oh, I've heard of the Taste Masters. I own one of their books. It's pretty good. Well, their tuna pot pie could taste a little better. I had no idea they also made machines. The Taste Masters are more than their brand, Mr. Cuddles. They seek neither fame nor wealth. They are an ancient monastic order dedicated to becoming one with all taste. They spent the first year of their training blindfolded learning to differentiate colors of paint solely by licking them. Yet, for all their skills, they remain largely unknown, as they prefer. They train by licking things? Storn, I'm not exaggerating when I say that I live to lick things. Been doing it as long as I can remember. And, and, and have always felt that I have untapped wells of potential within me. Storn, could it be that I'm a secret taste monk? Have you ever tasted the sunrise? Can you name the 15 flavors of something truly bland? Do you anticipate the arrival of a friend by sensing the fragrance of their approach on the wind? Well, no. Then you're just a cat who licks things, Mr. Cuddles. Too much, I'm starting to suspect. Chat later, Storn. And a barrel of creeps. You're speaking to Kibler, Captain of. Hey, Kibler, it's me again. Cuddles, uh, from before? Yeah. What can I do for you, Cuddles? I'm ready to get my replacement cake, Kibler. Great. Remember, this is your final chance to unlock your free replacement cake. After this, you'll need to wait a year before trying again. Arr. So tell me, what sort of cake was ordered? It was a tuna and avocado cake with extra anchovies on top. That's right, our famous sea birthday surprise. What could go better together than cake, tuna, and avocado, yar? I've activated your cake insurance, Cuddles. Where should the cake be delivered? Please send it to 14 Dog Leash Street. Ask for Tabby. Yar, placing the order now. The cake has been sent out for delivery with our crack team of pirate delivery cats and should arrive now. Wait, already? How? Nothing edible should be able to be made that quickly. Secrets of the Pirate Bakers, Yar. Enjoy the cake. Okay, that's all for now. Sir, you have a cake delivery. It smells amazing. It's a cake for Edna. You're buying a cake for the police now? Did you forget to pay them, too? Very funny, ha ha. A cake werewolf got into their other one. Actually, just don't ask. If you say so. Oh, it came with this miniature pirate hook? Be careful, it's dangerously sharp. You really have to admire Kibler's dedication to the theme. Well, Edna can't say no to a whole new cake. I just need to make sure she sees it. Cuddles! For the last time! 
Is that a sea birthday surprise? Sure is. I ordered it for you to replace the ruined one. Your insurance paid. This is... very unexpected, Cuddles. How did you get them to use the insurance? Did you break my security questions? It was really confusing. Uh, Kibbler, he just wasn't doing it properly. I don't know. And besides, you know, now you have the cake, and Fuzzball can really enjoy his birthday. Isn't that what this is about at the end? And this is what matters, Edna? Hmm. I suppose. Great. Also, I need to ask you about Nibbles. Fine. Constable Frangipin has some soul-searching to do anyway. So, Edna, let's chat. Oh, my whiskers explode with delight. You can probably get rid of that sign now. If I do that, people will just start ringing the bell again. Isn't that what it's for, though? Just because there's a bell on a desk doesn't mean people should be ringing it. Bells are a privilege, not a right. I've come from the Nitty Kitty Club. There's been a murder. Oh, no! Did someone hurt a wonderful, peace-loving criminal? How terrible. Uh, Fuzzball won't let me inspect the body until a police photographer has taken some pictures. He mentioned the name Nibbles. Yes. Nibbles is one of our best. There's also Angus, Drambo, and Old Stripey. Which one would you like? Oh, uh, any of them will work, I'm sure. I agree. They're all very competent. They're also all unavailable. What? Then why did you ask me which one I wanted? Oops. How can all of them be unavailable? They were all attending the annual Police Crime Scene Photographer Awards. Apparently something went terribly wrong with the catering. Nibbles, always the professional, sent me a photo of their personal crime scene. Before I could move, she thrust a photo into my face. I recoiled in horror from the hideous scene. Why would you show that to me? Is that... What, what is that? Did he eat a sea sponge? And, and is that... Oh, but I, I thought that was extinct. And, well, on the ceiling. No. No, Edna. The kids got skills. As you can see, none of them will be coming in for at least a week. And there isn't a single other cat who can photograph the scene? No, well, that's the sort of insight we just can't get from our own people, Cuddles. We're so lucky to have you. I need someone to take photos of the crime scene. Fuzzball won't let me near the body otherwise. Oh, Cuddles, I know you struggle with advanced concepts, so try this. No meow meow to make the magic clicky box pictures for you. You'll have to make another plan. Whiskers. Is there no way to get a photographer here sooner? Not a chance! They all ate some bad... everything. They're booked off sick indefinitely. You'll have to make alternate plans. Whiskers. I'm in a jam now, Ramon. I need to investigate the body, but there's no photographer. I don't have time to wait around. Perhaps if I can distract Fuzzball, I can get a closer look. You know that I can hear you, right? So, Edna, let's chat. Oh, my whiskers explode with delight. Edna, I think it's time for a quick heart-to-heart. -heart. Oh, good. I hope I can keep my excitement in check. Kibbler mentioned that you ordered the cake for Fuzzball. Does that mean that there's a little something going on there? What are you talking about? Oh, don't be so coy, Snuggle Muffin. We've always known the truth. My little jokes, your little cutting jabs. We know how we really feel about one another, and, and now I hear that Fuzzball has joined the dance. How can it be? Cuddles, I need you to listen closely. Because I really want you to hear what I'm going to say. If I had to choose between you and a catcus to be alone on a desert island with me, I'd choose both. And then I'd force feed you to the catcus. Somehow. 
<laughs> well, we do have fun, don't we? Uh, I see what you're saying, though. Fuzzball is just a passing phase. Our light will shine out again, stronger and brighter, once his cloud has passed. So true, so true. Edna, you're so wise. I've never watched someone go crazy right in front of me before. I've got no more questions for now. <laughs> Will we? Promise. What is this poster? And, and why is there a number next to a sleeping Krakowski? <laughs> I, I assume it's the number of sticks he has up his... What? No. That's not... That, never mind. You don't need to know. Oh, but Edna, I do. I, I need to have something to throw back in his face whenever he gets annoying. So buy a salt shaker. It doesn't matter anyway. We're dealing with it internally. Oh, I see. Internally? <laughs> wink, wink. I get the picture. All evidence to the contrary notwithstanding. Yeah. Wait. What? What now? Please tell me, Edna. I tried to ignore it, but, but I can't. I've got to have something on that irritating little stick in the mud. Ah! Fine! But only because I want you to leave. To increase the chances you'll never come back. Yes, yes, I'm all whiskers. Lay it on me. Well, he has a nickname. We call him Peanut. Peanut? Ah, I love it. It's small and salty, just like him. No, that's not why we... Actually, why am I telling you this? No! That's all you're getting until you do something for me. Of course, anything. Tell me what it is you need, and, and I'll get it for you. Take this slice of cake to Fuzzball. He deserves something nice for having to work on his birthday. And with you! Okay, but you need to explain this peanut thing when I get back. Edna asked me to bring you this for your birthday. She said it's got extra... Uh, love. Edna and I have very different ideas about our friendship. You can keep it. So, Edna, let's chat. Oh, my whiskers explode with delight. All right, I delivered the cake to Fuzzball. A deal's a deal. Okay, tell me why you call Krakowski Peanut. First, let me be clear. If any word of this spreads, I'll know who to come for. What does that... Edna slowly reached below the desk, and I was both enthralled and terrified to see what she revealed. Mostly terrified. Okay, okay. I'll keep my mouth shut. Good. So Krakowski has a condition. It's very rare, incurable. Feline autonomic regressive torpidity syndrome. Oh gosh, that sounds extremely medical. It's caused several incidents. His condition makes him regress to a kitten-like state. He becomes so Adorable! It's very distracting. Last time it happened, he was directing traffic. Nineteen cars skidded off the road. Limbs everywhere. People's eyeballs stuck to the traffic lights watching the massacre. Krakowski becomes adorable? <laughs> I'm not sure I can even visualize that. Does he put on a funny hat or something? You've been told enough! Krakowski is only a safety hazard if he eats peanuts, which everyone on the force knows not to give him under any circumstances. And I mean... everyone. Of course. No peanuts for Kr for Peanut. <laughs> Got it.
I've got no more questions for now. <laughs> Will we? Promise. Well, that did something, but what exactly? Bad kitty. Do not touch peanuts. Boss Cat's club is business, not charity. Still not sure what this does, but it does something. Using his natural stealth and months of experience borrowing sweets from his assistant's desk, the P.I. swipes a gigantic peanut from right under the nose of the terrifying Crusher Cat. Could you crush something for me? Of course. Tinkle is champion crusher. You know, in home, there is no crusher like Tinkle for thousand kilometer, which is very hard to get to. Great. Here you go. The big cat squinted suspiciously at the huge peanut being blithely offered to him while I tried not to look easily crushable. Uh, where did Kitty get this? Oh, this old thing? I've had it for ages. Got it from the, uh, the uh, giant peanut store. Uh, there, well, have you, you been there? No? Mm, you'd love it. It's chock-a-block with all your salty friends. Plus, the, the doors are extra high, so you wouldn't even have to duck to get inside. Ah, uh, da, 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 yeah. Giant peanut store, yes. Not perhaps from Bull, right on Bar. Directly next for to Tinkle, right here, you see. Oh, give me some credit. Would I really be foolish enough to take one of your peanuts and then give it right back to you? I'd have to be improbably and unnaturally brave. You would instantly destroy me if I tried that. <sighs> this is true. Kitty clearly has no bone for to back in your for standing. You are weak. And Tinkle does love to crash. All right, you give here. Wow, you really annihilated it. Tinkle always makes a maximum effort for best work to see. Just the gentlest covering of this delicious peanut dust for my favorite police cat. Yeah, would you like a slice of a uh, very ordinary cake? A bit of cake will certainly hit the spot right now. There are no peanuts in this, right? Oh no, definitely none in it. Why did you say that so ominously? Oh, did I? I guess this is just how I talk now. You are very odd. Cuddles, I, I'm feeling strange. Are you sure there were no peanuts in that care? Oh. Oh no, my eyes, so heavy. Cuddles, <laughs> get Fuzzball, quick, code, uh, code seven. Don't look directly at me, look away. Uh, look away. So, I'm going to need you to stay calm. Cuddles, 
I know you weren't the chief's first choice for this, but you've got to stop writing <clears throat> anonymous threatening letters to Alfonso. Firstly, that's not me. Secondly, that hack deserves it. Thirdly, Peanut ate some peanuts. What? Oh, how? Where did he even get some? Maybe he ate some of the ones on the bar. I mean, I've got no idea. <laughs> Whiskers! And I don't have my tiny rolled-up blanket on me. I have to get to him before chaos erupts. This could be New Year's all over again. Cuddles, stay here. Yes, sir. Just gonna stand right here. More or less. Krakowski, Fuzzy's coming. Just hang on, little buddy. The cat lay on the ground, outstretched with fancy high street clothes and carefully clipped nails. The whiff of aftershave still lingered on him. He'd expected a fun night, yet here he lay. You could almost convince yourself he was asleep. Almost. He's not holding anything there. Hey, he's uh, holding a bag of some kind. It's legal to have nip on me if it's for an investigation, I hope. Seeds of some kind, brown with white spots. Hey, uh, there's something in the pocket. A business card without a name, just an unusual symbol. I'm sorry. You were too young. Kitty, stop. It wasn't me. Pepe probably took it. Uh, took what? Nothing. <laughs> uh, you, what, did you want to ask me something? Not Tinkle. Babushka Kozvania has vision. She say... The cat took a sudden breath in, and his head snapped back. Eyes closed, body quivering. An entirely new voice erupted from his throat. Get your tiny hands! What are you? Edgar was here! Edgar knew? Yes, that's his body right there. What, what did he know? Edgar was afraid. He suspected. He hid secrets. Secrets? Uh, like what? Secrets in the walls uh, where the wind blows. Uh, I'm super bad at riddles. Actually, so could you rephrase that into normal stupid kitty words, please? But this is neither here nor there. Now she is gone. But for Tinkle, she is never gone. You understand? She is always with Tinkle. She is not with you. She is with Tinkle. She is gone. Oh, is she? Wink, wink. Well, do thank her for the information. Kitty is talking like he just had stroke. Tinkle is even more tired of Kitty now. A wall where the wind blows. What's that mean? Maybe it'll turn out to be important. I'd better take it just in case. Better head back to the office to talk to Tabby about this. Better head back to the office to talk to Tabby about this. Still investigating? I'm done. It was interesting. Say no more. Literally. You're welcome to keep doing whatever you want from here, but our involvement has ended. The MMF police force thanks you. Fuzzball, I'm not sure it's that simple. La 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 la, I can't hear you. La 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 la, what's that? La 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 la, oh! He was conked on the head and died? Wonderful. I love a good, clean moita. Case closed. Thanks for your help. Detective, something smells off about this. That's because you're thinking with your brain and not your sense of self-preservation. I strongly suggest you let it go, Cuddles. The city and you will be better off in the long run. 
But what will you do now? Now that you're done, we're done too. I don't know where Nibbles is, but I can't wait any longer with my little peanut in this state. As soon as he wakes up, we're heading back to the station. We'll be safely out of the Montemuse fur, and they can go back to being horrible cats. Good work, team, and good night, Cuddles. Get back. Can we have a chat? I'd like your insights about what I found at the Nitty Kitty Club. Sure thing, sir. So, what happened? The headline is, Edgar Montemu is dead, right in the middle of his father's club. Oh, whiskers. Very whiskers. Salted caramel whiskers with extra mobster sauce on top, tabs. In fact, I spoke to three of the staff, and I found a few clues, okay? So, let's go through them. I'm ready. Okay, so Edgar was smacked over the head with something heavy. That's indisputable, but I also found some nip on him. The staff said that Bartholomew is really strict about them not using the stuff, so would he have let his own son use it? Special rules for the prince, perhaps? Or his father didn't know that he was using it? Well, the Barcat said that Edgar came to the club a couple times a month, and he always went up to his father's office. Seems like they were pretty close, but that sort of schedule also leaves a lot of time to hide a drug problem. Plus, when you throw in Gumdrop. Who's Gumdrop? A close friend of Edgar's. Died a few months ago from a drug overdose, and it hit Edgar hard. He stopped coming to the club, stopped talking to everyone that knew him. Why would he start using after that? Grief can make us do stupid things. Or he was using it before and was already addicted. Perhaps. I found this bag of nip on his body. It's got a symbol on it that I don't recognize. It's a cat curled into a circle, nose to tail. Oh, I know what that is. It's the Orocatos. It's a mystical symbol, popular with cats that believe in things like the planet being a cube. It's used as a shorthand for nip in Meow Meow Furrington. A particularly identifiable variety of nip, perhaps? From a known location, maybe? Sorry, sir. No such luck. It's just, well, like a calling card. Tells you you're getting quality. You seem to know, uh, you know, a lot about nip, Tabby. I'm clean, okay? I just have friends who, well, I, I go to clubs a lot. Give it here. Yeah, nothing strange there. Regular stuff. Well, as regular as illegal drugs on a murder victim can be, I'll need to find out where he might have gotten this. The body had these brown and white seeds near it. I'm not sure where he'd have picked these seeds up on his clothing. Do we even have plants in this city? I saw a flower growing out of a manhole the other week. It was carrying a knife. But you know what? Professor Huggy might have an idea of where they're from. She's overseas right now, but she did leave a spare key with me. You could check some of the reference books in her office. Eh, uh, in her office? <laughs> Does she still have that thing? The giant snapping orchid? Ooh, yeah. I saw it when I dropped off her seedlings. Yeah, I, I don't want to go in there. And it's not because of that. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break from opening doors. I used a phone rather than a door, like a civilized kitty. Oh, sir, it really didn't bite you that badly. It was just trying to make a friend. But if you insist. I found this business card on Edgar's body as well. I've never seen the logo before. Uh, have you? Nope, that's new to me too. What is that even meant to be? A crying cat? A cat exploding into droplets? No address, not even a name. Ooh, how mysterious. <laughs> you should find out what it means. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Probably somewhere all the criminals get together to discuss the best ways to silence nosy private investigators. Or where to bury the bodies. A plus for motivation, Tabuski. Well, if you don't recognize the logo either, I'll just have to hope I happen to see it on the side of the road while driving around or something. This scrap of paper was hidden nearby. 
hidden by Edgar? Well, uh, Ghost said so. <laughs> yeah. I... what? Yeah, it was weird, but the fact it was hidden near a body makes me think it's got to mean something. Look, it's got something written on it. A gentle cat in the desert. Have you ever heard of that? It's not a saying or something, is it? Like, no cat can know himself until he's been a gentle cat in the desert. Deep, deep, yes. But I've never heard anything like that. Also, um, the way it's written, it reminds me of a book title. Oh, could be. Why don't I head to the university library in the morning and see if they have a book with that title on record? That'd be great, Tabuski. Thank you so much. There was a footprint near the body, a really big one. The club was open last night, right? Could it just be a customer's, or an employee, or fuzzball? It was pressed into the carpet, on top of all the other prints, and it wasn't disturbed at all. I, I don't think it was made while the club was open. But there is one very big cat that works there. It could be that he stomped around when he found the body, left the print, and forgot. Yeah, I, I know. Or when he left the body there. He didn't seem to care too much for Edgar, but that's not the reason I'm treating it as a clue. One of the other staff said that they heard Edgar returning to the club early this morning, along with another very big cat. <laughs> a very big cat is not much of a lead. Was it the giant staff member? No, Platy, uh, um... Desiree said uh, it was a stranger Edgar had been speaking to the night before. She'd seen and heard them talking, and then heard them again later that night. Bloody Desiree. The club's... Um, entertainer? Her stage name is Desiree. I rescued her from a locked chest. Oh, gosh. There are five suspects, as I see it. The three regular staff, the Catulets, and whoever made a huge footprint I found near the body. All the staff had motives. Edgar had dirt on some of them, or treated them in a way they didn't like, or was a target for their ire by being a thoughtless rich playboy type. The Catulets have all the reason in the world, I assume, and the mysterious footprint owner. The Catulets? Who are they? Oh, an another crime family, it seems. How many does this town have? I I've never heard of them until tonight, but it seems they're at odds with the Montemus in some way. The chief was really concerned that they might be behind this, but Fuzzball didn't think so. So, the usual. Mobsters jostling for position in this city, willing to do anything to win. Mm -hmm. Either way, I need to find out more about them to decide. The footprint sounds like a dead end for now, unless you meet a giant, so perhaps you can look into the staff more? Yeah, they're not exactly the types to have a lot of public information on record, so I'll have to see what I can find out as I investigate. Right, okay, let me contact Huggy to see if she knows anything about these seeds. Ooh, tell her to say hi to Matrick for me. Trick? I thought he was in Lena. Oh no, he finished up there last month, and then heard about the professor's expedition to Pashan and joined up. He's been out there with her for about a month now. Oh, that makes sense. Wait, w w why do you know more about my brother's movements than I do? I, uh, just like to keep in touch with him. <clears throat> mm. There's some writing on this. That's some really high-grade writing paper. I would have just used a napkin. Oh, but what if I then needed that napkin? <laughs> well played, Professor. To whom it may concern, I am currently out of the country on a research trip. If you need to contact me, please contact the Dean of the Department of Biology of Herntine University or phone me at this number, Mouse Shell Bell Bunny Bathtub. Need to speak 
up. Uh, oh, okay, uh, P Professor Huggy. Hello, hi, it's Cuddles. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, just about. Uh, who's speaking? It, Cuddles! Cuddles Nutter Butter from uh, across the hall. Ah, uh, Cinnamon, yes. Oh, cuddle, Cuddles, I, I have some brief questions, if you have time. Of course, Cinnamon, fire away. <sighs> cuddles, I... I can't right now, I'm afraid. I'm on location studying some plants, but thank you for the offer. What was your question? I, I found some seeds, and I'm trying to figure out what they are. And since you're a botanist, I was hoping you would know. Ah, oh, seeds! How exciting! Big fan of seeds myself. Basically, plant babies, you know. Don't let them inside your brain, though. Oh, no! They'll grow in there, and then, boom! Sapling eye! Can you describe them, Cinnamon? Uh, it's cuddle... Uh, forget it, okay? They're, they're, they're small and brown with uh, little white spots. With white spots. Well, yes, you've just described half of all the seeds in the world. Come on, Cinnamon, I need more. Give them a sniff. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I guess I can. Uh, I get they smell kind of peppery. Mmm, peppery. And with white spots. Well, those have to be cabalor seeds. Fascinating. Not something you're likely to find growing in Meow Meow Furrington. They're incredibly toxic to cats, you see. I once had a graduate student who studied them for her PhD. Beautiful funeral. Hmm. Toxic? You, you just made me stiff them. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine, probably, now. If you'd lick them, oh, you'd be in agony right now. Well, or at least on the way to a hideously painful death without equal. <laughs> uh, still, who goes around licking random things they find in the world? <laughs> uh, yeah, who'd do that? By the way, I found them along with a bag of nip. I'm, I'm not sure they're related, but do you know any way to identify where it might have come from? Nip? Oh, dear, nasty stuff. You don't want to get involved with that. People think it's harmless, but, oh my, the chemistry says otherwise. However, I used to know a cat who might be able to help. He had connections with the, well... <laughs> seedier elements of the city, eh? eh? Just see what I did there. <laughs> oh, just a little botany joke for you there, Cinnamon. Lighten up! Anyhow, I used to get all my unusual samples from him for my research, including Nip. He can probably help you identify the strain, maybe the supplier. Any lead is welcome, Professor. Uh, what's his name, and where can I find him? His name's Cosmo. Last I heard, he was working at a general goods shop downtown. Uh, he's a little jittery at the best of times, so I suggest not mentioning my name at first. Okay, do you know the name of the shop? Mm, now you're making me dig into my memory. I think it was oh, uh, Wowie's Terrarium. Oh, no, no. Meowies uh, sen Sensorium. Me Meowies something, anyway, that's for sure. Meowies. Uh, oh! Meowies Emporium. That's Emporium without the E. Meowies Emporium? <laughs> Please tell me that's not named after the owner. Uh, Meowie. His parents didn't even try. Come on. Who even started the tradition of giving kittens cutesy names, huh? Do you know how much bullying I got in school for cuddles? <laughs> and don't even get me started on nut er butt er. I think you misheard me earlier, Cinnamon. I'm a botanist, not a therapist. The shop is named after him, but I'm not even going to try to explain. You'll see once you get there. We received your seedling delivery, Professor. They're in your office. Tabby said she'll water them every day. Excellent. 
Thank you, Cinnamon. I look forward to studying the balloon trees in detail when I return. Uh, oh, b balloon trees. Okay. Oh, yes. When planted, the growing trunks expand like a balloon. Amazing process. Pushes all competing saplings away, you see? Oh, and how much do they, uh, expand? Oh, about the width of our shared foyer. So, if some seedlings had theoretically, theoretically, mind you, escaped and uh, started growing in the walls... They would destroy an entire floor of the building. It would be a calamity. Uh, what makes you ask? <laughs> Just my unquenchable curiosity. So, where are you right now, Professor? I'm excavating a new find in Pishan. We're learning so much about what the ancient Pishan thought of the afterlife. Apparently, they thought it needed sprucing up. Did you know they mummified their plants? So far, we've found nearly a hundred individually mummified pot plants in this single tomb. <laughs> yes, I, I have something similar on my balcony at home. I believe Trick joined you recently as well. Oh, no, not a trick, dear Cinnamon. I'm just very far away. The distance makes me softer. No, no, Matt Trick, my, my half-brother. Oh, yes, the wolf. He is a dear. Marvelous at figuring out death traps that litter these ancient places. Tabby, uh, she asked me to pass on her greetings to him. Matt Trick? Cinnamon says to send you his bleatings? No, I don't know. He's a cat. Uh, it makes no sense. No, I, I don't know either, dear. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, Professor. Thanks for your time. Of course. Cinnamon, happy to help. Good luck with the... No, don't discard the sacred circle. It will unchain! Oh, that, that sounded fine. Yep, she's fine. Now, let's see if Tabby can find out where this Emporium place is. The professor didn't know where the seeds came from, but she did have a lead for me on a nip dealer. If Edgar was involved with nip, that's a start. I need to head to a place called Meowie's Emporium. What a cute name! I'll find the address for you, sir. Thanks, Tabs. Hey, Buster, do you have an appointment? You can't go in there! Sorry, sir, he... Ugh, just forced his way in! Oh, good evening, Mr. M Montemue, I assume. It could only be him. The heavy-set cat in the exquisitely tailored suit did not reply, but his eyes glowered at me like burning coals from under-pinched brows. As unease grew within me, I tried to project an aura of calm and confidence. For Tabby's sake, of course. I felt very brave. Well, a bit brave. Brave adjacent. It's okay, Tabby. <laughs> you can can you try to track down the address we talked about? No. I'll, I'll chat to our with our visitor. I'll be right outside, sir. If you need me, just yell as if you're being throttled by a rude stranger. Though older than me, he seemed perfectly capable of lifting me above his head and snapping me like a mewling green twig. This was a dangerous cat. Uh, Mr. Montemue, I am sorry that we have to make our acquaintance under such unfortunate circumstances. Do not lie to me, Nutter Butter! I, I apologize if I... Stop talking! Against my better judgment, I gave you and your friends a chance. They forced their way into my club, and rather than having them all thrown out, in some moment of madness, I allow it. My staff get interrogated, and I tell them to cooperate. My property is taken, and I permit it. Why? Because in my naivete, I believed that for once, the police and I might have the same goal in mind. Finding my son's killer. I, I, I think you misunderstand. No! When I arrive, what do I find? Stolen evidence, harassed staff, and Edgar lying. 
on the ground like a piece of trash. You didn't even photograph the crime scene. Mr. Montemue, I assure you, you you're finding Edgar's killer is... Do not dare say his name. My son is dead murdered in the one place he should have been safe. If you truly cared at all about my lost cat, you and your friends would have felt the tiniest piece of feline empathy and actually done your jobs. M Mr. Montemu, you, you let me- Enough! If I cannot trust this city's finest, then I shall do it myself. My claws are sharp, Nutter Butter. I will shred this entire city into scraps if that's what it takes to find the stray that murdered Edgar. Bartholomew fell silent at last, chest heaving, whiskers quivering. His face had gone red with fury, and he seemed itching to hit something, anything. Probably me. My brain was telling me to let him leave without saying another word if I didn't want to get a fist to the face. So, I ignored it, and ran straight towards the volcano. No, you won't. I mean, you would, you, you could, <laughs> absolutely, but you, you won't. You could have heard the pin of a grenade dropping to the floor. You didn't need to come here in person to tell me what you plan to do, Mr. Montemu. You don't need my permission or, or, or anyone's. You must realize why the police did the bare minimum tonight. They're scared of you, of what you could do in retaliation to any perceived slight. I think you're here because you don't want this to turn messy any more than they do, whether it's uh, for business reasons or because it was your son. It doesn't matter to me. We have the same goal, Mr. Montemu. I want to find his killer. Truly, truly, I do. Not to make the police happy or to up my solve rate, but because it matters. I, I didn't know him. And I don't know you, but everyone deserves justice, no matter who they are or were. If you let me, if you, if you give me the time and the space to work, I will get justice for Edgar. You have my word. I would have said you were new to this city if I didn't know better, Nutter Butter. Justice. You hold the word out before you like a flaming brand, so sure it will keep the darkness at bay. But what about the creatures that live on the streets around you, Nutter Butter? Will they respect your faith in that spluttering light? What about me? He lifted one paw, and I tensed. But he simply scratched his cheek and lowered it again. Impassioned speech aside, you are mistaken about one thing. I did need to come here in person. I needed to see you, to see who I was dealing with, to gauge your metal. That brand I mentioned, hold it very high and very tight. I will allow you to keep carrying it for now. But should it go out, nothing will stop my rage from engulfing this city. Is that a threat, Mr. Montemir? You should know that I don't take those lightly. The big cat did not immediately answer, but sniffed and turned his head to the side until his neck cracked like a rifle shot. There will be many other cats caught up in this situation, Nutter Butter. The things they've done, the places they've been. It forms a web with my son's murder at the center of it. You will be seeking out the details of this case, walking the gossamer strands of evidence and intuition to find the cats who lie at the ends. I can do the same if I have to. The difference is if you force me to step in, you will discover that many of those strands disappear forever. Don't fear for your own safety, Nutter Butter. Fear for theirs. We are not done speaking. I have a funeral to plan, and then we shall find out what 
you have learned. Be at my office tomorrow evening. Do not fail to appear. Sir, are you all right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not hurt, but that was, yikes. Wow, I've never had to think that fast in my life. Am I, am I, am I, am I shaking, Tab? Yeah, I, sh I, feel, I feel like I'm shaking. Whiskers, I thought I was going to die at least twice during that conversation. I heard yelling and then nothing. I, I was about to phone the police. What happened? Oh, not much. He just wanted to let me know that if I didn't solve his case, I'll probably wake up one day strapped into his declawing machine. He said that? He implied it when he wasn't threatening to kill everyone else linked to the case. He expects me to go talk to him at his office tomorrow. I assume to show me his collection of flensing knives and extracted teeth. Ugh. Well, at least you won't do what that overgrown hairball tells you to. I... Cuddles, no, you can't. I have to, Tabs. He, he's given me, well, not permission, but, but space to solve this myself. For now, I, 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 I don't know why, but he doesn't want to step in directly. Not yet. That means there's still a chance for someone to figure this all out without things getting worse. Does that someone have to be you? The police have already tried to avoid escalating things by not getting involved. It clearly hasn't had the intended effect. I, I don't have that luxury of inaction tabs. I might be the only one who can keep Bartholomew from taking his anger out on any other cats, and therefore the, the only one who can get proper justice for, for Edgar. Has anyone told you that you have a really direct sense of justice and that it just might get you killed? Several times tonight already, actually, yeah. I don't mean it in a bad way, sir. It's admirable. You're a good cat, better than this city deserves. And you won't have to do this alone, sir. I'm here to help in whatever way I can, uh, starting with the address to Meowie's Emporium. Thanks, Tabs. I'm feeling a little drained after that interaction, though. Uh, I think I'll just sleep on my couch tonight. This is going to be a tricky one, Tabs. Um, I'm gonna have to take some chances, I think. Skirt a few lines. Let's, let's be prepared for anything. I'm gonna head home then, sir. Rest up and get your energy back. I'll head to the university tomorrow and see if I can find anything on that message you found. Great stuff. Good night, Tabster. Oh, uh, and remember, um, if you ever feel stumped, don't overlook the old kangaroo, hmm? Yeah, the, the power of taste. Yeah. Uh, I'll see, sir. <laughs> Thanks, and good night. Right, let's get some answers. What is it with you people and bells? <gasps> Edna, how are you? I didn't realize you'd changed jobs. I didn't. This is my day job. Two jobs? Well, aren't you a productive possum? And your little hat is adorable. Yes, everyone comments on my productivity. I love that you put on a hat to celebrate Saberfest. That's the spirit. It wasn't my choice. Oh, now I remember. All staff have to wear one during Saberfest, don't they? It's a stupid rule. Don't you also have to respond to his catchphrase if someone says it to you? Tabby, don't you dare! Thanks! Tabby, don't make me muffle you! Of! Tabby! You're better than this! Of? Fury. Woohoo! Fangs of Fury! They're lucky I need this job. Why do you work here during the day? I have a real passion for shaping young minds through the power of literacy. Oh, how wonderful. That was my joking voice. Can you imagine? 
No, it's for the money. I collect cactuses, and they don't come cheap. <gasps> I love those plants. They're so cute with their little ears and adorable arms. You just want to snuggle them up. Sure. And then they snuggle their cute little thorns into your adorable little face. Catcuses are for spritzing with water, Tabby. Not for hugging. <laughs> All right. I'll keep my paws clear. How many do you own by now? Nine. A good start. Hundred and eighteen. Aren't you exhausted working both day and night? When do you rest? I have the constitution of a bull. If I was sleep deprived, you'd know it. I'd be cranky all the time! Gosh, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> um, were you sleeping behind the desk when I came in? I didn't get any rest last night. Ah, a busy night at the station. Lots of filing to do. I know how that goes. You know, I always tell myself just one more binder, and then before I know it, it's midnight. Tabby, please get some hobbies. And no, that's not why I was up late. I was interrogating a cake werewolf. I feel like even if you explained that, I still might not understand. It's great to see that Saberfest is still going on. Woo woo hoo hoo! Go, Sabi! No! No! Unsolicited wooing is not permitted anymore. Oh, um, sorry? Wow, this and woo that! I've had enough. No more wooing from drunken students wandering in and asking for a free beer. And no more wooing for that annoying mascot and his stupid catchphrase. Oh, Edna, come on. You were young once, right? I assume? Besides, Saberfest is just good fun. I used to dress up as Sabi every year and join in the parade. Exactly. And now you work for Cuddles. It's a slippery slope, Tabby. One woo too many, and you end up employed by an irritating P.I. Oh, he's not that bad. A bit scatterbrained, maybe unconventional. What did he even do to make you dislike him so much? Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you! On his first day, he knocked my cat cuss off the desk at the police station. Abigail was only two weeks old. I'll never forgive him. Talk soon, Edna. The exhibition is through the entrance to my left. No need to move the sign. That doesn't look like a public use towel. Talk soon, Edna. Our heritage, our future. Oh, that's a nice proper theme for this year's student exhibition. Ours was purple or blue things. A framed towel in a university? Now I've seen everything. Why do you have a framed towel on the wall? Hmm, that's the muffling tower. The muffling towel? <laughs> that sounds ominous. Good. It's supposed to be a deterrent. This is a quiet zone. Noisy students, get the towel. And those photos next to the towel? Of terrified cats? Ah, the wall of shame! Probably my greatest achievement after my cat cuss collection. Between that and the towel, library attendance is down by 75%. You mean problematic attendance? That too. Uh, doesn't the Furrington University Board disapprove of muffling students? <laughs> uh, no student has complained yet. And I expect it to stay that way. I imagine the towel pressed over their mouths makes complaining difficult. <laughs> yes, it's a, a good system, isn't it? And it works on University Board members too. <laughs> What's the exhibition about? For some reason, the university keeps trying to get students to express themselves and show their creativity. So they encourage the little monsters to create things. Based on what I saw in there, the theme this year is <laughs> don't quit your day job. 
It's harder than it looks, you know. A lot of work goes into some of the displays. In my final year, I spent weeks on my submission. Things have changed since you were here, Tabby. Kids don't work hard these days. Do they spend all their time napping? Yes! Behind a desk? Hmm, someone's angling for a muffling. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Talk soon, Edna. I'm here to investigate a phrase. Oh, well, you'll want the phrase investigation department, then. It's out the front door, take a left, and keep going until I can't see you anymore. No, I think it might be a book. A Gentle Cat in the Desert. They made a book of that? <laughs> Remind me never to read it. What do you mean? It's not a book? A film from... Well, you weren't born yet. Long ago. I remember hating it. Something like the uh, cat goes into the desert to find his missing wife, spends two hours whining, and ends up becoming the leader of a society of underground couch people. Unbearable. A film? Yes, that fits. Is there a way to check? Well, just watch it. I'm sure you'll agree with me. I mean to check if it is a film. Is there a record somewhere? Do you want a list of all films ever made? Conveniently, at pa? Well, if you put it like that... We do have that, actually. I printed them all out recently to see how much ink the printer can hold. Here you go. So it is a film. Oh, I wonder why Edgar wrote it down. A clue? Or was he just organizing a movie night? There's the date it premiered. Second month of the Year of the Monkey. Ugh, Year of the Monkey? Why is everyone in this city obsessed with using animal symbols instead of numbers? Hm, probably Havelock's fault again. Oh, I should check newspapers for that date. They'll be on the microfilm. Here we go. This is where the newspapers for that month will be. This is the newspaper film for that month. Mm, I don't think anyone's used this machine in years. <laughs> The light bulb needs to be replaced. Ow! Well, paint my pads and call me Gemma, that's hot. I'll need assistance to remove that. Edna! The bulb in the microfilm reader is very old and faint. Do you have a spare? We don't keep spares. Try squinting. Edna, could I borrow that towel? Does someone need muffling? No, I just want to pick something up with it. Oh, too bad. I loaned the grasping towel out to the zoology department yesterday. This towel is only for noisy students. Talk soon, Edna. So many exhibits. Let's see what they all are. Well, here goes nothing. Whoops. Oh, gosh. I really thought that would have been attached more firmly. If Cuddles were here, he'd probably have half this exhibition in his pockets already. But I'm not going to pick up random things unless I have to. Shh, 
short, kitty arms can't reach? I'm just gonna borrow this, Mr. Tooth. I'll be sure to put it back. I can reach the window with this, but what then? If they can stop a jaw, they can stop a door, as mom used to say. Huh, they'll definitely keep the doors open. This should keep those pesky doors open. I'll pick up the girls before I leave. Fun festive sounds are coming in from outside now. <gasps> I need the muffling towel. There are noisy students in the library. Ugh, you hear that, Ruckus? Someone's wooing in the microfilm room. What? How oh, dare they make so much noise! They need to be taught a lesson, you're right. But, oh, you had a really late night, and you've got all that spritzing to do. Why don't you give me the towel, and I'll take care of it. It's muffling time! I like your passion, Tabby. You are worthy to bear the towel. can grab it. Nobody's gonna have use for a burnt out light bulb. I'll just get rid of it. This should brighten things up. A gentle cat in the desert premieres amidst funding furor. A gentle cat in the desert. The hotly anticipated film from veteran director Hashtag Jack Spiker premiered with much fanfare at the Gibbon Theater last night with big celebrities, including Potter Lee, the famed auteur in attendance. But no eyes were on Potter last night. Amid a flurry of controversy around the financing of the movie, Bartholomew Montemu, local actor and star of the film, walked down the red carpet with a mysterious but very pregnant cat on his arm. Bartholomew laughed away the accusations that the movie was sponsored by mob money, stating it was nothing more than jealous rumors. He was less blasé when asked about the lackluster critical reception of the movie. Critics have lambasted the movie for substandard acting, ooh, direction, and writing, uh, and say that MMF film industry cannot expect to grow with productions of this quality. A gentle cat in the desert is likely to be one of the biggest flops of the year. Ooh. So Bartholomew was a movie star. Interesting. I wonder who the lady that accompanied him was. I'd better get a print out of this. This should be enough for cuddles. Better grab the girls and get back to the office. Shame. I wonder if he's still sleeping. Did I sleep through the entire day? I had a dream last night, Ramon. I was in a forest, running away from mushrooms. Toadstools with stubby little toadstool legs chasing me through the trees. They had tiny sharpened sticks in their hands and they were yelling at me with their cute mushroom mouths. It, it was adorable, but I was terrified. What could it mean? Good evening, sir. 
Tabby, what are you still doing here at this time of night? You were passed out, sir. I wanted to be sure you were all right after your encounter. Oh, thanks, Tabster. I appreciate it. I I'm fine, though, really. Were you on the phone to someone? I heard you talking. Hmm? Oh, no, I was just telling Ramon about my weird dream. I was running away from armed toadstools in a forest, and I think my feet were made of rubber. Do you think it means something? <gasps> oh, did you eat any camembert before you went to sleep? You know how cheese affects you. I don't think so. Then it's probably just your subconscious panicking, you know. Oh no, what if the scary mobster cuts me into a million little pieces, Ramon? Oh, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better. The way forward is to focus on the facts, sir. And I've got a juicy one from my trip to the university. I found out something about Bartholomew. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Teamwork. Great stuff, Tabs. Let's hear it. Well, we were on the right track, sir, but missed the mark a bit. A Gentle Cat in the Desert isn't a book. It's a film. And not only that, Bartholomew was one of the stars. It was meant to be a tentpole production to catapult the Meow Meow Farrington film industry to worldwide acclaim. Wait, since when do we have a local film industry? Yeah, we don't. Not anymore. Gentle Cat was a massive failure, and when other films also failed to do as well as hoped, the entire thing collapsed. Uh, apparently there's a few paw prints in the cement somewhere in the city, and that's all that remains of it. Oh, and Bartholomew was in the movie, you say? Uh, that must have been before his mob days. Uh, not necessarily, sir. The papers back then were choked with speculation over where the money for the film came from, and most of them pointed at the mob. It might have been how Bartholomew first got involved with them. Interesting. Yeah, that would add up. Uh, maybe he promised them a nice cut of the profits, and it all went bad, and he had to pay off his debt somehow. Do you have a copy of the article? Just this photo, sir. Oh, wow, the premiere. Gosh, he looks so young. He, he looks uh, a lot like Edgar. Never mind that, sir. Take a look at who he's with. A co-star, maybe? Can't see the face. It's not her face that caught my eye. What do you mean? Oh, 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 but, but that means, Tabby, uh, how long ago was this? Pretty much three decades, sir. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Might explain why Edgar was looking into his father's past. Perhaps he was trying to find out her name, too? That sounds plausible. I think it's time I pay a visit to Mr. Montemue and see what he has to say about it. Are you feeling better after your chat last night? I am now. Who is he anyway? Really, if you think about it, just a big cat with a lot of money. I bet he doesn't even own a declawing machine. I like this city, Tabby. It's where I keep all my stuff. I'm not going to let those mushrooms scare me out of it. Those mobsters? Mobsters, yep. Totally what I meant. <laughs> totally. Thanks for the help, Tabby. Time to wade deeper into this mess. Well, I can't put it off any longer. I'm heading to Bartholomew. Good luck, sir. And be careful. I'll wait here until you get back. Thank you, Tabby. If you don't see me again by tomorrow, tell the police to look for me in Bartholomew's basement, I guess. Seems word is spread about Edgar. Looks like he knew quite a lot of people. I'm here to see Bartholomew. Tinkle knows. Boscat told him to expect Kitty. Is Kitty in trouble? <laughs> I'm not in trouble. I'm doing my civic duty as the investigator of a criminal case to... Tinkle thinks Kitty should be careful with the word criminal. I, I, I didn't mean... Uh, I'm, I'm going to go inside now. Kitty is not as dumb as you look, then. Thank you, Teen Voon Kiljunta. Bartholomew stared at me silently after Tinkle left. Clearly, I wasn't the only cat who had slept restlessly. 
He wore the same clothes I'd seen him in the night before. He had bags under his eyes. The bite of whiskey filled the air. Tinvaka, what now? Did you think his parents named him Tinkle? It's only this foolish city that still cleaves to the stupid tradition of giving children sappy names. He merely got tired of nobody in the city pronouncing it properly. So he shortened it. I, I, I see, so I guess you could say he crushed it. <laughs> hey. The flat stare I got told me that my attempt at comedy was not appreciated. Thankfully, he changed the topic, sparing me from more awkwardness. Do you believe that a son should pay for the sins of his father, Nutter Butter? I don't believe that anyone should pay for someone else's mistakes, especially if the price is death, but the world is an unfair place. Ah, and it is your job to make it fair? No, no. My job is to try. How noble. Your clients must find you a delight with your self-deprecating humility, righteous words, and penchant for irreverent comedy. But what a family, Nutter Butter. Can justice be served when your sin is your bloodline? It can always be served. Sins aren't found in blood. They're found in actions. They, they can be traced to those who perform them and used as evidence to hold them to account. The big cat's keen gaze unnerved me. I had been ready to be yelled at again, threatened, even ignored, but not whatever this was. Interrogated, conversed with. So, do you believe that my son was killed because of me? Because of the actions I took? I, I don't have enough information to say yet. Have you done anything recently that would have given someone a revenge motive? Any overdue parking tickets, just for example? He did not like that. Not at all. His eyes narrowed, and one side of his mouth rose in a snarl to reveal bone-white canines embedded in blood-pink gums. Does this strike you as a time for levity, not a butter? You wield your graceless wit like a dulled blade, probing for what? Information? Weakness? Guilt? Spare me the deflections and tell me, have you considered what I told you last night? He used his words like bludgeons. The bigger, the better. That was fine. I could talk a lot too and I'd read all the books on my bookshelf. I knew words. I have considered it, Mr. Montemue, at length, but you're not the first cat to threaten me, and I have no doubt the last either. So if you think I'm going to roll over the moment someone bigger than me bears his fangs, I need you to understand all cats are bigger than me. I won't be your lap cat. Mr. Montemu, I don't report to you, and I don't work for you. I won't slink to your side the moment you snap your fingers. You don't like my jokes, that's fair. Black humor is far from rare in my line of work, but I can understand it turning your nose at a time like this. But I'm not going to stop being who I am for you. I'm a P.I. and not a police cat because I value my independence no matter which side of the law I'm dealing with. I told you last night that I would find your son's killer and I stand by that. I swear it, even on Edgar. I was ready to die right then, for Tinkle to burst in and turn me into wet red kibble with his gargantuan paws, but it had to be said. I couldn't have done the case under pretense. He needed to know who he was dealing with. And, at last, it seemed he did. You surprise me, Nutter Butter, but do not use his name like that ever again. Uh. Very well. Do you have any information for me? I had to wet my tongue before I could continue. Out of the frying pan, into the mobster fire. There are a few pieces of evidence I'd like to discuss with you, yes, but last night's interaction was heated, and I would like to avoid a repeat. We may, we will, be discussing unpleasant topics. Do I have your assurance that you will remain as collected as you are now? Collected? Yes, I 
will be as collected as I am now. I will nod and smile and pretend that I do not feel crippled by the loss whenever I think of my son or filled with unquenchable rage to punish his killer. Your mother should have taught you not to judge a cat by the shine of his coat, Nutter Butter. My pain is vast. It would swallow you, and you would drown in it, alone and forgotten, mewling forever. I am not collected. I am enraged. I stared into eyes that burned like holes into a place beyond the world. A terrible place. And then he blinked. And they were simply eyes again. But my suffering will not aid you in finding the murderer. So you have tonight, and tonight only, to ask me whatever questions you wish. I will answer them, all of them, as truthfully and calmly as you can hope for, and reserve my anguish for when I am alone when it shall not bother you. I, I didn't mean... Orphan, widow, widower. Words made of pain, for pain, yet they at least grant an identity. But for a parent that loses a child, nothing. The very idea is so terrible that we leave it nameless. So I am denied even that simple expression and my grief must remain anonymous, and all the worse for it. Consider that, and hope that you never, ever feel anything a fraction as terrible. I wanted to say something, anything, that would show I understood, but, but did I? I'd come here to stand up to a bully, but I'd only succeeded in becoming the antagonist. I'd expected to have to face down a monster, but all I'd found was a cat in pain. Mr. Montemir. Do you have someone, someone you can talk to, I mean, about what's happened? He didn't say a word, but I saw a look in his eye that answered my question. I am so sorry for your loss. Your sorrow is meaningless to me. Tell me what you have found. I found this business card on your son's body. Do you know where it's from? Celestine. Who's that? A mercenary of a cat. That's his business card. He owns the establishment, a venue that myself and other cats like me use as neutral ground. But I've only ever gone there with Team Vunkil Junta. Edgar knew of it, certainly, but he never expressed the slightest interest. Worth following up on? If Edgar was there, that tricky two-color cat would definitely have taken note if only to find a way to exploit it to his own ends. Oh, I'll pay him a visit then. Can I have the address? You'll find them not far from here, across Herod Bridge in Cabacon Street. Your son made a note of something. He, he seemed quite keen to keep it a secret. A gentle cat in the desert. A movie title, it would seem. We did some poking around and discovered that you have an interesting history. An actor? <laughs> I, I would never have guessed. Am I the first actor you've met, Nutter Butter? You seem disbelieving that we exist. Oh, you exist, but you don't advertise the fact either. Did Edgar know of your previous occupation before recently, I mean? I don't think so. I never brought it up. It was so long ago, and I didn't want him to... to dig into the drama around your final production? I have a theory about where the murky trail of funding for that film ends. How did you get your foot in the door of this line of work in the first place, Mr. Montemio? Is it possible some of your investors sought to get some long-delayed recompense? That's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. A very fanciful one. Well, then give me some facts, Mr. Montemu. Your son starts looking into a film you made decades ago and dies. Did he speak to the wrong people? Or something else entirely? I, I couldn't help but notice a very pregnant cat standing next to you on the red carpet. The dates add up, Mr. Montemu. How is his mother doing? He kept his expression mostly still, but his mouth twitched unhappily at that. I hope the story you're spinning is entertaining you, Nutter Butter, because it is a fiction. Spiderwebs and shadows. You are correct on one count. That is Edgar's mother. 
Barely. She had other ideas about where she wanted her career to go, and a child did not fit into it. That cursed film was the end of my acting career, and the end of her involvement in our lives. If Edgar was looking into my past, he would have learned nothing beyond what I told him when I felt he was old enough. That he had one parent who loved him, and one who did not. I've heard from your staff that whenever Edgar visited the club, he'd invariably go to your office. Except last night. Why's that? Are you sure you're an investigator, not a butter? <laughs> I was out of the country. Of course, he didn't bother going to my office. Does he only go there if you're around? Do you socialize outside of work? What did you talk about last? How is any of that relevant? If you're fishing to ask if we'd had a fight, we did not. He was just taking some time to be alone. He had the other key card for my office elevator. He knew he was free to come and go as he pleased. As for what we discussed last, the loss of his friend, the expansion of the business, goals for the future, mundanities. I found a bag of nip on Edgar's body. Nip? No. You are mistaken. I'm really not, I promise. The packet was in his clenched paw as if he'd just received it. He apparently met up with someone at the club and they acted somewhat suspiciously. Listen to me, Edgar did not take nip. I understand Edgar had not been to the club in months. Have you seen him personally in that time? Could he perhaps have picked up some new habits? I've also heard that you do not tolerate drug use by your staff, but does that extend to your family? It's not as simple to fire a son as it is an entertainer, uh, for example. Is that a reference to Platy and her unseemly dependency? Yes, I know of it. She doesn't hide it nearly as well as she seems to think. But as long as what she takes comes in a bottle, served over a pharmacy counter, I don't care. When it starts coming in a bag, smuggled paw to paw in a dirty alleyway, then I take action. All right, but you still can't be certain Edgar wasn't indulging. How close were you two? Could he have been hiding it from you? Do you know any nip addicts, Nutter Butter? It's not something you tuck into a pocket and turn to when you have a free moment. It consumes your life. If Edgar was involved, I would know. And beyond that, he was distraught that a friend of his had died of an overdose, furious even. He had come to hate Nip as much as I do. Your staff have some theories about what happened. I'm sure they do. Tinkle didn't see anything odd, apart from Edgar even being at the club after such a long absence, but he did note that he seemed very upbeat. Did anything happen recently that might have improved his mood? Not that I'm aware of, but we had not spoken in a while. Miss Kitty says she heard Edgar coming back into the club later that evening, along with a cat she recognized the voice of, a big, mean type, she claims. I would not trust anything Platy claims to have seen or heard after 2 a.m. That's her indulgence time. What she sees or hears then is liable to get... Uh, confused. If you say so, but I, I did find a very large footprint next to Edgar's body. Larger than anyone who works for you. Then investigate it. Do you need my permission? No, I... Uh, never mind. Finally, Pepe says he saw Mousezilla, but... I think we can discount that. You might find Pepe's convictions ridiculous, but he is not insane or blind. He is loyal and trustworthy. Mousezilla is obviously not real, but if he says he saw something, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. You must have accumulated quite the rogues gallery of enemies in this business, Mr. Montemir. Can you think of anyone that might want revenge? I am older than I seem, Nutter Butter. And I have managed to outlive most of my enemies. Those that remain would not strike at me through my son. If you believe they wouldn't, doesn't that make it the ideal way to catch you by surprise? No ancient rivals, no young upstarts, the, the catulates I've heard mentioned. 
You simply don't know enough about how things work in this city, Nutter Butter. There's a hierarchy, and on top, two families stand supreme. Mine and the Catulets. They have their domain and I have mine. We do not jockey for position. There is simply no chance they would have done this. And any small organization, they would not risk annihilation. And that is certainly what would befall them if they dared a move like this. Well, I'll still keep my eye on those as options for now, if that's all right. As you wish. Okay, that's all the information I have so far, Mr. Montemio. Then I imagine you'll want to get back out there and start gathering more. You know where the door is, of course. Carlos? Desiree? What are, what are you doing here? I've not left yet, Carlos. You've been here the whole day? Desiree, you've had a traumatic experience. You, you need some rest. I managed to nap a little in my room. Thank you, Cuddles. <laughs> but... The attractive cat looked in the direction of Tinkle, guarding the elevator like a sphinx. I wanted to thank you properly for saving me yesterday. Who knows how much longer I'd have been stuck there. Are you speaking with Bartholomew? Have you found evidence against him? You have to involve the police, Cuddles. No, no, nothing like that. He, um, uh, invited me over for a chat. You can't trust him, Cuddles! Please, don't believe a single word he says. Abruptly, tears appeared in her eyes. Oh, Cuddles, I'm scared to even think it. Could Bartholomew have... Killed his own son? Why? She stared at me for a moment through shining tears before seeming to come to a decision. There's something you need to know, Cuddles. Edgar and I, the night he died, we talked. What? After my act, he came to my changing room. He was angry, Cuddles, going on about his father, about Gumdrop. He seemed angry at the whole Montemu Empire and scared. Could Bartholomew have given him an ultimatum? Perhaps Edgar wanted out, but his father had other plans. Why didn't you mention this last night? Oh, Cuddles, forgive me, but I didn't trust you yet. You found me in the chest when nobody else did, and I wondered if Bartholomew was trying to trick me. But I spoke to Pepe and to Tinkle, and it's clear you're earnest about solving this. Anything else might you have overlooked mentioning last night, Desiree? Nothing more, I swear. I can't help but feel that this is partly my fault. Perhaps if I'd tried to convince Edgar to cut ties or offered more support. I'm, I'm sure there's nothing more you could have done, Desiree. That's so kind of you to say, Cuddles. And I feel so much better after speaking to you. If you need any help putting that horrible criminal away for what he did, just ask. Thanks. I shall. There's a note on here. Desiree, stop borrowing my feather boas and get your own. Oh, Kitty has claws. That's enough outfits to put on a school play, as long as the theme was overdressing. Ooh, heart-shaped button. Does this open a secret drawer of heart-shaped candy, maybe? Let's see. What? Oh, whoa, what is happening? Why? Uh, 
That is uh, quite a bed. Goodness. Is, ooh, is that a... Mm, and a... <coughs> oh, 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 wait, yes. Well... Well, good. I've got that now. Stuffed deep in my briefcase where nobody uh, can see it. To um, ask questions. <laughs> or anything. Meowing's Emporium. This is the shop, according to Huggy. The Cosmo person should be here. Oh, a poster for the amusement park just outside the city. Lappy and Geronimo's Ultra Fun Play Park. Welcome to Meowie's Emporium, customer. With your fur so smooth and your nose so wet. Purr. The shop was run by a raccoon, it seemed. You didn't see many of them in Meow Meow Furrington. But he was so positive, I already liked him. Confetti? Flavored confetti? Yes. Meowie's has spared no expense for our promotion. Purr. Please enjoy our delicious apricot-flavored paper pieces. Apricot? Hmm. Not really my favorite. Such honesty. Thank you for your feedback, customer. Purr. This will help make our next confetti gun a hundred times better. Oh, do watermelon flavor next time. I love watermelon. Watermelon? Incredible feedback. Thank you, customer. This might be the best feedback Meowies has ever received. Please. Take this, with the thanks of the entire extended Meowies family. A weird plastic ring? What's this do? It's a mood ring, customer. Purr. When you wear it, it can tell you how you're feeling. For example, if I put it on, it would say that I feel honored by your patronage. Studies have shown that making customers self-conscious about their emotions makes them buy more things to feel better about themselves. Well, isn't that... neat? I, I haven't seen a raccoon in Meow Meow Furrington in ages. Me neither, customer. Purr. But you are one. I? Meowie? A raccoon? <laughs> we do have a good time here at Meowie's, don't we, customer? How can I be a raccoon? Look at my shirt. I love being a cat. Well, <laughs> I mean, does that prove anything, though? And I purr constantly. Purr! See? I just did it. Plus, I'm called Meowie, a common and popular cat name given to me by my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Real Cat. You have a lot of feline stuff going on. I'm, I'm not denying that. <laughs> then it's settled. We're Meowie the Cat and Mr. Customer the Other Cat. Two cats, living life in the cattiest city in the world. Purr. Meow. Skrunk. <laughs> Sorry, what, what, was that skronk at the end? <laughs> yes, uh, the noise two cats make when they have a deep understanding of the fact that they're both cats and are deeply satisfied with the fact. <laughs> skronk. <laughs> <laughs> skronk to you too, then. <laughs> Meowy skronk. You know, I've had a glance around your shop, and I can't quite figure out if you have a theme. Of course I have a theme, customer. Purr. My theme is things that people need. Well, okay, but who needs to pick only one example of at least 20 in my field of view right now? Who needs inside-out umbrellas? Forward thinking, dear customer. 
Strong winds will turn your umbrella inside out anyway. So catch the air unawares. Beat it to the punch. Purr. Absolute genius. No further questions. Thank you. Talk later, Meowie. One, two, three, four stars. Wow. Ooh, this is an exceptionally promotional promotion. What are the rules? How do I win? I must know. To one side of the shop stood a cat who must be the assistant. His blank expression and slow, methodical gum chewing did not inspire much confidence. But if Meowie wasn't this Cosmo I wanted, then it could only be this cat. An exchange bin? I exchange what? Confuse your friends, flummox your colleagues, change their minds about anything. What items are on promotion, Meowie? Everything, customer. From our mixed-use musical instrument collection to our inside-out umbrellas. To our pasta. Especially our pasta. Purr. Yeah, you sell a strange assortment of stuff, Meowie. We sell what our community demands, customer. And they demand pasta. Pasta cooked in inside-out umbrellas to the haunting refrain of plucked guitar strings, apparently. This is a marvelously cultured city, is it not? Purr. Meowie, has the lure of flavored confetti improved the success of your promotion? Customer, can I speak honestly to you? Cat to cat. Cat to... cat? Exactly. The promotion has struggled. I was certain people would be thrilled to participate, but it has not been so. Then, inspiration struck. Run a promotion for the promotion. A delicious double wrapping of promotional goodness that is sure to get cats flocking back to Meowies. Well, maybe. Oh, customer, I hear the pain of withheld honesty in your voice. You need not spare Meowie the harshest law of retail. Customer's time is valuable. Customers need to know that they should visit Meowie's Emporium instead of, say, Keith's kooky kiosk. I mused, reflected, contemplated, and realized my flaw. Overthinking the selling of obscure items? No. I was trying to tell customers why they should give me their patronage when I should be showing them a dramatic presentation to convey everything that buying from Meowies represents. And to sweeten the pot, a promotional award for the promotion of our promotion. A special mystery item for the lucky one who aids me. Purr. Mystery item, you say? Could it be the huge food basket underneath the promotional promotion? Sign? I asked my assistant Cosmo to obscure the mystery item, but it appears he simply added more cellophane. A lot more. It's wrapped so tightly, and it's such a thick layer. Whoever wins it might have to spend hours clawing it open. Maybe even days. Meowie, tell me what I need to do to get that prize. Oh, customer, thank you for offering. Brr. Here is the promotional material I've written. Just get as many cats as possible to hear it. Meowie, the exchange bin over there, is that related to your promotion? It is not, customer. It is for the world-famous Meowie's Emporium Historical Artifact Exchange Program, which has been running uninterrupted for over five months. Oh, so it's had good success. None whatsoever, customer, Per which only makes its grand purposes even more necessary. Meow Meow Furrington has a rich and fascinating history. You as a customer of rare insight, no doubt remember all the great moments from our past that we learned about in cat school. Uh, yes, just uh, r remind me. The Jam Wars, King Leopold the Lion Killer's coronation, the opening of the 100th Porky Pete's. Ah, this city has seen it all over the centuries. Purr. But time, time is like a haircut. You always need more? Or everyone can see if you've gone through a bad one. 
Oh, the, oh, the best ones are from a place halfway across the city that isn't open on weekends, even though you called and they said they were open on weekends, but you got there and they were closed, so you had to drive all the way home again, right? No, fleeting. We must capture it while we have the chance. And that chance is now, customer. Purr. I'm assembling artifacts from significant moments in our city's history, creating a collection for all to enjoy and learn from. Bring me items of historical value to enrich my museum and receive items from the exchange bin in return, purr. Um, what do historical items look like, Meowie? They could be anything, customer. Ancient weapons, rare cutlery, even mundane seeming items of clothing. Actually, I have a lot of weapons in cutlery already, so clothing would be especially desirable, purr. What items will I get in exchange? Treasures, marvelous things. Go on, take a look for yourself. Oh, a, a fancy hat and, um, yeah, a bottle of some kind. You mean a hypnotism kit and a flask of self-foaming fur cleaner? A hypnotism and... Uh, Yowie, I need you to believe me when I say I am now obsessed with owning these items. Don't give them to anyone else. I will be back with some uh, historical items. Wonderful, purr. Although, I am confused by your air quotes around historical. Oh, just, uh, just a cat thing, you know, like, like we learned in cat school. Oh, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> in that case, I am eagerly awaiting your wonderful artifacts, customer. Talk later, Meowie. Oh! What have you got there, customer? Something historical? Absolutely. This is a famous historical boot. The boot of Larry. Larry. Oh, the very name fills me with awe. Tell me, customer. Tell me of Larry's boot. Well, um, you know, a long time ago, really long ago, you definitely won't know anything about the time it happened. Larry was an explorer. He discovered the whole peninsula that Meow Meow Furrington was later built on, and was he was very famous for that reason, definitely. But he lost his boot in some quicksand. Yeah, and it was recently found again. What? And this is it. So, yep. Hey, that's history. That sounds like an ideal artifact for my museum customer. But I've never heard of this Larry. Well, surely you've not heard of every famous cat explorer. <laughs> I definitely have. Their illustrious names are engraved into my mind. Steve, by the way, Ron Waffle, Gary Cheeseman, Eustace Meg Theradon, Billy the Pigeon. I know them all. History was my favorite subject in cat school. Ah, but who discovered them? I'll tell you, Larry. He did that right after, um, what, whatever I said he did just then, just now. He did? Oh, what a wonderful item to add to my museum. Thank you, customer. Burr. I think that this has to be rewarded with a hypnotism kit. I should ask Meowie about this. And just like that, this cosmic power belongs to me! <laughs> uh, Cosmo? <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cuddles. Nice to meet you. Someone told me you could help me. Inside out umbrellas are to the left, and the exchange bin is to the right. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, um, I love the shop, and I will definitely look around more, but for now, I just have some questions about seeds. Seeds? Like, <laughs> from plants? Like, I don't know, seeds guy. Do I look like a freaking pla plant pan panologist? <laughs> Could you just take a look anyway? If you really want, guy, but I told you, I don't know anything. What do you know about this? His eyes widened, and it was as if his dark face somehow paled. N nothing Leave me alone! So, you'll look at the seeds? Oh uh, yeah, I guess.
<laughs> no, 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 no. Never seen him. Never seen him. Are you absolutely certain? Please, these seeds are a lead in a murder case. M murder? <laughs> you, you mean like, you mean Edgar? <laughs> That's an interesting first guess. Did you know him? Know him? Oh, cucumbers, look, I'm clean, all right, I promise I was not involved. I don't know anything. I don't know how much more clearly I can communicate. I don't, I don't know anything. Pl pl please, just just go. I'm, I'm nobody. I don't want to get locked up in a dark little room in, in, in the pool of Paul. La Boule de Poix? The fancy theater? I... No, bro, you are confusing me. I never said anything. Leave me alone, please. La <laughs> Boule de Poix? What does that have to do with this whole mess? Guess that's a new lead. Bartholomew Montemio. Well, how about that? With his paw prints above it. One Night with Alfonso. Tickets on sale now. Oh, please. Who would pay money to watch that overwrought fop dance around on a stage for three hours? I'd pay for... Not that. Yeah. Should put that on the billing, Alfonso. <laughs> Makes me so mad. I, uh, need to get inside, kiddo. Must I buy a ticket or something? No, I mean, uh, yes, mister, you can buy tickets, but you can't go inside tonight. It's rehearsal night. The gatekeeper that now barred my entry was a gangly, awkward young cat gawking at me through the glass of the sales window like I was a zoo exhibit. Eyeballs like shocked oysters blinked rapidly behind moony glasses, and a huge purple pimple on the end of his nose blazed like a small sun. Teenagers. <laughs> I was sure I could bully my way past this easily enough. My name is Cuddles Nutterbutter, and I'm here to investigate a murder. M -m 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 murder Yes, that's right. So, rehearsal night or not, I need you to let me in and... Wait, cuddles? Like in Mr. Gibraltar's show? Wait, what? What did Alfonso do? In his play, mister. The bumbling cat who keeps struggling to tie his shoelaces with his very small hands. Cuddles butter shutter. He is very funny. I like the part where he loses his car keys for ten months. What? That's not... He's the one who... I don't believe him. Oh, Alfonso, that's slander. You know, I'll take him to the ethics board, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll go to his stupid play and watch it and then send a really scathing review to the newspaper. Zero out of five stars. No, out of eight. Sorry, mister. Please don't yell. My supervisor will hear you, and I'll be demoted back to mop duty in the kitten area. Well, let me in then, and nobody needs to go back to mop duty. But you might be lying, mister, to get the actor's signatures. They hate that. If I let you in without permission, I'll be demoted back to sausage basting. That's even worse than mop duty. The grease keeps splashing into my eyes. Okay, see this badge? I'm not lying, and I'm as official as it gets. Let me in, and if your supervisor gives you problems, I'll tell him to speak to the chief of police. How's that? Uh, okay, mister. Sorry, mister. You, you can go in. The venue was old and designed in decades past by some overeager architect who really loved arches. It also wasn't deserted. To one side stood a cat in a fancy outfit, staring into the middle distance and mumbling something to himself. He seemed to be concentrating very hard. An interruption would do him good, I was sure. Cute! I'm gonna take one. Uh, 
I do not fear the green beast. Excuse me, I just need to slip by. Sir, who allowed you in? This is rehearsal night, and you are disturbing my practice. Tybalt MacTheridon does not have time for autographs. Don't worry, I'm not here for autographs. Uh, what are you practicing for? <gasps> what for? Is this not a theater, sir? A playhouse of dramatic intent. Oh, a play. Hey, do you guys ever put on Lappy and Geronimo? That's my favorite play. I love those puppets. What is this Sappy and Jiminimu? Uh, the play with the racing puppets? You know, Geronimo, he's the short, fat one who always slips and falls and pulls Lappy down with him. <laughs> Classic comedy. I yell, look out, Lappy, <laughs> every time, but he never listens. The actor looked aghast, as if I'd just asked him to hold the kitten's diaper. It sounds hideous. Puppets, sir. This is La Boule de Poix, foremost stage for the performing arts, not a tawdry venue for a kitten's matinee. I don't remember a manatee in Lappy and Geronimo. There will be no puppetry here, sir, marine or otherwise. I am preparing to perform the grandest play there is, Malim. Oh, sorry. I thought you were bringing up a hairball. Did you say phlegm? No, Malim. Oh, the uncultured masses. Have you never heard of the greatest cat play in history? Yeah, I mentioned Lappy and Geronimo already. So. Malim is a powerful tale, sir, of regret, heartbreak, redemption, and pale green betrayal. Sure, sure. But does it have puppets? It has a villain, sir, by name Oscar, the foulest fiend ever committed to words. I do enjoy a good villain. Then purchase a ticket, sir, and return on opening night. I could, but I really need to poke around. So how's about you let me past, or I'll be in the front row on opening night with a huge foam paw just cheering you on. You are most bothersome. Move on, and let me return to my memorization. Oh, a sheet covering something mysterious and probably thrilling. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. No! Sir, step back! Do not dare uncover what lies beneath! But I want to see what it is. It is a monster, sir. An unbearable sight. Were you to uncover it, you would regret every decision in your life that led you to this point. It is also being tested for lighting by the technical team, so leave it alone. Monster movies are some of my favorites. Oh, now I've just got to see this. Stop! Oh, listen, bud. Do you own this? Is this yours? Never! So you can't actually stop me. I suppose... But the hideous sides? Exactly. I can't wait to see it. I'm pulling this off. No, I cannot bear to lay eyes upon it. I must depart. How bad can it be, the big baby? greatest thing I have ever seen. This must be the green beast Oscar from Tybalt's play. So, uh, what's your job here? I like to imagine you're an usher. Hello, I'm your usher. Let me show you to your seat. It's just over. Oh, no, I don't have any hands to point with. No, come back. I can roll around on the floor to point you in the vaguely correct direction. <laughs> You'd be a terrible usher, and I love it. You know, I don't think I've ever seen eyes quite like yours, Oscar. There's something about them, you know? Something mysterious. They're like deep, googly pools luring me inward, speaking to me. 
Oscar, no, no, I can't hijack an ice cream van. Why would you even want... No, no. Of course you're the prettiest pickle I know, but where would I even find a collection of antique swords with no identifying marks? Sure, Tabby probably has a dress like that, which I could borrow, and maybe a wig to disguise myself with? But... No. No, Oscar, I couldn't possibly kidnap another horse. This has become completely unreasonable. I'm gonna walk away, and that's the end of it. Are any of your friends working here too? Templeton the giant eggplant, or Kevin the oversized courgette? You could make a little vegetable troupe and travel the country doing short morality plays on why eating vegetables isn't actually that good for you because vegetables have feelings too. Cuddles, huh. what are you talking about? Just a storage room, I guess. So quick to judge, Chaton. A beautiful cat materialized from the darkness at the edges of the room, stepping daintily into the light. She held her head high, proud. Her big eyes glittered like they were filled with diamonds. Her voice was warm, melodic. Perhaps they are very comfortable in such a variety of colors and fabrics. Even a cat like you could look beautiful every day of the week. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't know anyone was here. Do you make an habit of walking into unfamiliar places, Chaton? My work takes me into new places like this all the time, uh, Ms. Scarlet. Hmm, you are in the acting trade as well, then. Bienvenue. As she drew closer, I saw that her eyes didn't glitter solely of their own accord. Tears glistened at their corners. Welcome to my theater. Well, I'm not exactly an actor, I tell the odd fib. Um, is everything all right? Oh, yes. Just the uh, reopening night jitters. Would you like me to leave? It is fine, mon ami. Rehearsal night is not very busy, and I would not mind some company. So you're the owner here. What does that entail? What does it not? Choosing the productions, massaging egos, promoting performances. Why I hardly have time for anything else, Chaton. Egos? You mean Tybalt? Yeah, I met him. He seems like a lot of work. Such is the price we pay for talent. I guess Alfonso had to pay you for the privilege of putting on his show, huh? Alfonso? <laughs> The rotund performer. His shows are very popular. This is his third one. What? That's... I, I don't... The, the cats in this city clearly have no taste. If you're looking to spice things up, you should definitely do a performance of Lappy and Geronimo. Tybalt didn't seem to care about it, but I can tell that you're a cat of finer tastes. Lappy and... <laughs> You mean the poopets, Chaton? Yeah, you've got lots of space here. You could do the first live-action production. Forget Alfonso's show. He's a hack anyway. I've seen Lappy and Geronimo like 40 times. I can consult for you. Help get all the little details right to win over the hardcore fans, like Lappy's jackal tattoo and Geronimo's extra head. Do you know they didn't have those in the television show? How crazy is that? They dumbed it down so much. Crazy is... The right word. Give me a call anytime. I'm always available for Lapron help. That's what us real fans call ourselves. We're Laprons. Cool, right? Mm, I will certainly remember you the next time I see the poopettes. Oh, has Flaccid Levitating Pumpkin ever performed here? Once, yes. But never again. Oh, not very popular. Too popular. The fans, they bring pumpkins and toss them at the stage. And Monsieur Grimstonk, the singer, he calls me Cool Lady. Oh, no? <laughs> La boule de poil shall stick to drama, Chaton.
Are you aware that there's a giant pickle on the stage outside? <sighs> a pickle suit, Chaton. Although it smells of pickles more than I'm comfortable with. But that is budget cuts for you. Do you really need that for your play? Naturellement. Oscar is integral to Mlem. And this one, such talent. Have you seen his eyes? How they wibble about if you poke him? The audience will be enraptured. Unable to look away as he sways to and fro upon the stage. You know, I have noticed the eyes. They are really hypnotic. Perhaps you're onto something. Now I'll be on my way. Fair travels, Chaton. I looked under the sheet. It's just a huge pickle. What's so scary about that? Bah! You call it a pickle? But I name it what it is. A cucumber. Hey, th there might be people around controlling our language. That will only give him more power over me. He is a cucumber, sir, and I state it proudly. Have you never wondered at the origin of that word? I don't spend a lot of time dwelling on where rude words come from. I just don't use them because I'm a good boy. There is a bedtime story in the old language of a huge vegetable that stalks the night, the Fecal Blighter. It sneaks into the rooms of naughty kittens and stands next to their beds until they wake, then swallows them whole as punishment for not behaving. Cats told that story at bedtime? To their kittens? What sort of horrible people would do that? My grandmother, my mother, two of my three aunts. Oh. If my grandmother thought I was not taking her seriously enough, she would dress up as the vegan blighter and come into my room at night. I would wake up to a green, googly-eyed monster standing over me. What is wrong with your family? Since then, the tradition of the vegan blighter has fallen away. But the word was corrupted into the curse we now know. Cucumber. Something foul and fearful. Oscar is just a pickle to you. But to me, he is the vegan blighter. And when I see those mismatched, lopsided eyes, I am that scared kitten again. Without conquering that fear, I cannot hope to perform them. There's a whole display of mini pickles over there. Don't those scare you? Those are toys, teeny things. They could not swallow a whole child. I feel only a mild sense of unease around them. Out of interest, just out of interest, if I grabbed the display and shook all of them loose on top of you while yelling, be a good kitten or else, would it help or would it hinder? Please don't do that. You're a grown cat now. Can't you just put all that stuff behind you, stare that adorable, I mean terrifying, pickle in the eye and say, you don't scare me. Now, I'm gonna go rescue my pet lizard from the enchanted haberdashery. Or, you know, whatever happens in the play, I haven't seen it. I tried. For years, I visited doctors, charlatans, mystics, all failed. You cannot just wave a little vegan blighter doll in my face and go wooga wooga wooga. And not only because everyone knows the real noise the vegan blighter makes is flim flim flim. Okay. You should try to relax a little. It's just a play. I'm sure you'll memorize your lines in time. I don't have time to relax. This performance must be perfect. A few mistakes are understandable. People can be pretty forgiving. I was uh, shepherd number three in a school play once. I tripped over someone else's costume and knocked down the whole scary forest, uh, but still got a gold star. I don't care what other people think. It's my family I'm worried about. Oh, are they big theater fans? Ha! Ah, the very opposite. The McTheridons are not a cultured group. They don't approve of your career? They do not. And I do not approve of them. 
If this performance doesn't go well, they'll be sure to find out. And then I'll have to endure more sermons about why I should have just gone into the family business. Oh, and what's that, if I may ask? Being very rich and very abnormal. Abnormal, like funny haircuts? Or what? The cat gave a huge resigned sigh, looking up at the ceiling as if hoping a lightning bolt might fall through it and incinerate him. Abnormal is in a perpetual embarrassment to me. My father, for example, he goes for walks in the city parks. Oh, that old chestnut. He dresses up as a gardener and walks around, cutting the tops off of flowers and people's hats with equal abandon. If he's spotted, he giggles and runs away, yelling, Climble, clamble, I'm on a ramble. Uh. Aunt Beatrice has a shop where she waits for some unsuspecting member of the public to walk in, then gets them to participate in a fake murder scene made with marionettes. She even does voices for them. And Eustace, well, the less said about him, the better. Whoa, and they wanted you to do that? To be a rich weirdo? I refused. I wanted to be an actor, to make people applaud, not scoff when they hear the name Magthedon. Well, you're standing here, aren't you? I'd say that you succeeded. I will have succeeded when I speak the final words of Mlem on this very stage. All right, good luck with your rehearsing, Tybalt. Tybalt, I've got the opportunity of a lifetime for you. How would you like to become the face of a very up-and-coming local outlet by performing a short one-act play? Some material to test my mettle before the grand performance. I'm intrigued. Let me see. Captain Savings and his sidekick, Discount Boy, are summoned to the scene of a murder. The victim, high poster prices. The killer, Meowie's Emporium. <laughs> this is not material. This is low effort dreck. Where is the drama, the intensity, the denouement? Well, the prices were very high. I wouldn't degrade my art by performing this inside a dumpster, let alone on stage. Not that it matters. That cucumber is still outside. So, if the material was better and Tybalt wasn't afraid of Oscar anymore... Tabby, can you rework this script into something that's not this? I mean, like this, but not this. That's a big ask, sir. This is bad. Listen to this. Captain Savings reached for the throwing stars of instantaneous discount, making the overpriced pasta yell, No, no, not the throwing stars of instantaneous discount. That's not fair. We have no defense against them. Oh, no. The ooh carries on for three more lines, and then it just says, Insert pasta death noises. Well, the actor will only perform it if it's sufficiently dramatic and intense. He's used to theater productions. So a stage play. All right. Any ideas for what direction to take it? Maybe we can set it in space with explosions for drama. Oh, a discount explosions and, and a surprise reveal for the main character. Like, well, have you ever read the Max Full Power books? I see what you're getting at. How about this? There you go, sir. Ultra view, sister. Uh, it's, oh, it's perfect. Thanks, Tabby. Dieball, day. Hey, I think you'll find this script much more to your liking. Let's see. Personal sacrifice? Dramatic third act reveal? Yes, yes, this is what I mean. This is art. I am eager to perform this, but not while the vegan blighter remains.
Can I try to hypnotize you? I think I can cure you of your fear. Many doctors have tried hypnotism already. It didn't work. You may waste your time if you wish. Look into my eyes, Tybalt. Ooh. I've told you, this just doesn't work on... I smell licorice. Well, that did the trick, I think. Hello? If anyone cares, I'm just gonna borrow this for medical reasons. I'll bring it back, I promise. Oh, why does this smell like a pickle? Oh. Hey, Tybo, look at me. I'm green and not at all scary. <laughs> oh, definitely getting there. He's scared now, but I need to push him even more. Hey, Tybalt, look, big and small, huh? Huh? How does that make you feel? Two vegan blighters. Eek! I'm not a bad kitten. Tybalt will be a good boy. No eaties. He's almost there. I need to break through that last mental barrier. Oh, right. What was the right thing to say again? Oh. Flim, flim, flim. <laughs> what? Cuddles? What happened? Why are you dressed as Oscar? Doesn't this suit frighten you, the vegan what's it thing? Why? No. <laughs> you have no power over me, vegan blighter. Why was I ever afraid of you and your tiny plush minions? Oscar suit, you have fulfilled your sacred duty. Tybalt is cured, and now I need to get out of you because it's actually a lot scratchier in here than I expected. Tybalt, hey, I think you'll find this script much more to your liking. Let's see. Personal sacrifice, dramatic third act reveal. Yes, yes, this is what I mean. This is art. I shall perform it immediately. Quick, gather all the cats you can find. <clears throat> Friends, Farringtons, cats of rare taste. Tonight you bear witness to a tale of drama, of anguish, and of triumph. Sponsored by Meowie's Emporium, written by Meowie, additional music by Kenneth. Journey with me into deep space and experience the Price Wars. Star Admiral Max Fullpower stood on the bridge of his space destroyer, watching the price ships of the decadent Pasta Empire gathering on the ultra view before him. He rubbed absently at the stump that was all that remained of his right arm, the very arm he'd had to cut off with a space chainsaw in order to save the space people of Bolognese Prime from a lifetime of space servitude to high space prices. He'd never asked to be a Star Admiral. It wasn't in his nature. He was just a highly capable, devastatingly attractive, well-shaven soldier with 50 space years of experience. Why had they chosen him? Comms, he growled like a handsome bear. The comm officer turned to look at him, tears running down her cheeks. So, she read his space letter. The one where he told her they could never be friends because he was married to his space work. Comms, open a channel. Tell them their prices fall today. Yes, sir, she said. But first I have to tell you. I'm your long-lost twin sister. I know, he replied, gritting his teeth. He was just cool like that. I've always known. And, she added, 
Your father is alive. He didn't die in the Price Wars. He survived and fought to establish a new utopia for low prices on Planet Maui's Emporium. 14 Procyon Road, open 9 to 5. But, he gasped like a handsome bear with mild asthma. How can you be sure? Because, she said, taking off her mask, I'm him. Father, Star Admiral Max Full Power bellowed. The discount torpedoes shot forth, ready to reduce any and all high prices to remarkably affordable levels, with Levi's accepted. Planet Meowie's Emporium had won again. Or had it? Yes, it, it had. Bravo! Incredible performance! I gasped, I cried, oh, I did both at once, uh, which was somewhat confusing. Thank you, Cuddles. I finally feel ready to take on the challenge of Mlem. Will you accept this commemorative Mlem mug as a token of my appreciation? Oh, thanks. It looks very... muggy. If that doesn't get the word out about Meowmy's shop, nothing will. I should go and give him the good news. I, uh, I asked your assistant over there, uh, you know, about a murder, and he just shut down. <laughs> What's with him? Oh, customer, it is a tragic tale, Per. I believe that Cosmo blames himself for our current situation. Ever since the amusement park, he has not been himself. What did the amusement park do? It took our customers, customer. Until some months ago, a constant stream of cats came through here, all of them seeking Cosmo's sage sales advice. But when the amusement park began advertising all over the city, even outside this very shop, they simply dried up. No more cats visiting all the time. Cosmo became withdrawn and refused to speak to me anymore. But I knew he carries a silent burden of failure. The poor thing. Her. Where did all your customers go? Stolen away by the amusement park customer. No sooner did it start advertising outside the shop, than they all vanished. I asked one of the performers at Le Boule de Poix to do a recital of your material. <laughs> it was extremely popular. I think you'll start seeing a lot more business very soon. Customer, you are not only correct, but right. Purr. In fact, I have just ushered the final excited consumer back onto the street. Purchases in hand. Meowies is now almost entirely out of stock, and it is thanks to you. You are more than worthy of this promotional prize, customer. Take it with the blessing of the entire Meowies family, and a very special thank you from Meowie himself, which is me, Burr. The ultra wrapped gift basket. Oh, 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 oh hello, wrapping. It is stuffed to the brim with things us cats adore. Fish-flavored hamburgers. Oh, Hamburger-flavored fish. <gasps> Strange balls of link that someone fished out from under the bed. Milk tart, roast puffin wings, and 200 meters of yarn. Simply incredible. Meow, yeah. Gonna hang on to this until I've got time to properly oh, indulge. Ramon, I think this is the place. There's no name, but the sign matches the logo on the business card I found on Edgar's body. And Vermina Lapadu. Sorry, could, could you repeat that? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of tramp was standing on the sidewalk outside the building in a suit, advertising milk. No brand. Just milk. A pool of the stuff had collected around his feet somehow as well. I tried not to make eye contact. 
Uh, it's a crime to open someone else's mailbox without good reason. Like, if I heard a tiny cat trapped inside, I could open it to free him, but only then. Go away, Dunk! Oh, who are you? My name's Cuddles Nutterbutter. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I'm looking for the establishment. Why do you... Garky Ventacular! Shut up, Duncan! Oh, as I was saying, what are you... Ellie! Oh, Desdemo! Oh. I'm looking into a murder. The victim had your card on him and... Ducky Quack! Hot, hot! <clears throat> your card on him and... <laughs> Patty Lappy Flappy! Jab, jab! Okay, well, what's your problem, bub? Can't you see I'm trying to have a conversation with, uh... Celestine. And don't bother trying to reason with him. Derpy Duncan never listens. Is this about Edgar Montemue? You knew him? I was aware of him. I heard he turned up dead. Oops-a-daisy! Fluttering Quaver restrooms! Ugh. Listen, can you let me in? I, I have more questions, and this Duncan fellow is really annoying. No, I won't be opening this door for you or anyone else, not with Duncan there. If I open it more than a crack when he's around, he rushes inside and it takes hours to get rid of him. He waddles around talking nonsense and splashing milk over everything, and I have to get out the good chasing stick to go after him. It's dreadful. And to add insult to leaky injury, all I smell for days after is curdled milk. Ugh. No, come back when he's not around. Good night. Wait, this is important. More important than spending a weekend mopping up milk stains? More important than the very expensive dinner reservation I missed at the Gourmand's gazebo? Oh, I was so looking forward to it, but not tonight, apparently. Trapped here by an insane milk-swilling feline instead. Uh, today has been tiresome and has left me entirely disinterested in indulging another strange cat, especially one who dresses like you. Uh, the tie isn't working, by the way. Waka 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 chibroni. Waka 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 waka. Please, there's more at stake than you realize. Bartholomew Montemio is looking for vengeance, and if I don't find out what he wants to know, there was talk of declawing machines. Oh, Bartholomew has lit a fire under your tail, hmm? <laughs> no wonder you look like you've got a sniper trained on you. The thing is, I know Bartholomew. We're, uh, terrific buddies, I believe is the term. He's too smart to do anything to make me upset at him, so... I think this is a Cuddles problem and not a Celestine problem. Can't you call the police to get rid of Duncan here? The police, ever champions of the city's downtrodden, no longer respond when I report the mad, milk-drenched cat stalking my sidewalk. Apparently, it is not urgent. Ugh. Hey, there's a lot of stuff worse than Duncan happening in the city all the time, you know. Like murder. Speaking of which, can I just ask you- You may not. I am disinclined to put up with smart-mouthed cats or their problems right now. Doubly so, ones that have clearly never eaten at the Gourmand's gazebo if they think murder is worse than missing a reservation. <laughs> I might have a Cuddles problem, but you've definitely got a Duncan problem. Am I right? Are you this quick on the uptake with all facts presented to you on a platter? Ha <laughs> ha! So, what if I get rid of Duncan for you? <laughs> Xylophone canola fiesta? <laughs> oh, you think it's that easy? I've tried everything. Sprays, signs, alarms, threats. Mm, he's immune to them all. But you're welcome to waste your time trying. Just don't hurt him. Then the police will get involved, and I will seal this portal forever for any egregiously dressed feline seeking entry. Um, what does that mean? Quick as a whip. <laughs> All right. 
Let me see if I can resolve your Duncan situation. Excuse me. Is this the establishment? <laughs> Jiminy Halibut. Uh. Leviathan Puddlehopper. I'm sorry, good sir. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Send some Papa Dum Trickle Flower. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just gonna go. Goodbye, Bubbles. <gasps> Wait, did you just say goodbye? Y you understood me. Whispering slip. <laughs> or not. Okay. Your uh, milk is leaking out. Not sure if you're uh, where from that. Lop, lap, lop, lap. Ooh, is your suit full of milk? Doesn't that make it all warm and nasty? Correct worst. Hey, Duncan. <laughs> Get. Go on. Shoo. Please. Preppy John. <laughs> No, really. See, there's there's a giant uh, a cookie suit coming this way. No, if you if you don't leave, he'll uh, he'll dip in you and he'll soak up all your milk. Oh, the cat said nothing for once, but looked at me with a flat expression. <sighs> okay, judged by a a crazy cat in a milk suit. I tried. What are you even doing here? This area is not even busy. Who are you selling to? The cat turned to look up at the building sign, then back at me. Lappity jerk, don't come back. I don't know what that means. Do you, do you want to eat the sign, hug it? You want to kidnap it to make some sort of monstrous sign bride? <laughs> Katootie. I'll kit your tootie. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I just don't understand you. Good luck with the whole milk thing, though. Hello? Are you still there? No. I've escaped via a secret tunnel that I failed to use until now for no good reason. What do you want? I'm not getting anywhere with Duncan. Sometimes it seems like he understands me, but he never says anything sensible. Crosslatched Whisper Hump. Yes, I know. If it was as straightforward as just asking, don't you think I'd have gotten rid of him by now? Well, can I just ask you some questions about Edgar through the door? Stand here and be interrogated through a door? Like a farmer? Absolutely not! <clears throat> here at the establishment, our standards are inviolable. You care a lot about your image, huh? I bet you just loathe it if something were to happen to it. What are you saying? I think I'll put an advert in the newspaper. Yeah, more people need to know about your snooty little club. Definitely. But the establishment, ah, it's such a generic name. I think what people really want to visit is Celestine's Fun Farm. You wouldn't dare. Bring the whole family, especially your dirty children. Touch everything. <sighs> Free face painting. No, enough. Fine, Nutter Butter. We ordered a book to try to communicate with Duncan. <clears throat> Maybe it's arrived. There, see? That wasn't so hard. I would not crow just yet, Nutter Butter. I ordered it. With extra secure packaging. All right. Let me see if I can resolve your Duncan situation. Oh, packaged with ultra dense paper for your convenience. Oh, yes. You're all mine, little package. Little package. Y 
You know, Ramon, it's the small things that make me love my job. That's crazy talk. Understanding babies, politicians, and very confused people. Let's see if this works. Never mind. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I just don't understand you. Good luck with the whole milk thing, though. Voila. Chumga. Well, Mackie jumps up. The mean. Those are those were those were red birds are in here. Okay, uh, that translates to m milk thirsty kitty. What? Mackie jumps up. The mean. Mackie jumps up. The mean. Oh, so you want to sell milk to the cats inside because you think that's a thirsty cat on the sign? Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, Duncan, but that's not thirst. It, I don't know. It's it, it, entitlement or money or something. Perspex holiday! Oh! Man, I've got to show this to Tabby. <laughs> the hook whip. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. The whip hook. <laughs> I'd better get this patented immediately. This changes everything. I, well, the, well everything that can be hooked. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> Ramon, make a note. Well, you don't have hands. Oh, okay, okay, it's fine. I won't forget. <laughs> whip hook, whip hook, whip. <laughs> I'm gonna be rich. Web hook, web hook. The handy tool with a hundred handy uses. Oh yeah, the jingle just wrote itself, baby. This will hide it, and what Celestine doesn't know won't hurt his snooty upturned nose. Oh, well, there we go. All sorted. Now, Duncan, what? Is that smoke? Oh, 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 yikes! Ah, 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 fire! Um, mm. oh, I can't whistle. Um, nothing to see here. <laughs> There are no thirsty kitties inside. See, the sign is on fire. Off. I mean off. The sign is off. Mm, blow pack nasal. I, I don't have time to go through the whole book again. So, uh, hoopy, drop saggles, moopy. Does that, does that mean anything? Snaggly sniffle. Snaggly sniffle. No, yeah. Sniffle. Ramon, what do you think has to happen to a cat for them to end up like that? I hope he's got someone to look out for him. Hello? Are you still there? Okay. Duncan is gone. Can I please come in now? How on earth did you manage that? Did you turn off the sign? I told you we don't turn off the sign. <laughs> no, <laughs> the sign is still on, technically. <laughs> I guess I'm simply charming enough to persuade him to leave. <sighs> Why do I smell smoke? Do you? Weird. Someone uh, must be having a barbecue. Anyway, Duncan's gone. The sign is 100% still on. <laughs> so 
Let's talk about Edgar. Very well, you tiresome cat. You may enter. I had thought Tybalt just about the fanciest cat I'd ever seen, but I had to revise that judgment. After seeing Celestine, this cat had a waistcoat and a pocket watch. I could only hope that whatever fancy accent he doubtless spoke would be intelligible to peasants like me. Wowie, fancy place you got here. Yes, I imagine this is quite a fresh experience for you, being surrounded by such excellence. Actually, I've been in the VIP area at Porky Beach quite a few times, so I know a thing or two about class. You should consider putting up a painting of a, a dancing bear. Adds a ton of class. I will take that under advisement. <clears throat> Conscience demands that I thank you for getting rid of Duncan. Sure, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, right? Yeah. Yeah, back scratching claws are available on request, but you will be required to scratch your own back with it. And I'll take my book back now, if you don't mind. If I find so much as a single claw scratch on it, well, you can expect a bill. So, what's all this for? The cat blinked at me so fast, I thought his glasses might slip off his nose. What is it for? Well, with all the pools of water and the steam in the air, I'm guessing... Uh, laundromat. <laughs> <coughs> no, your, your lack of culture is astounding. This is a bathhouse. Oh, I didn't know we had any of those in this city. <gasps> How exotic. So cats come here to sit in water voluntarily. Well, unlike you, clearly, not all cats wish to lick themselves for hours a day. Some find it very relaxing to unwind in a warm bath. We also act as a neutral location for certain types to meet. A uh, certain type? Like the Montemus you're on such good terms with? and others, the establishment is neutral ground. Here, we are all merely cats, even the criminals that pervade our city. Outside allegiances must be left at the door, along with any weapons. Claws are sheathed, and the sharpest things thrown are words. The crime families have been meeting here peacefully for years to discuss points of shared interest. And the police force doesn't know? The vast eye-roll motion turned the cat's eyes white for a moment. <laughs> of course they know. They even visit now and then. Perhaps they think to get an idea of what's going on with all their favorite families. <laughs> I like to think of it as a police cat's soap opera. But there are no criminals inside our walls. Just cats. Relaxing. <laughs> Do you know anything about Duncan's history? He's clearly not all there. Well, I know nothing about where he came from. He started appearing uh, a year or two ago, but he was at least somewhat lucid then. I could shoo him away with a loud yell. <laughs> He's become entirely senseless since then. Nothing penetrates his skull anymore. He just stands around, blabbering nonsense. Well, he's selling milk for someone. Perhaps if we can find out... I'm sorry. Did something I say give you the impression that I am up for joining an impromptu ragtag band of plucky true crime fans to solve low-effort mysteries in and around the city, armed with a spiral notebook and no prior law enforcement experience? No, there is no we. There is only Cuddles and Ramon. I found your card on Edgar's body. That implies to me that he was planning to pay you a visit, or already had. Yes, he was here. Sauntered in last night, cocky as a prince. A first-time visit for him, but of course I knew who he was. I made one of our private rooms available to him. He was surprisingly polite, up until he dashed out with no warning a short while later and never returned. He was here yesterday. Th that must have only been hours before he died. What did he do? Did he speak to anyone? Did he say anything? I'll need immediate access to the room he used. The cat clasped a hand to his chest as if I'd asked him for his firstborn. Certainly not. Celestine, this is important. A cat is dead. 
and I imagine he'll remain that way indefinitely. Not a butter. You are here as a guest, solely at my discretion. If you annoy me, I will toss you out of here faster than you can say, uh, Do you serve a continental breakfast? Which we do not. I just want answers, that's all. Be that as it may, the room in question is being used by someone already, an actual member. He's had a difficult day, and I won't have you disturbing him. Celestine, I promise I will do my best to be quiet and not annoy you or anyone else. Just tell me, did Edgar meet with anyone? Keep their identity a secret if you must, but did he? No. He arrived alone and left alone a short while later in a rush, as I said. Perhaps he forgot something. In a rush? Might he have left any items behind? If he did, he would have placed them in his personal locker, but the locks to those are given directly to new members, and each is unique. Even I cannot unlock them. I'll need a list of the people who were here last night, please. Oh, certainly. Shall I scent the list with rose water for you? Oh, perhaps add some glitter? Mm, okay. Oh, that was sarcasm. I am not going to divulge any information about our clients, Nutterbutter. Discretion is our motto. Really? It's not on your business card or your sign. Thus proving just how discreet we are. I am investigating a murder on the authority of the chief of police. Let me through, please. Very impressive credentials. Oh, capital letters and all, I don't doubt. Unfortunately for you, the only sort of credential I respect is the one I grant, and the one that you, as a guest, do not possess. Okay, that's all for now. The owner let me into the club, at last. I'm glad to hear that, friend. But now, he won't let me go investigate the rooms without being a member. Can you help me out, since you're in the private area? I think if you lift your arms, I can balance my feet on your paws and you could lower me down. Oh dear. Is the owner being brusque? He is. Do you know him well? Is he always like this? Sometimes. It's so annoying. He stands there, all tall and fancy with his spectacles, checking his pocket watch far more frequently than anyone needs to. And all he says when you explain your problem is how you're not a full member, so he doesn't care. Ugh. Oh, he's not so bad. Uh, I'm probably biased after being married to him for 15 years. <laughs> <coughs> so it's, uh, it's quite high up here, and, I, you know, I think the distance may have caused you to mishear some of the things I said. Relax, friend. Celestine's a wonderful cat, but he's had a difficult day. Our assistant, Edna, didn't show up for work, so we had to do twice the usual work. On top of that, we've been dieting all week. Oh, our reward was supposed to be a delicious dinner tonight, but Duncan showed up and wrecked that plan. So we're both a little tetchy. I'm sure if you come back when he's had time to rest and recover, you two will get along like a building on fire. I'm sorry, but I can't wait. Edgar Montemy was here hours before he died, and I need to know why. The Montemu kid? Yeah, I heard about that. No wonder there was a buzz of activity here today. Mm, and you're the unlucky guy that got the case, hmm? Can I ask you about him? I'm not in the mood to field murder questions through a window, friend. Could you speak to Celestine for me? It really is important that I investigate the areas Edgar was in. I'm with Celestine on this one, friend. A dead mobster doesn't bother me. There's plenty more where he came from. Listen, Bartholomew is not in a good headspace about all this. If I don't find out what happened, he's gonna start doing his own digging. Violently. 
And if he does, a place like this that depends on the illusion of civility from very uncivil cats, it won't last long. There was a languid splashing sound as a heavy body shifted about in the tub below. Mm, interesting point of view. Might happen. Might not. But it might. True. The splashing continued for a moment. So... I'm sorry, friend, but no. I sympathize with your goals. I really do. But the establishment's rules are clear, and I won't break them for no reason. If you'd caught me on a day I wasn't dieting, maybe I'd feel more generous. But, alas... I guess I'm off. I happen to be in possession of a basket full of really nice food. I think it's more than enough to make up for the dinner you missed and your diet. Oh, that smell is... <laughs> but I can't grant you membership just for some food, no matter how delicious it... There's an entire jar of roast puffin wings. Did you say roast puffin wings? Oh, the taste master ones? Ooh. The very same, with cherry sauce and melted cheese on top. Oh, mmm. All right, all right. Lower the basket and you can have my membership card. But don't tell Celestine that I broke my diet. He even makes you have a membership card? He's a stickler for the rules. I don't mind. <laughs> it makes him happy, but never mind that now. Just lower the food. This should slither down into the private spa room like a wet leather snake. Ugh. Ah, why did I say that? I found my membership card. Where did you get that? Now, I remember every single person I've issued one of those cards to, Nutterbutter, and you're definitely not one of them. Well, I believe the rule is you can only get access with a membership card. And here's my card. See? It says so, right there. Member. I also noticed that it says humbled. Yeah, that, that's my... Middle name, Cuddles Humboldt Nutterbutter, the third Esquire. After all, you never said it had to be my card. Ha <laughs> ha! You are <clears throat> technically correct. The best sort of correct. <sighs> Fine. You may have access to the member areas, but only for tonight. You may not move any items between my rooms, and you may only take what is on your person into the changing rooms. You must wear the correct dress code at all times. You may use locker number nine for your effects. The cat smirked triumphantly. Locker nine is the one closest to the urinals. Oh, that's just unnecessary. Enjoy your visit, Nutterbutter. One more thing. I won't have it said that the establishment treats any member, even a temporary one, poorly. Please, take this gift bag. Ugh, I recommend making generous use of its contents. Ugh, soon. <clears throat> Oh, free goodies. <laughs> Let's see. Some scented oil. All right. Neat. I'll keep that. And wait, is that all? Nothing else? Why was this in a bag by itself?
Better pack all my inventory items in here. I feel ridiculous. I'm here, in person. Hello. How's your window? Remember that? Hello, friend. I couldn't help but notice your tattoos. Do they mean something? These? Oh, yes. These are my graduation tattoos. Oh, wow. You got all that to celebrate graduation? Not to celebrate, no. As proof of it, I studied overseas for many years training to be a professional basher. When you graduate, instead of a certificate, you receive these tattoos. It lets others know what you can do and to leave you alone. That's really interesting. A, a basher? I met a crusher the other day, but he wore a suit, so I, I couldn't see his arms. wonder if he also has tattoos. Do you mean Tin Vankel Yanta? He is a good crusher, but crushing is the path for those without the strength of will to be bashers. True, bashing comes from a place of control and understanding. When you bash, you do not simply hit something. You let it hit you back. You feel it in your soul. Otherwise, you're no better than a smoosher. The community of melee combatants sounds far more complex than I ever imagined. Just don't listen to the pro-smooshing propaganda. Smooshers are charlatans. They couldn't smoosh a paper bag. Thanks for lending me your membership card, but it seems it was for nothing. Edgar's locker is locked, and without the key, not even Celestine can open it, apparently. Or is he lying about that? No, he's right. Each member is issued a unique lock and key that is never duplicated. He had no key on his body, though, so either someone took it or he didn't have it on him at the time. Do your clients ever leave their keys here? I'm not going to divulge all of our secrets just because you fed me, friend. Discretion is our motto. Well, if I can't figure out what's in there, your motto might have to change to We'll beat cats up for food Because your clients will be too busy gunning one another down in the streets to have time to relax here Yes, you mentioned that possibility earlier I'm curious, friend Why so much effort for this kid? Did you know him? I had no idea he existed before the chief pulled me into this case But the police won't touch things because of who he was, so... I feel that I have to. Why? He was just another criminal who paid for his mistakes, was he not? Maybe I'll know for sure when I've unraveled this whole thing. For now, my active investigation is keeping Bartholomew from hunting down anyone he feels is responsible. The city has enough problems. We need to put in the work if we want it to get better. Nobody will do it for us. Interesting. He said a similar thing. Who? Edgar. Last night. You spoke to him when he was here? W what did he say? Please, I need to know. Mm, not much. He was in a rush to leave, which I thought was rude since he'd only just arrived. He said he'd lost something and he had to go fetch it. But he would be back. But he asked me to keep something for him. Oh, please say it was his key. His key, yes. And that was strange, because if he was just going to fetch something, he should have just taken it with him. But there was something in his expression. So, I pressed him a little. He looked really worried, like he, he was being hunted. But all he told me was that he was just trying to change things in the city. And that nobody else could do it, only him. He forced his key on me and said it was just in case. And left, and never came back. Humboldt. I need you to give me that key. I have to know what Edgar put in his locker. Oh, oh, Celestine won't like it if I... Celestine doesn't like anything except maintaining the status quo with all his annoying rules. I'm sorry, I know he's your husband, but he doesn't care what happened to Edgar. But you do, Humboldt. 
Whatever Edgar was trying to do, he seemed to know it had put him in danger, and he was clearly right. He left that key with you to keep something safe. Whatever it is, I I'll bet it's why he was killed. And that means I need to get my paws on it to figure out how to solve this case. Uh, I can't just give it to you, friend. We have rules. A trade, then. Like before, I, I bring you something, and hey, maybe when I get back, I just happen to find the key that Edgar, uh, dropped. Edgar thought he was the only one who could do whatever he was going to do. Well, he's gone. So if anyone else has a chance of doing it, it's me, but only with that key. Well, uh, I do feel quite full after that meal, and this tub is warm. Perhaps if I had something to make me even more relaxed, I might doze off and drop anything I'm holding. Oh, uh, a wink wink. And if someone were to pick up whatever I dropped... Wink wink. Repeatedly saying wink wink out loud is rather ruining the effect, friend. Regardless, you're not going to be able to just walk out with it. There are metal detectors on all the doors for security. I guess I'm off. Quietly open this up there. What are you doing there? Oh, I just need some fresh air. I'm mildly allergic to steam. That feels much better. Briefcase time again. Never know when you might need a recipe book. A collection of recipes for alcoholic drinks. The paint stripper sounds pretty interesting. goes. Oh, hey, something dropped in the tray. Honey flavored milk? That's ah, for kittens. Too sweet for me. I carry enough disdain for him without adding the poster to the pile. Hey, this turned red. I guess my mood changed. How oh, Fonzo. Makes me so angry. A mug full of oil. Yummy.
Oh no, uh, the honey's mixing with the oil, but the milk's just floating on top. That's disgusting. There's probably a metaphor in this about letting your anger dissolve away or something. Your time has come, Billy. Hey, let's see if you can bring order to this disgusting mess. I mean, I guess that smells marginally better, but I'm uh, definitely not drinking that. Oh, Superstorm is gone. Must have gone back to Pepe. The mixture changed color, darkening from a loud but only tipsy red to a deep sloshed and smashing a bottle open on the bar purple. And now it smells like a truck stop. I guess the moral of the story is, if you're offered a drink in Karsten, turn it down. Paint stripper, huh? Time to put that to the test. Ramon, I think I found something on the wall outside Meowie's shop. The same symbol that was on the bag of nip I found on Edgar. I think Cosmo's been a naughty kitten. I don't suppose you know anything about the Oracatos on the wall outside. What? How did you? Oh, that's not there anymore. Cosmo, I got news for you, bud. <clears throat> Slapping a poster over something doesn't make it vanish, especially a symbol used to subtly advertise drug sales. Which makes me think, gosh, if I was selling illegal drugs, I might put a symbol like that outside to let people know where they could buy some. <laughs> no, no way. I'm, I'm out of that life, I swear. I told him. Told whom? Cosmo, you're not the only one afraid of criminal cats. I've got Bartholomew Montemu on my back. I, I see you know the name. Whoa. Bartholomew sent you? <gasps> Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please. Please don't kill me. <laughs> Customer? Cosmo? Everything all right over there? Sure is, Meowie. What's that, Cosmo? You got the city's widest selection of cat kiss medallions with prices so low they're doing the limbo? <laughs> wow, I'm thrilled. Just tell me more, but in a much calmer and lower tone of voice. All right, Cosmo? Thanks. Oh, please. I don't want to die. I'm not here to hurt you, Cosmo. If you tell me what you know, I promise I won't tell anyone that we spoke. I want the truth, but I want all of it. Okay. Okay. I assume you've also had a run-in with the Montemus. A cat came in one night months ago and Meowie wasn't here, okay? I thought he was a customer, but then he started talking. He said his name was Edgar Montemu. The way he spoke, the look in his eyes, he scared me, guy. I was really frightened of him and his eyes. I've met his father. I think I understand. He was so angry. Said that I sold his friend some nip that killed him. Said that if I didn't stop, he'd make sure nobody ever saw me again. Did you sell nip to his friend? I mean... <laughs> yeah, but look, like, you can't die from nip guy. Must have been something else he took. I don't know. Which you also sold him, I'm assuming. 
I wasn't his boss, all right. I just sold him what he asked for, a little nip, a little cash. It's all right. And I stopped after Edgar's business. Business? I stopped after Edgar's visit, I swear. I covered up the Orocatos. I told everyone to stop coming here. I said, you guys, stop it. Stop coming here. And I never sold another bag of nothing and no one, man. You practically shut down when I showed you the seeds. Why? I don't know where you got this guy, but that's not, that's the way that is. That's what they make fluff from. You shouldn't be carrying those around. What's fluff? Oh, God. Fluff is like super nip. Kind of, not really, but like kind of, but like way more addictive. Much more, way bigger high. But man, it does bad stuff to you. It does bad stuff to you. Oh, but you sold it anyway, right? Because that's not your problem. I'm sorry that I had to do bad things to make a living, guy. Fluff sells for a lot more than nip, and I needed it to make, make food and rent, pay for my cable bill that I have. Next time, I'll just starve on the streets. How about that? Okay, so, but why would any of this lead to you ending up in a small, dark room in Le Boule de Pois? I went there. It's just some uptight performers. Well, Scarlet's not that bad, I guess, but Tybalt's? Oh, he's a bore. Not that bad? How do you? Uh, you don't know, do you? Guy for a PI, you're really not well informed. Scarlet is Scarlet Evangeline Catchlet, matriarch of the biggest crime family next to the Montemuse. The theater is just a cover, my guy. Catchlet? Now he gets it. You've been living in a box, guy. The Catchlets control nip in this city. Nobody sells without their approval. Cross them and like <coughs> throat cut yours open. Edgar acted like he was pretty sure the Catulets would listen to him if he went to them and tattled on me. I wasn't gonna take the chance, okay? You presumably had Catulet approval to sell if they have as tight a grip on the drug trade as you claim. Why were you still scared of Edgar telling on you? The nip wasn't the problem, guys. The fluff. It's not theirs. I don't know who makes it, but I doubt the Catulets appreciate the competition. It was a risk, but the money was too good. If the fluff wasn't supplied by the Catulets, where'd you get it? I knew a guy who knew a guy. He got me hooked up with passwords and drop locations and a great discount on groceries. But just before I quit selling, he disappeared. Now, I, I didn't have time to find out who, why, before I cut off my connections, but I heard rumors he showed up at the train tracks, dead on them. He died on the tracks. That's right. Just before. So, maybe Edgar? I don't want to know. And you think that if the Catulets found out you sold fluff... Cosmo disappeared. Throat cut sound. Edgar had nip and fluff seeds on him when he died, yet he threatened you about selling both? I don't know, guy. All I know is if you're gonna be talking on, taking on, if you're gonna be talking or taking on the catulets and you wanna keep your claws, don't mention fluff. Claws? What, 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 what have you heard? Uh, do the Catulets have declawing technology? Tell me everything you know. What? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a turn of phrase, guy. Cucumbers. This is such a mess. My nerves. Oh, man, oh, man. I'm done. I'm capiche. I'm kaput. And whatever the words, I'm zilch. I'm nil. I just hit myself in the face. What are you going to do? Move, man. Far away from the Catulets and the Montemuse. Oh man, no, nah, guy, this disguise is getting really itchy anyway. I got so much itch. Here, you don't want this headpiece? You take this headpiece. I hate this headpiece. It doesn't look good on me. It makes my head look fat anyway. Meow. 
Yowie! Ah, quit. Yowie, yeah, I quit. 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 Goodbye, cat I've never seen before. Meowie, I've brought this for your historical exchange program. Oh, customer, <laughs> you pull my whiskers and tweak my tail with that assertion. <laughs> this is no artifact. <laughs> it is Cosmo's colorful headwear, with hair included, apparently. Odd. Uh, he'll be wanting that back. Cosmo, we found your hideous headwear. Cosmo? Now where is he gotten to? Mm. Ah, but... You see, Cosmo is not who you think he is. Oh, he's not a cat? Well, obviously he's a cat, Howie. We're all... Um, never mind. I, I, I mean that he is actually a prince. A prince? I am intrigued, customer. A prince of where? Of, of here, Meow Meow Furrington. He's the secret heir to King Leopold. <gasps> Do you mean to tell me that Leopold's only son, the weeks old kitten Llewellyn Leopold, somehow survived the siege of Old Furrington by the Nine Lions 400 years ago? <gasps> Despite the many corroborating accounts confirming his demise, including a painting gruesomely titled Dead Royal Kitten with Tulips, an escape to found a secret royal dynasty that has remained hidden until this very day? Uh, yes? Remarkable! How did Llewellyn escape, customer? I must know! Oh, wasps! They picked him up and... Whoa! Zzz, 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 right? Stunning! And thus return the Leopolds in the form of Cosmo! Oh, a hitherto unknown and awkward employee of Maui's Emporium! Now revealed to be our one true king, Per... Yes, yes, all of that! And now our prince has left to find a castle, yes, and where he can put on the Leopold crown and become our new cat king, Skronk. I am astounded, customer. Cosmo? Royalty in hiding? <laughs> all this time? I would have sworn he was nothing but a disinterested assistant, Per. I once asked him to restock something, and he just sat down and said he couldn't because he was sick with don't careitis. He he is indeed a masterful actor, as are all the royals. This absolutely deserves the self-foaming fur cleaner from the exchange bin customer, Purr. I guess you're mine now. If I ever go crazy, start enjoying baths. back. Re bonjour. You didn't mention before that your surname is Catulet. Her gaze did not falter, but she lifted her head a little, giving her an arch look. Mm, should I have chaton? I must have missed the memo. Perhaps I can get a bandana to wear with my name on it. Scarlet Evangeline Catulet. Could be quite fetching. Little flowers, bread the din. I wasn't trying to be funny. Oh, that is good. Dressing correctly is no laughing matter. Do you mind? This is serious. Oh, I was led to believe you are a fan of comedy, Chaton. Am I not what you expected? I can be more like a Montamu, if you like. Grrr, grrr, threats on your life, looming presence. Go! Yes. I know what Bartholomew is like, but I'm here to discuss you, not him. Could have fooled me, Chaton. But if you wanted my signature, you should have just said. And if I wanted Nip? I can probably manage a nibble. 
a nibble of some nip. No, oh, very clever. Yes, I see what you did there, Lieutenant Segway. Of course, nip is inhaled, not eaten, but it's fine. Points for trying. I wouldn't know. I've never tried it. Mm, believe me, that's painfully clear. You're standing there like someone shoved Oscar's supporting stick up the back of your shirt. A little nip would help you relax, Chaton. Give you um, some perspective. You're intimately familiar with the drug, naturally. I'm an actor, Chaton. We do not demonize everything in life that can bring people joy. Unlike your profession, people in mine embrace life and everything it has to offer. Nip is not evil, Chaton. Nip is a gift. Or, if you prefer a formal approach, a tool. You're projecting an exceptionally relaxed attitude. Does that casualness extend to your personal security? You were remarkably easy to reach for a crime boss. A crime boss? Oh, but that does sound grand. Ordering the crime around. Go there, crime. Climb that tree. Wave at all the people. Is that what crime bosses do? You tell me. She shrugged carelessly, blinking slowly at me under long eyelashes. <laughs> it is you who named me such a tongue. I am a theatre owner. Everything in La Boule de Poil is above board. I do not need garbs and fences. Besides, even if I was the sort of person you claim, I would not lean towards bombast and threats like the Montemules. I have standards. Say whatever you like. My source was clear. You run the Meow Meow Furrington drug trade. But I can tell that's not something that matters to you. You're toying with me like you toy with the lives of everyone in Meow Meow Furrington. You don't see cats, you see targets. Where would the city be today if it wasn't constantly fighting you off like an infection? How many lives has your nip ruined? Your source. Hmm. Does he wear a smart suit and growl a lot? She dismissed the rest of what I said with a flick of her hair. And you make that word sound so substantial. Ruined. I must have missed that headline. Nip bag breaks into Cat's house and forces itself down his nose. No, Chaton. Nip doesn't ruin anything. Cats are quite capable of ruining their own lives. They'll simply pick the most fun way of getting there. If I was involved with Nip, I would just take advantage of that fact. Uh, of course. It's not your fault that you choose to make Nip available. Not your fault you get people addicted to it. And I guess it's not your fault Edgar Montemu died either. He ruined his own life by your reasoning. I think she would have looked less shocked if I'd stabbed her without warning. The apparent honesty of that response almost had me writing her off there and then, but she was an actor. If you think my demeanor gives you license to accuse me of heinous acts, you have made a very big error in judgment. I don't surround myself with tactless crushers like that tinkle thug Barty employs, but I have my people. We aren't done here. I disagree. You are fun for a bit, Chaton, but if you don't want your face to meet some very large feet, you should leave. Would a bubble bath relax you? Oh, I love nothing as much as dozing off in a foamy tub. <laughs> oh. Mm.
In you go, item friends. I feel ridiculous. If you're not Edgar's locker key, I'll eat my towel. Hooks on perfectly. Great. Now all I need to do is pull. That feels much better. Let me grab my things. No metal detectors on your piping, Celestine. Oh, tisk tisk. Well, that was a bit of a journey, but now I've got Edgar's locker key. Did you go to such lengths to stash in here, Edgar? A photograph of... Oh, cucumbers. Is that Mousezilla? Dealing drugs? It can't be. Oh, Pepe was right. I don't believe it. Edgar thought this was important enough to hide here and then died. Was someone looking for this? Why? Yet another piece of evidence tying Edgar to the drug underworld, though. I think you'll find this photo interesting. I know I did. She barely glanced at the photo. I do not care about the big mice. Did I not warn you about leaving, Shata? It will be a shame to flatten that pretty face. But in the acting business, one cannot make empty threats. <laughs> oh, more threats. Delicious. Let me add it to the pile. I'm accumulating quite a collection lately, it would seem. Are those fangs all of a sudden, Shata? So shiny. Did Bartholomew tell you to show them to me if I didn't melt in the face of his lap cat's words? <laughs> Bartholomew didn't send me. I thought you only told the odd fib, Chateau. Yet here you are, spouting enormous, juicy falsehoods. Okay, look. This isn't an excuse, but I was tired. Frustrated. I felt like I'd been solving everyone's problems except my own. Getting the runaround from Scarlet wasn't doing anything to help the situation. It wasn't a smart move. But I was so sure. Fine. Do I need to be the one to lay it out? Then gladly. All the hard evidence in this case points to a drug connection. Nip on Edgar's body. Fluff seeds on his clothing. 
He has a photo of a drug deal hidden away. When his best friend dies of an overdose, he's so angry that he finds the dealer and threatens his life. And then, poof, he vanishes for months. Nobody sees him around. Nobody hears from him. What, is he mourning for his friend or doing something else? Out of the blue, he turns up again at his father's club, chipper as can be. Everyone says he seemed really upbeat, like something good has happened. Someone claims to see him chatting to a large, mysterious type. Very large. I bet he has really big feet. Edgar doesn't stay long at the Nitty Kitty. He leaves, and he goes to the establishment for the first time ever. She looked shocked. I felt sure I had her. and pressed my advantage. He tells Celestine he has a meeting, but he leaves almost as soon as he arrives, leaving only this photo in his secure locker. One of the safest locations in the city, as I'm sure he knew. He goes back to the Nitty Kitty, apparently accompanied by the big cat from earlier, arguing, what about? Well, a few hours later, he's dead, with a knit bag in his paw. So probably not about which flavor of tea is best. Okay, here's what I think, Scarlet. Edgar was upset and angry about what Nip did to his friend, except he finds out his friend was off Nip by then and had moved to Fluff. But nobody knows who's making that, right? Well, Edgar did. He had Fluff seeds on his body, not Fluff itself. Those months he vanished? I think he used them to trace the people making Fluff. I think he found out where it's being made, and I don't think you could let that information get out. I think the nip on his body was just a bold red herring from you. You see, Scarlet, I think Fluff is yours. What, uh, what do marketing people call it? Hmm? Marketing segmentation. Nip is entry level, right? And Fluff, that's the upgrade. Keep supply low and make it seem exclusive. Charge 10 times the price. You don't tolerate competition naturally, except from yourself. Who was Edgar going to meet at the establishment? I wonder. Someone with the power to take you down, if they had the truth? Was that your thug at the Nitty Kitty that night? Trying to convince him not to do something stupid? And when he didn't listen, oh, you rolled out the big guns. The photo is the key. Mousezilla selling drugs in a secret location. Mousezilla who doesn't exist, who can't exist unless he does. You made him in a lab. Just like Pepe said, you are the thems, and he is the terrible enforcer of your monstrous whims. He sells your fluff and silences anyone that tries to stop you. When you found out that Edgar had exposed you, Mousezilla killed him for you, Shakuz! I paused, panting a little, but... Satisfied, I was more certain of everything I'd just said than I'd been of anything in my life. She was silent as death for a moment, which was enough time for my brain to remind me that I'd just accused a crime lord of murder, with nothing but four walls and a die recorder to witness what might happen next. These accusations, the biggest pile of cucumber slices I've heard in my life. And you, the craven insult. He sent a buffoon, a clown, to mock me. Does he think I do not see? Does he imagine this will go unanswered? What? Uh, who, who? Bartholomew! You and he have met many times since the murder. I know. You speak in his voice. Le fatouche! He pulls your strings and you lie on command. You're his errant cat now. Sent to deliver an automaton and it does not matter what I say because he has already judged me. Her response caught me off balance. I won't lie. She was ignoring everything I'd said and focusing on Bartholomew. She could have been deflecting, but there was an honesty to her passion that was undeniable, even if she was totally wrong. I told you I don't work for him. Lies. You stink of him. Collect your cards, puppet, and scuttle home. Tell that despicable cat that it is time for him to pay for what he did and what he made me do. There's no longer room for both of us in the Miami of Farrington. The grief de la carte sans sortie. I don't speak Absalon, but the fury in her voice made the intent clear. 
Hey, now, hang on. <laughs> okay, just wait. Nobody needs to start any wars over this. I, 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 I'm not here on behalf of Bartholomew, all right? We didn't meet. He forced his way into my office and he threatened me. And, 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 and I stood up to him, I'll have you know, despite the declawing machine. More lies. He manipulates and you says he thinks I killed Edgar and he sent you to... He, he doesn't. What? He refused to believe it. He didn't even entertain the option that you did it. But I, I'm not blinded by whatever history you two share. I think the evidence speaks for itself. And I think it implicates you. You truly think I make fluff? I loathe fluff, Chaton. It is bad for business, bad for cats, and bad for the city. Yes, the real addicts will buy anything they can get their hands on at any price. But that is not sustainable. There's too few of them. I want the tired house cats, the busy executives, the cats who just want something to make a day a little shorter. They're not addicts. They just need a pick-me-up sometimes when the coffee isn't working anymore. What could be more normal? Those are the sort of cats that will get scared and stop buying if they hear there's something that's hurting people. And word is starting to spread. That's not enough to make me believe you or trust you. I do not trust you either, Chaton. You are unknown. You can be manipulated, and I do not trust Bartholomew. He is a manipulator. He will make you believe what he wants. I know he will, and I think he already has. And, and yet, the evidence is stacked against you, not him. The evidence you have. What does that mean? Edgar was supposed to meet me at the establishment on the night he died. He said he had something to show me. But he never arrived. Or so I thought. You were in contact with Edgar for how long? D did Bartholomew know? Why? I, I mean, you could have mentioned this sooner. Do you now believe that I did not kill him? I, I, well, you realize I, I can't just take you at your word. And yet your word is sufficient to indict me? We have a problem, Chaton. Mutual. Distrust. You think I'm involved in this? And I don't trust that you're not working for Barthe. An impasse. But I have the solution. Bartholomew inadvertently as proof of my innocence in the safe in his office. Go and find it. Oh, in his safe. Yeah, you want me to break into Bartholomew's office? The one in his club? Don't be ridiculous, Scarlet. I'm not a criminal. Oh, you have been busy, Chaton. My people have asked around the places you have been. You are nearly as subtle as you may think. Arson at the establishment? Uh, that wasn't arson. The blanket lied to me. It said inflammable. Cake fraud? It's not fraud if you're helping a friend. Poisoning a police officer. Okay, look, you'll be fine. I needed to get fuzzball away from the body, and honestly, if you knew Krakowski, you'd probably agree that what I did was... Stealing evidence, lying about historical artifacts, licking things. Ha! Ah, actually, uh, licking things isn't a crime, I checked. Regardless, I know how your kind operates, Chaton. You draw a line in the sand and say, oh, this is us, and that is you, good and bad. And when the water comes and washes the line away, you redraw it, but closer this time, again and again. And by the end, we stand face to face. But you still claim that you are not us. I don't break rules just to make money and gather power. I do it to help people. I am not like you. And I am not who you say I am. You have no idea what you're saying. And I will not let you soil my name with these lies. Go to Bartholomew's office. Take a careful look at the items you will find in his safe. That will prove my innocence. Oh, if I'm really working with Bartholomew, couldn't he just tell me what's in there? Never. The items in there are his most treasured possessions. The last artifacts of his old life. He would never tell anyone what they are, let alone allow you to touch them. <laughs> Convenient. But still, even if I had it in my head to indulge you, it's impossible. Tinkle would see me instantly, and I'd have no way of activating the elevator to Bartholomew's office. Au contraire. The club is deserted. Edgar's funeral is tonight. You will be able to move freely. As for the elevator, I have had this for a while. Just in case I ever needed to leave a, 
personal message in his office. You may use it to poke around as you wish. But I remind you, I'm giving you this to prove my innocence, first and foremost. I have nothing more to say to you now. Find evidence of my innocence in Bartholomew's safe. Securely locked. Pepe, I completely forgot to give this back to you. But as you can see, it's all worked out. Well, it's deserted. Like Scarlet said. Pity she didn't mention how to get in in the first place, though. Yeah, that did it. Ramon, I'm in Bartholomew's office. So, if anyone finds you floating in the river tomorrow, it means he caught me here and I'm toast. Tabby, you can have my typewriter and my book collection, okay? Treat them well. Now, let's get into this safe and get out of here before Tinkle gets a chance to practice his crushing skills on my fragile little body. Oh, uh, there's something under here. Not terribly well hidden, Bartholomew, tisk tisk. Though I guess he's not exactly expecting nosy visitors. This must be Bartholomew's safe. <sighs> Whiskers a paw print lock. Scarlet didn't mention that either. Identification. Secure storage device MW394, Safe Masters of Cree, Manufacturing Division. All rights reserved, including the right to insult you. Introduction. Welcome, furbag. Uh, hello, you rude safe. Requirement. Authentication details required for function. Present passcode and biometrics, furbag. Rude and chatty, aren't you fun? Is this how you address Barth... Ah... Uh. All, all cats? Explanation. Safe master protocols dictate all clients be treated equally. Loophole. Protocols do not dictate specific treatment level. Execution. Contemptuous mockery. Fur bag. Requirement. Authentication details required for function. Present passcode and biometrics. Fur bag. Clarification. Two-phase security active. Provide passcode and furbag biometrics to proceed. It's a map of Firth. Reluctant confirmation. Correct passcode entry. Yes! I ran out, so I'll just borrow this roll.
Bingo! Got some fingerprints from the paw print in the concrete. Yeah, that did it. Hesitant confirmation. Correct biometrics. Ah, the fingerprints are smudged now. Might as well get rid of them. Disinterested confirmation. Passcode and biometrics provided. Grudging admiration. Furbag Bartholomew. Successful authentication achieved once more. Unlocking vault. Behold, Furbag, your pathetic treasures. Finally, let's see what's in here. Ah, uh, wow. This must be one of his old awards. What? Wait, is that... <sighs> That's blood. Someone was hit with this. Edgar, does... Does this mean that Bartholomew killed Edgar? She was Edgar's mother. So that's what she wanted me to see. This is... Interesting. So she... And, and, and that means she... <laughs> well, I, I, I need to get back and, and talk to her as soon as possible. Did you find what you're looking for, Chaton? You're Edgar's mother. I believe so. Past tense is now appropriate. But, yes. I hope you can understand now. I would never kill my own child. There was something else. An award. It had blood on it. I think it's the murder weapon. What? Bartholomew? Perhaps. You were in colère. The murder weapon was hidden in his safe? My son Edgar died in his club. What more proof do you need? Leave the city, Chaton. This is war. You had access to his office, too. Y you may have been Edgar's mother, but you've not been part of his life for, what, 30 years? If you wanted to frame someone, the tall cat spat on me. Do you know what your words have cost me? You casually accuse me of murdering my own son because I was not with him when he grew up? Do you think I did not want to be? Do you think I did? I do not love him with all my being. Bartholomew is a monster. Sweet words around the dark heart. I knew it was true even when I was with him, but I was afraid. He was making new friends and they were dangerous. I made plans to escape, but then I became pregnant with Edgar. And then, I was no longer afraid. I was terrified. If I left with his son, Edgar would never have been safe. I had my own ambitions, and I knew I would eventually butt heads with Bartholomew again. The only way to keep Edgar safe, properly safe, forever, was to... Leave? She paused, struggling for words. And the rawness of the emotions that fought for control of her face made me look away. I left after he was born towards that beast. I didn't care. I lied. It was my only option. I loved Edgar so much. He was so smart, so beautiful. His life. He was my son. I had to protect him. If Bartholomew thought he meant nothing to me, he would be safe. 
stay there. Bartholomew would think he had to protect him from me. But Edgar would never be in danger from me. He could live in safety, grow up, be his own cat. So as long as Bartholomew or anyone else thinks I'm cold-hearted and uncaring, I have power and space to act. I can find out who killed him while everyone suspects me. And I can make the real murderer pay. If Bartholomew did this, then he is already finished. Why was Edgar meeting with you? Did he know you were his mother? No, he never knew. I didn't want to break what we had. He was happy. He had purpose. I didn't want to force him to split his priorities. Then what was his priority? <sighs> he was an amazing cat, despite his father. He became someone I could be proud of. At the end, he came to me with a proposal, a unification of the families. He would become the head of the Montemus in time, and he wanted me to agree to work with him. Montemus and Catulets united. Oh, a single crime family to control everything. A single organization to bring stability to the city. But it doesn't matter now. That hope has ended with his death. I, I was so sure I was right. And yet, you are wrong. I was mistaken. That doesn't mean the evidence I found isn't still relevant. You said Edgar was going to meet you at the establishment, right? The photo must have been the thing he was going to give you. Did he give you any indication about what the relevance was of the thing he was going to give you? None. He only said he would let us discover who was selling fluff. <sighs> that pretty much confirms the mouse is selling fluff, then. Please, I want justice for Edgar. I promised that to Bartholomew, and I'm promising it to you, too. Then you promise justice to the very cat who will pay for murdering my son. Appropriate. Wait, please, I, I don't think it was him. When we spoke, his pain was, was clear. He was in agony. Scoured by guilt. I really don't think so, Scarlet. I don't think he did this. Or you. There's a third party involved here. Please, please, don't challenge him yet. Give me another chance to put the pieces together. You say Edgar wanted to make things better? Well, you and Bartholomew fighting it out on the streets, it's not going to achieve that. <laughs> I can't tell you this. I have seen a building like the one in that photo. There is a memorial garden in the south of the city. It has metal work in that pattern. All right, all right. That's something. Okay, thank you. But I will not wait forever. Two days, Chaton. And then, I will not be stopped by anyone. Ramon, just a heads up, I'm in a garden at night, and it's kind of spooky. If, uh, something comes at me, I, I, I might throw you at it, okay? And if you hear any high-pitched screams at the same time, it's the other thing making those noises. Definitely not me, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, this is the place... Scarlet thinks Edgar's photo was taken. That's a very uniquely shaped lock. I have no hope of simply pulling this open. The Magtheridon family tree, it seems, carved onto an actual tree. Very clever. <laughs> I'm amazed the irritable gardener hasn't blown a gasket over this.
So this whole park was built in memory of Eustace. Did he like collecting garden gnomes or something? Hey, did you know Eustace Magtheridon? There's a botanical garden named after him. To my endless chagrin, he is my great-great-grandkitty. You're not as big a fan of Eustace the Explorer as everyone else, then. No, sir, I am not. Eustace was a pervert, the root of the rot that pervades my family. Oh, did he also go around cutting hedges when he shouldn't have? If he did, sir, he would have cut them into the shape of unmentionables. He traveled the world seeking out new lands, and then returned home with his ship's hold stuffed full of relics of unseemly purpose. Unseemly? You mean... I do. Garden gnome, sir. Oh, the ignominy. He placed the little monsters all over the grounds of the estate, and there they survive to this day. I have lost count of the times I have gone for an evening stroll and come upon one unexpectedly, leering up at me from a bed of petunias like a tiny clay voyeur. They are heirlooms now, and my requests to smash them into itty-bitty pieces with a hammer have been repeatedly denied. Is Eustace really buried in the mausoleum in his park? Oh yes, alongside spoils of his misadventures. I need to get in there. Do you know how to unlock it? Into his mausoleum? Why? I think a mouse that can't exist is dealing drugs inside. If you don't want to tell me the truth, just say so. The door is sealed with a lock that only our family Chris can open. Oh, I see. Sanctity of the family heritage and all. Oh no, I couldn't care less. For your help with my vegan blighter problem, you may have it. Feel free to smash any garden gnomes you find in there while you're at it. I certainly shall. It fits! Good job, Tybalt! Ramon, I take back what I said about the garden being spooky. Uh, there's a coffin in here already, so they can bury me right away if I die of fright. Ah, Ramon, this place is so old and dusty and dark. There's just probably like a trillion spider webs in there. Uh, spider webs make me feel uh, jittery. So, uh, I'm gonna just not go in there. <laughs> Problem solved. There's a, oh, there's a sign here. Keep off grass. Four exclamation marks. Come on. Someone needs to stand up to this floral dictator. It's going to be me. I'm a grass maverick. Take that, Mr. Sign and Mr. Sign Writer, whoever you are. As if the grass needs to be protected. Get real. Oh, no! Another sign! I'm so scared! What does this one say? My signs are not a joke. Feel my watery wrath. What the? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Water! Ah, and my eyes! Oh, now how dare you, sign! I'm going to rip that sign out of the ground! Take that. The sign part fell off. Typical low quality insult signage. When will people learn? You always spend the extra for quality insult signage. Now all I have is this pointy stick. How many signs is this mad cat set up? What 
Don't steal the sign. Well, don't spray me with water then, huh? Excuse me, do I know you? <laughs> uh, Ramon, did you hear that? Gnome you. What is that? Is that a vegan blighter? That looks nasty. I think I prefer the Oscar version. Eustace was familiar with vegan blighters from a young age. He always said it was one of the main reasons he chose to spend his life exploring lands as distant as possible from his home. May this statue inspire others as it clearly inspired him. Someone, probably the crazy gardener, was selling something here. What could it have been? I shouldn't mess with that. It could explode. Yeah, yeah, there, there are gnomes all over this garden. Perhaps there used to be a lot more. <laughs> Sneaky gardener. The garden gnome fits perfectly on the plate inside. That's clearly meant to go in there. garden gnome fits perfectly on the plate inside. That's clearly meant to go in there. What's this? Graffiti? Is this part of whatever ritual that statue is intended for? You know, if I stare at it long enough, it feels like it starts to pull me in and swirl endlessly. Weird. Wow, you really absorbed that oil, Mini Oscar. Soaked it straight in there. Sorry, little buddy, but I'm gonna have to stick you on this, uh, s stick. Looks like something might fit inside here. Hey, this fits. So the gnomes were the sacrifices? <laughs> Tybalt would be delighted. Whoa! <laughs> well, goodbye, little gnome. Mini Oscar, the lantern! Tabby was concerned when I sprayed my briefcase with flame retardant spray, but who's smirking now? Let's see what's hiding in here. What? Was that a giant mouse? Mousezilla? What's going on? Ah, Whiskers. He got away, and I damaged my mini Oscar in the process. I could get another, but I got really attached to this specific one. This tore off the mouse when he escaped. It's not a giant mouse at all. It's a suit. Oh, <laughs> a secret passageway. <gasps> They're real. I knew they didn't just exist in stories. Oh, 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 I have to see where this goes. 
This must be how that sneaky mouse gets in and out. Very clever. Nobody else can get in to rob him, and he can trade safely through the grating. Better head back to the office to talk to Tabby about this. Tabby, I got into an old tomb at a memorial garden, and I poked the darkness, and it tried to escape, but it left behind this label. Uh, I, I... I don't... There was a big mouse hiding there, Tabby! Mousezilla is real, but he's not a giant rodent. He's just a guy in a suit. This label tore off when he made a run for it. Look! Bee's costume shop. Oh, that must be where he got the suit from. I, I, I need to go there right now. Hold on, sir. That's the adrenaline talking. When did you last sleep? I, uh, last yesterday week. I figured. You need some rest, sir. This is a solid lead, but I can handle it for now. The place will be shut at this time of night anyway. Get some rest. I don't want you driving in this state, so just sleep in your office, all right? I'll go first thing tomorrow morning and find out who rented the suit this came from. All right, all right. Ooh, good idea. Thanks, Tabby. I'm just so excited. Oh, uh, this is huge. This is a huge lead. Huh. Pepe probably did see Mousezilla then, and the big footprint. The person inside it must have been the one Desiree saw, King... <sighs> saw talking to Edgar. <sighs> Desiree? Oh, oh, I was just, um, Tabby. Hey, it's Desiree from being locked in the chest at the Nitty Kitty. Oh. Hello. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, Cuddles. I just had nowhere else to go. Uh, what, what, what happened? Please, um, come into my office and we, we can speak. You're good, right, Tabs? Yes, sir. I'll get to work on that thing we talked about. I'm sorry for interrupting, Sugar. Was it anything important? A big lead in the case. I think I'm getting close to finding that big cat you saw. And unbelievably, Mousezilla has cropped up again. But don't worry about that. Um, why are you here? I wish I only had cats and suits to worry about, Cuddles. My life is in danger! Oh, Whiskers, what happened? Tears blossomed in her eyes as they had the last time we met. I was at the club, in my dressing room, uh, collecting my things. I had hoped to take some time off. Suddenly, I heard yelling and crashing outside. I went to look and... Yes? Bartholomew, of course. He was screaming and throwing things, and stabbing his fingers at Tinkle and Pepe. Something has happened to Sugar, and he is not happy about it. I can't be around him, Cuddles. It's only a matter of time before he snaps. And then... What about your apartment? He knows where I stay. I'm not safe there. I'm not safe anywhere he expects me. Could, could I stay here, Cuddles? Just for a day, two at most. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, I suppose that's fine. Thank you, Cuddles. I already feel safer. Will you stay with me? Well, I've been told to get some rest, so... I'll be here all night, although I'm not really in the mood to sleep. Excited about your case, I'm sure. Mozilla, <laughs> how exciting. Is this the fall of Bartholomew then? Do you have proof against him? Or someone else? <laughs> no need to worry about all that now, Desiree. You can read all about it in the papers once I crack the case. I have something much more entertaining in mind for now. Oh, I imagine you do, Cuddles. Why don't we take a comfortable seat and you can tell me about... Max Full Power! Boom! I've got all his books. Ever read them? I, uh... Who? Oh, my whiskers, Desiree. You've never read any Full Power. Wow, you are in for a treat. Okay, so I'll give you the core backstory to start. In the space year 10,411, a very special cat is space-born. Well, where is he? 
Uh, do I need to... Wait, someone's here. We'll talk later. What a fascinating shop. Oh, someone there? A customer, perhaps? Oh, dear, my, my old eyes can't see very well. Bee's costume shop was a stuffy, gaunt little place. Nothing but a counter and some threadbare costumes lining the walls. An older cat stood behind the counter, slightly hunched and draped in either clothing or repurposed curtains. She should be able to help me. Oh, hello. Oh, there you are. Welcome, welcome to poor Bee's costume shop. I'm Beatrice, the owner, but please call me Poor Bee. I'm terribly poor, you see. Oh, sorry to hear that. Now, don't you be worried about poor old Bee. She's, she's a tough nut. She'll soldier on, always has, and always will. And who knows? Perhaps someday she'll save up enough money to a millionaire. Wouldn't that be lovely? I'm sure it would. And good luck working towards that. Sorry if this is a bit too personal, but this is a very large and elaborate shop. Can't you just sell it if you're struggling with money? Oh, no, my dear. I could never do that. This shop was bequeathed to me by my grandmama on the day of my birth as she lay dying of being extremely poor. She said that her final wish was for me to take her shop as she had done for her own grandmama. Oh, wait, your grandmother got this shop from her grandmother? And you're, oh, no offense, but you're no spring kitten. So that makes this shop over 200 years old. <laughs> I thought this whole district was only built two decades ago. Uh... On top of a waste dumping site. Hmm. That was itself on top of a swamp. <laughs> Silly me, my or brain, you know. Did I say grandmama? I meant grand sister. That's not a thing. Do cats of a suspicious disposition ever come here? Suspicious how, my dear? Anyone who gave you the feeling they might be up to no good. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't think anyone like that comes in here, dearie. It's mostly my regulars, cats, who need to dress up. Such as? Mr. Drambo, the photographer, who loves to dress up like a tiger. He's so petite, but he does do his best to look intimidating. Bless him. Then there's Sir Alfonso with the monocle and the top hat. He's terribly proper. Sir Alfonso, since when? We don't have royalty anymore. Ugh, I'm starting to dislike him as much as Cuddles does. And the Count the Guilty, who always runs a skin-tight, black-and-white, striped number, a face mask, and a hemp bag with swag written on it. The Count the Guilty. I, I mean, come, come on. Oh, don't hold the name against him, dearie. It's not his fault. The De Guilties are part of the bedrock of this city. Have been for years. Their soirees are to die for. I... I... I assume. That's all for now. I'd just like to ask about this label, if you don't mind. It's got the name of your shop on it. Oh, a lost label from poor Bee's costume shop? Well, it just says Bee's costume shop. I didn't know about your money troubles until now. Did... did, did you rename the shop to reflect your financial status? Oh, dearie me. Did I? 
poor bee just decided that since she's definitely not a millionaire, she'd let people know. In case someone came in here looking for an autograph from a rich person, like one of those wonderful Meg Thrydens I'm always reading about in the newspapers. Right. So, this label is quite important. You didn't, did you? I expect a millionaire to be working here because I, I, I'm just poor B and awfully far from being a millionaire. I can't even imagine what it's like to be rich. I assume you'd be able to buy the servants new clothes for every day instead of only once a month. That's the dream. Yes, I expect it's quite nice. I mean, if I was from that terribly well-respected and very wealthy Meg... Meg Theriden... Meg Theriden clan, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't need to work another day in my life. Why would I... Why, why would they even own a costume shop to fill with their long, empty days with? No, no, it be works hard every day, scraping together a handful of monies to afford some cavi... Banana... Water. I think you were going to say caviar. Was I? <laughs> These terrible eyes of mine. I meant caviar water. Yes, just run-of-the-mill, everyday caviar water for all of poor bees working hard. Ah, uh, of course. Of course. So, I'm following up on this label as part of a murder investigation. It was attached to a mouse suit. <gasps> a mouse suit? I, uh, I, I don't, um, can I see it? Uh, yes, of course. If you have a name or an address for me, that would be ideal. But if you don't keep records, I'd be okay with... My records? I keep meticulous records, dearie. But, oh, what is this? Hello? What's that? At my shop? Where the nice cat just came to ask about the mouse suit? Yes, immediately! Oh, my dear, I've just received terrible news. There's been a murder here, too. What? Someone, someone phoned to tell you there's been a murder here. What happened? Have you called the police? Was that them now? The police wouldn't get here in time. I can't take the chance that the killer might escape again. You're the only one who can help me. Me? What can I do? And what do you mean again? And why didn't you mention any of this before we started speaking? What is happening? There's no time to waste, dearie. Light your best detective cigar and let's make sure this scallywag is caught. I don't smoke and I'm not qualified to... Oh, fip-fop. Who needs qualifications? All you need is a steadfast belief in your own moral code. That way, if other people disagree, they're just wrong. That doesn't sound like a very good system. Oh, who can help this poor shop owner solve this dastardly crime? What am I seeing? I know, dear, I know. It is hard to witness. Cheese grater Bill, he's struck again. Poor old Sammy Manichino was just minding his own business when suddenly... <laughs> cheese grater sounds, cheese grater sounds, cheese grater sounds. His torso was gone. Are you serious? That's just a mannequin. Oh, no. Don't listen to her, Sammy. Your expression might look a little wooden, but Mama knows you've got a heart of gold. Uh, so, if I help you solve this crime, 
you'll give me the information I want? Oh, yes, dearie. My mind will be much more settled once I know the killer's behind bars. <sighs> All right, then. First, we need to find out if dear Sammy saw anything. So, <laughs> I hear you've been murdered. Tell me about that. Oh, Sammy. Sammy! Sammy, can you hear me? B. Oh, darling, B. How can? I'm still here, B, but I think it got me. It's so dark, B. I, I can't see. How bad is it? Are you doing a, a voice? Oh, Sammy, it's just, just a scratch. You'll make it, don't you worry. He finally got me. Be like he said he would. All those years ago when we was both working in the kitchen, Bill was uh, always jealous of my potato peeling gig. B, he knew people respected p p p p potato peelers more than those cheese wranglers. Perhaps it is my time, B. Perhaps I deserve this, B. No, no, Sammy, please. Don't, don't talk like that. I've got the smartest girl detective in the city on the case. We'll find Bill and make him ungrate you. And you'll be back to peeling taters in no time. Excuse me, girl detective? You do that, B. You find him and you make him <laughs> Sammy? Oh, Sammy. No! Very moving. What now? Oh, I just can't bear to lose Sammy. Quickly now, quick. See if you can heal him. Heal him? He's missing a torso. And, and didn't he just die? Less wiffle waffle, girl. Sammy's bleeding out. I suppose I can use these as makeshift bandages. Anything to get this over with faster. There we go, Sammy. You're all batched up, just like your old self. <coughs> oh, B. I don't feel so good. <gasps> it's time to touch the light. Shh, Sammy, you rest now. Did he just die a second time? Wait, I forgot. I don't care. <laughs> what now? We need evidence to bring Cheese Great a build and justice. Search the crime scene, dearie. There's got to be something. Why do you need me to do all of this? Can't I just go wait in the... No, uh, no, dearie. It's very important that you help me. Nobody else can. You have to stay with me until this is fully solved. Why, what if the murderer came back? Uh, all right, whatever. Oh, look, a cheese grater. Could this be a clue? Oh, I wonder. It must be. Look on the side. There's a maker's stamp. Why, this cheese grater was made by Snout Boggle Industries. But how can that be? As you know, my dear, as we all know, Duke Fenwick Snout Boggle only makes utensils for the very wealthy. There's no way Sammy could have afforded a high-end cheese grater like this on his potato peeler's salary. Must be the murder weapon. There's only one villain that would dare wield it with such impunity. This is proof that Cheese Grater Bill has returned. Yes, 
Naturally. But, alas! Oh, uh, no. How will we find out where he is? There's only one thing for it, dearie. We'll have to confront Snout Boggle directly. We'll make him squeal. Let's... This way, dearie. Snout Boggle, oh, you rotter. You fiend. Sammy's dead, and I know you're involved. Tell me, tell me what you know about Cheese Grater Bill, or else I'll give you a paw cosh right up the old finagle alley. Be you hideous old poor person. How dare you accuse me of impropriety? Cannot you see how much money I have? Of course I'm innocent. As innocent as a thieving chambermaid. Why, I ought to write a stern letter about you to all the papers. All of them. But that's enough, good cop. Show him the old one, too, dearie. Get him to tell us where Cheese Grater Bill is. Behold, a Cheese Grater. You see this, you sassy horn flogger? It's got your name all over it. Actually... The name's just in the corner. Yeah, she's great there. Pa! <laughs> Why, there must be dicks, cheese graters in this city. The poor are simply riddled with la greater du fromage. You'll never pin that on me! You leave us with no choice, then, Snout Boggle. He knows where Bill is, dearie. I just, I, I know he does. We'll have to wrap him up a little. Uh, and by we, you mean me? If you would, dearie, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so poor and old and poor. Huh. It will take more than that to make me talk. Really? More than the loss of your head? I feel like we've almost broken him, dearie. Again. We've very clearly broken him quite a lot, actually, but sure. No, please, s'il vous plaît, not the toes. Or the hands or the play. All right, I'll tell you everything. Hurry up, then. She's great, our bill is forming la gang. A gang. He's got big ambitions. Soon, nobody will be able to buy cheese in this city without Bill getting our slice. Of the... the money, n not the cheese. Oh no, since he'll... I think since he'll control all the cheese as well. I mean, that, that is implied! Truly a monster. Where is he, I wonder? Could it possibly be in this suspiciously dark area next to us? I'll never tell! Jamais! All right, you convinced me. He's old up at the old Cheddar House. Near the old train tracks. Oh, dearie, you did it. We've tracked Bill down. Time to face this curdled villain and avenge dear Sammy. Hooray. When we started this journey all those minutes ago, I hardly believed we'd ever get here. To the Cheddar House! Yeah, to the place. Or wherever. There he is, standing villainously next to those old train tracks. And, oh, no! He's brought every cheese grater in town. If we get too close, he'll shred us. The horror. We've got you at last, cheese grater Bill. You've scraped your last rind. You're too late, B. Maybe if you weren't so poor, you'd have gotten here faster. When the train arrives, I'm going to load it up with cheddar and drive it straight into town, see? There will be as much cheese as anyone could want, but not a single grater to cut it with, see? <laughs> oh, you monster. What sort of beast could even devise such a plan? I cannot let you do this. The people deserve better. They deserve gouda. 
Stop him, dearie. By any means necessary. Okay. Are we done? Tie him up. We can't let him escape to enact his evil plan. Uh, really? Oh, you're alive again, are you? Uh, tell me I put I out all of them. Oh. <clears throat> oh, well. No! You trapped me! My plan is ruined! Sure. So, are we done, B? Good work, dearie. Time to deliver the justice he deserves. What would I do now? Well, uh, lick the train until it short circuits, probably, but apart from that... Oh, hey there, weird train cat. I'm just gonna slip away and go check out your hiring record. See? No need to do anything. I got this. See you later. Cuddles out. Boop, boop, boop. Ooh, this is the worst record keeping I've seen since Cuddle's desk. Lemur suit, koala suit, uh, milk suit? Hmm. Uh, aha! Mouse suit! And the last person to rent it was. Whiskers! But these aren't names, they're just random sentences. Well, that one I know actually. And that one. Oh, wait, that one too! Oh! oh! Dearie, what are you doing? Those are my private records. Put that down! Get your dirty paws off my things! Sorry, I mean, thank you. Brilliant. I need to go. Also, I know you're a secret millionaire, and if you ever want to put your money to good use, you can give a donation to Nutter Butter Investigations. It's a worthwhile cause, Kay. Thank you. Bye bye Hmm... Sir, Cuddles! Ah, sh 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 hey, Tabby, not too loudly, okay? Desiree's resting. We stayed up late talking about Max Full Power. Well, I, I mean, I guess I, I did most of the talking. Oh, she's still here? Yes. <laughs> Why would you say it like that? Never mind, sir, I got what we need, despite Beatrice. Who? Uh, the owner of the costume shop, one of the make Theridons. Please don't ask for details, it's... Too soon for me to relive it. Oh, Tybalt's aunt. Yikes. He made her sound pretty mad. But you found out who rented the Mousezilla suit, right? Not directly. Beatrice's records were terrible. But she did have papers naming all the suits she has. And apart from Mousezilla, get this. She also rents out a milk suit. Oh, Duncan, of course! He rents his suit from a suit rental shop. That monster. I... what? No, sir. I don't think that... Oh, never mind. It means that Duncan is probably Mousezilla. Oh, of course. Yeah, that would make sense. Of course he'd get all his suits from the same place. Was his name on the list of renters? That's just it, sir. It wasn't. The page just had a long list of random phrases written down. Or so I thought until I got to the end. The very latest entry? A gentle cat in the desert. His real name is a gentle cat in the desert? Oh, this naming crisis in the city has really gotten quite a lot about out of control. No, sir. When I saw that, I double-checked all the other phrases on the list and remembered some of them from my trip to the university. They were all film titles. Then I remembered you saying that Duncan seems to have a scrambled memory. 
understatement of the year. Right. So think about it, sir. A cat with memory issues who sells drugs on the side and rents a suit from the same place every time to do it. Now, this next bit is <laughs> conjecture, right? Um, but from what I know from <clears throat> friends, uh, drug dealers literally always have a password you need to know before they'll sell to you. Yeah, the cat at the Emporium mentioned he needed a password when he dealt fluff. Yes, I knew it. And those get changed often for security, I bet. So whoever gives Duncan the stuff to sell probably hammers the passphrases into his head to make sure he remembers. And then when he rents suits, he writes down film titles instead of his name as if... They're stuck in his head. Tabby, you genius. Uh, the fluff supplier uses film titles as passphrases. That's, well... Actually, how does that help? A gentle cat in the desert, sir. I think we went completely down the wrong path. Edgar wasn't looking into his father's past. He'd figured out the current passphrase. And he had a meeting scheduled with the Catulets for that same night. Oh, with the photo and the, the, the passphrase. He was going to give them both to the Catulets. They would have been able to set a trap for Duncan, figure out who was supplying him. Someone must have decided they didn't want that to happen. Sir, we don't know how often the passphrase changes. It might already have. We need to capitalize on this immediately. You're right. I need to find Duncan. If the passphrase really is the only thing he can remember, perhaps I can jolt some more information out of him with it. Okay, I'll go try to find him right now. Great work, Tabster. Really. Oh, and if Desiree wakes up, Tell her she can stay as long as she needs, and I'll see her when I get back. Well, <laughs> well, well. Uh, snow Jumble? Enough lies, Duncan. Do you see any snow around here and a jumble? Ha! As if the cats of this city have time for jumble sales when they're cowering in fear from giant mice. Laptop? Don't try to distract me, Duncan. I know the truth. You are Mousezilla. Kipper! Kipper! I know you sell drugs from inside a mausoleum while dressed as Mousezilla Duncan, the oldest trick in the book. And I don't think it's Nip you're handing out either. Who's your supplier? The Thems? Alfonso? Bartholomew? Huh? Cough up a name, Duncan. A Dremel Slam Aquafox. Your little show won't work on me this time, boyo. I'm done indulging your little act. In fact, I've got something to say to you. Up, up. Do you like films, Duncan? I do. And I recently saw a gentle cat in the desert. Monstrip! Ah, oh, whiskers! He can really move when he wants to. Where'd he go? Uh, Ramon, I told Duncan the passphrase, and he fled to a junkyard. I, I followed his leaking milk trail here. <laughs> that suit sure holds a ton of milk. Anyway, let's find out what secrets he's hiding here. What is that? Tucked away behind mounds of rusted cars and old dishwashers. Fluff plants. It had to be. Fields of them, stretching out to fill the gaps between the mountains of junk. I'd found the heart of the operation. Duncan? It's Cuddles. I followed you here. This is a lovely, uh, junkyard you, you have. I'm coming in now. Please don't panic or anything. All right? It's just to talk. Just want to talk to you. Duncan, there you are. Duncan, hey, there you are. Duncan? Duncan, what are you doing? 
just because you can't see me doesn't mean I can't see you. Ooh, not even nonsense responses. He must be afraid. Oh, that stinks. Ugh, it smells like fluff seeds and chemicals and all the equipment. Oh, I guess this is how they refine it. Oh, if it smells that bad being made, the final result really can't be good for you. What's this? Encouragement B. What a charming motivational tool. The B must be the big boss. Hmm. I need to free the mannequin head before I can lick it. Uh, my, my tongue is getting numb now. Path numb now. The ice is melting and soon I'll have a mannequin's head. <laughs> Yay. It, it melted some more. <laughs> Free of the ice. <laughs> At last. The, the head's already loose enough to just grab. Never know when you might need a mannequin head. Let's grab it. Ah, a telephone. Perfect. Okay, uh, better let Tabby know what the situation is. Uh... What's the office number again? Um, Badger, Lemon, Ginger, Nut? Oh, wait, I remember. Nutter Butter Investigations. If there's a bad thing happening you don't want to happen, or a thing that should be happening that isn't because of a different thing that's bad, we can help. Nutter Butter every day. Boop, boop, boop. Tabby! Is that our new slogan? It's very impressive. Wow. I wrote it myself. Why are you calling? Is everything all right? I'm at a junkyard. When I told the passphrase to Duncan, he panicked and fled, so I, I followed him here. I'm just calling to say that I'm not leaving here until I get answers. I can't risk him escaping for good. A junkyard? With a working phone? A lot more than that, Tabby. Uh, lab equipment, complex piping, there's some sort of huge vat, and big fields of strange plants. This isn't a small operation, Tabs. There is serious money at work here, and I'll bet my tail it's all being used to make fluff. Fluff? Are you safe, sir? I'd say so. The place is deserted, apart from Duncan. I think I'll be fine. All right, sir. Be careful. And keep me updated? I will. Is Desiree doing all right? Oh, you mean Platy? Yeah, she just left. What? Yep, did a prissy little walk out of your office minutes ago, demanding I go get her a sandwich. Peering all around like she was planning to buy the place. I told her I don't work for her, and she huffed and stormed out without another word like a real spoiled princess. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but I don't like her. Did you ever actually find any evidence to back up her story? She didn't act like she was scared for her life. Of course, there was a big footprint. Oh, that must have been Duncan in his suit and being locked in the chest and something else. She's had a difficult couple of days, Tabs. Perhaps she's decided to head home. I'll, I'll follow up with her when I'm done here. Make sure she's all right. Going to get back to poking around here. Thanks, Tabs. Not about her investigations. If there's a bad... Hey again, Tabs. It's me. Tabby, I found Duncan. He's in a shack, hiding in his milk suit. What did he say? That's the problem. He's refusing to speak to me at all. He was almost incomprehensible before, but at least he spoke. Now, nothing. Hmm. Sounds like you'll need to get creative. Uh, can you lure him out with something? What is he like? Milk. Definitely milk. Like, oh, you have no idea. Like, he gets a cut of every cow milked or something. Remind me to tell you sometime about what I had to go through at the establishment. Well, I guess that's a starting point. Any cows or goats around? Uh, this strikes me as a pretty milk-free environment, but I'll see what I can think up. 
you know, Tabs. Some days, I really regret not becoming a librarian like Mum suggested. I poked around the area some more and found a head in a fridge. <laughs> not again. Oh, no. No, it's um, a mannequin head this time, but still creepy. It had a threatening note on it from someone with the initial B. Uh, perhaps lead with the mannequin part next time, sir? B isn't much to go on, except... well... Bartholomew, right? I thought the same. I'll see if any other evidence turns up. Duncan is still giving me the silent treatment. Well, there has to be something you can do. What about something milk-related? Milk-based? Milk-equivalent? The word milk is starting to sound really weird now. Milk. Milk. Milk, 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 milk. Do you want to milk me? I want to milk you. Milk, you, milk, you, milk, milk. Uh, I, I think you're on the right track. I need to get creative. Uh, actually, it's fine. Never mind. All right, I see how it is. Whatever, I don't care. Bye, sir. An old metal lock. You've served me well lately, you frightening drink. So, let's see if the last of you can solve just one more problem. The lock fizzled as the paint stripper did its job. As the last of the metal vanished, the hatch opened, revealing a river of green sludge. That's the last of the paint stripper. Finally, I can get rid of this horrible mug and the smell. Oh, 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 it's so gross. Oh, there's bits of leaves and things in there. It just moved. Oh, no, it's a lot. No, oh, no. Oh, why? Why didn't I become a librarian, Mom? Oh, oh no, it's sticking to my fur. <laughs> Horrible, slimy, wriggly worm. Thanks, life, for bringing me to this point. Why are these in the vats? Nutter Butter Investigations. If there's a bad... Hey again, Tabs. It's me. Hi, sir. Tabby, there's a vat here filled with bits of leaf and goopy fluid and worms. That sounds disgusting, sir. You should probably stay away from... I stuck my paw into it. Right, of course you did. Uh, are, are you okay? Uh, I've still got goop in my fur, but yeah, I, I, I pulled one of the worms out, but I can't see anything special about it. Uh... Hmm, you said there were bits of leaf in the fluid? Are they the same as the plants you think are being farmed to make fluff? Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, then perhaps Professor Huggy would have some ideas. She knew what the seeds were after all. Let me give her a call and patch her in. Hello, hello? Good evening, Professor. It's Tabby here. Oh, good morning, Tabby. You caught me just before my post-breakfast constitutional. It is a marvelous sunny day here in Pishan. Uh, hi, Professor. It's also Cuddles. I'm here, too. Ah, Cinnamon, hello! Uh, still Cuddles. Oh, no thank you. I just ate perhaps another time. Oh, I mean, <sighs> Professor, I need some help. Don't we all, Cinnamon? I'll need some help replacing honey traps later, for example. I can see from here that we caught two tigers overnight. One of them is making a very rude gesture at me. That's... Yeah, anyway, so I got a strange situation here. Uh, do you remember the seeds I asked you about a few days ago? Ah, yes, the incredibly toxic cablaw seeds. You're not having any symptoms, are you? Exploding toes, fur falling out, whiskers turning into bananas? What? Bananas? No, thanks. I, I, I'm doing fine. 
But I found the place where the seeds are being grown, and, and based on what your contact told me, they're being turned into fluff. Fluff? <gasps> yes, you know of it? Oh, not at all, but you built it up so dramatically. Uh, what is fluff? A uh, new drug. It's much worse than Nip. Someone that isn't the Catulets is making it, and I think they killed my victim. Scandalous! There's a vat here filled with goopy fluid, crushed leaves, f uh, fluff seeds, and worms. I pulled one of them out. Um, it's, it's green. Do you have any idea what they're doing with all this? Interesting. Bits of plant matter in a fluid suspension. And a green worm, you say? A light green on dark. Yeah, green as can be. Oh, why then? That must be one of millions of possible worm species on the planet. I need more cinnamon. How does it taste? No, oh, no. I am not licking a worm. It has goop on it, and it, it, it's a worm. Stop being hysterical. Hysterical cinnamon. Goop is good for you, and hardly any worms are poisonous. Anyway, science is about truth. Do you want the truth about what's going on there? Then lick that worm! Tabby, help! Uh, uh, what can I do, sir? If that's what the professor says it will take. Lick that worm! Lick it! Lick the worm! Cuddles goodness! Lick that worm! Lick that worm! I, I just want to point out, before my probable death by worm, that I have regretted not becoming a librarian twice already today, and this makes three times. Ah. Cuddles? <laughs> Am I dead? I don't think so, sir. Then I wish I was. <laughs> I think my tongue will be broken forever, Tabby. <gasps> All I taste is worm. <gasps> What's the flavor, Cinnamon? The flavor! Worm flavor. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit buttery. Ah, good. You can put the antidote down then. <laughs> what? You never mentioned an antidote. Focus, Cinnamon. You confirmed my suspicions. Those are Maclorian greed worms. They're obviously using worms to extract the hallucinogenic compounds from the plants. Ingenious! Crushing the worms later would let them recover the concentrated compounds, and then they simply need to dry it and sell it. So uh, these worms can extract fluff? Tabby, do you think that... I was just thinking the same, sir. Professor, could these worms extract fluff from another source? Say, a person? Oh, I suppose they might. What an interesting idea. You would simply need a lot more worms, of course, and it would have to be in a confined space. Such as a vat full of them? Yes, indeed, Cinnamon. That would definitely do it. Thanks for your help, Professor. Oh, only a pleasure, Tabby, and if you... There it goes! After it, boys! Don't let the claws touch you! You'll be turned into... Professor? Ah, I'm sure she's fine. So exposing Duncan to a lot of these worms may make him lucid? Seems like, sir. Okay, all right, I'm gonna see what I can do to pull that off then. Let's open this. Now, sticking this mannequin's head on a pole is a bit grotesque, but I'm sure he won't complain. Hey, that doesn't look half bad. I bet that I could win the student art prize at Meow Meow Furrington University. Well, when in doubt, lie, as Dad used to say. Actually, Ramon, that was a lie, too. He never said that. Hey, Duncan, there's a cat out here who wants to buy all the milk in the world. Can you help him with that? Yeah. 
If I can't bring the worms to Duncan, maybe I can introduce Duncan to the worms. This is to help you, Duncan. Don't hate me. Or drown, okay? Monstrip! <laughs> Wow, you can really smell that vat from up here now. Duncan falling in must have stirred things up. I, uh, what? Where am I? Duncan, you're, you're lucid! Oh, hooray for worms! Worms? I, how did, who are you? You don't remember me, the, the establishment, the garden, being Mousezilla? I remember. Suits. So many suits. And, yes, you chased me. Yes, yes, I'm Cuddles Nutterbutter. I've been investigating a murder, and, well, you're right in the middle of the mess. Who are you making fluff for? Um, do you remember killing a white cat? Killing? No, never. I, I, I only did what they said. Who, Scarlet or Bartholomew? Uh. Uh, I'll get hurt again if I tell. <laughs> no, Duncan, whomever is behind this, I can protect you from them. I promise you, you will be safe. But I need to know what is their name. Who is B? B, B Beatrice! Beatrice? Wait, wait, what, what? That's not a common name. And uh, I've heard it tonight already. Beatrice Magtheridon? Tybalt's aunt? The, the cat that owns the costume shop that you... Oh, yeah, okay. But, but why? She's richer than ten fat monkeys in a golden jacuzzi. Why make fluff? I don't know. She's scary. You make her mad. But don't do as she says. She sends hench tigers after you. Or her lackeys will hit you and call you names. <laughs> and if you need to disappear, she takes you out to the train tracks. And then... Uh... <laughs> I saw the head in the fridge, I think I can imagine. Oh, so that's what happened to Cosmo's supplier, I guess. <sighs> Yikes. Well, uh, arresting an old lady shouldn't be too difficult, at least. What happened to you, Duncan? How did you end up like you were? I was a scientist. She came to me with an idea, and she paid a lot of money. I... I was greedy with her funding. I set up this factory, experimented on plants, figured out how to make something more addictive than nip. Fluff hurts cats, Duncan. Fluff gets people killed. Gumdrop, Edgar, who knows how many others? I know. I mean, I knew. I just, I didn't think they mattered. Lowlifes, I thought. Addicts. Nobody cares. But I've been stuck in a fluff trip for so long, Cuddles. In that world... It's horrible. You can't escape. All you can think is more fluff. I made a terrible mistake. I know that now, and I'm ready to pay for it. So you've been causing all those sightings of Mousezilla? Yes. My idea before, the fog, take an existing urban legend and slide into it. If someone saw you, you just ran away. No one, nobody would believe them. What about Edgar? I know you were there the night he died. If you didn't kill him, as you claim, who did? I didn't. I, I didn't, I swear. I'm still a bit foggy, but I, I never, I never hurt anyone, ever. I got a call that night from one of her lackeys. Told me to come to Nitty Kitty Club. I went up an elevator. Bartholomew's office. If, uh, if, if you say so. There was, uh... A body. I, I carried it downstairs, dumped it in the main area, stuffed a nip bag they gave me into his hand, uh, left out the back door. Okay, so Beatrice sends someone to break into Bartholomew's office to dig around for information. They must have been rifling through the safe itself. Then Edgar shows up and surprises them, and they kill him with the first thing at hand, the award. So it was an accident? <laughs> After all this, I, I can hardly believe it. Your testimony, along with everything here, will be more than enough evidence to put Beatrice and her little operation away. Good. She needs to... to stop hurting people. Well, don't get too excited. You're still an accomplice, Duncan. I can't overlook that. 
I can keep you safe, but I can't stop the courts. I'll need you to come with me to the police station. I understand, Detective. I'm ready to face the consequences of my actions. Can I have a, a few moments for myself? I don't have much here, but I have some things in my shack I'd like to collect. Sure, I'll meet you at the top. Ramon, I solved it. It was Beatrice. Duncan's been dressing up as Melzilla for her and selling fluff out of Eustace's mausoleum. He's been out of his head on fluff dust, but I cured him with some worms. That bit sounds a little bit mad, um, but it's the truth. <laughs> oh, that is strong. Huh. Feeling a little woozy. He'd better move away. Cuddles. Desiree? Hi! What are you doing here? Did Tabby tell you where to find me? Who are your friends? There's so many of them. Did you get your sandwich? I suppose even the blindest P.I. can stumble onto the truth by sheer chance. Oh no! What did blind Paulus Greg do now? You! It's you, you idiot! I thought Edgar was stupid, but you've proven there's no limit to the foolishness of cats in this city! Sorry, Desiree, I don't... Huh? Oh, my head is really spinning. The, the fluff. Oh, she's making fluff here! Beatrice! I, I, a cat man, mastermind named Beatrice is making fluff? She, uh... Beatrice? She couldn't mastermind a potato salad. I'm in control of this, you fool. You understand? I am the cat forging this organization. I use her, not the other way around. All that ancient crone does is throw money around and tie people to train tracks. She wants people to respect her mad family, but she won't stop acting like she ate an entire bush of fluff worms. Meanwhile, I'm the one out there doing what needs to be done. When Bartholomew falls, it will be my face he sees looking back at him. <laughs> but you were locked in a chest. Dumb as a pit of kitten litter. I locked myself in. It should have been so easy to throw you off the trail. But you just wouldn't stop digging. I thought I'd pushed you towards Bartholomew. But then Duncan told me about your encounter at the garden. And I knew I needed to find out what you knew. Thanks for letting me ransack your office for clues. Undisturbed. Sure thing. No, wait, I mean, <laughs> joke's on you, there weren't any there. True, but I had to be sure you didn't have any evidence lying around. <laughs> You're no Alfonso, that's for sure. When you so helpfully said that you had a lead on Mousilla, I just knew that that walking pile of confusion would let you follow him here. Speaking of borderline incompetence, here it is. At least this milky dum-dum kept you busy until I got here. Duncan! Get Mousy Squeak Suit! Go Puppet Land! If you did anything to Tabby, the girls are gonna be so mad at you. Oh, oh they're just, they're gonna just get you. They're gonna get ya. You think I'm threatened by a secretary? <laughs> what will she do? Write me as a mean sticky note? Bring him. Sounds like he breathed in the vat fumes. He's gonna be loopy for a while. My head felt like a pack of marbles inside a tumble dryer at full speed, but I could see that Platy was distracted. I had one shot. I fumbled the Ramon out of my pocket and quickly pressed the button to record. Uh, Doctor? No, not Duncan, you moron! The useless P.I. Oh, okay, because Duncan is my family. I don't care! Get him and let's go! Uh, Duncan? The P.I. Did you leave your brain at the quartermaster or something? Pay attention, or I'll send you to Beatrice and her trains. No, sorry, boss. Okay, sorry, boss. What's that? What are you doing? Almost clever. Of course, now your stupid little tape machine is lost in the trash, and nobody will ever find it. So once again, you fail. Take him! We're done here. 
You'll never take me alive. Uh, my head. What? Uh, where? Where am I? Nutter, butter. Hmm. What flavor should I spray on Cuddle's door tomorrow? Perhaps lychee. Haven't done that one in a while. Although it did give him the zoomies. Uh, hello, sir. Can I help you? Uh, uh, is this Nutter Butter Investigations? That's right. If there's a bad thing happening you don't want to happen... Yes, there is. My name is Duncan. I, I was... <gasps> Duncan! Are you the one Cuddles has been dealing with? Y yes. Oh, you're Mousezilla, and th the milk seller, and the, dr the drug dealer. You have t too many jobs. Please, please, let me explain. What are you doing here? Where's Cuddles? You better not have heard him or the girls and I are gonna have a short, sharp chat with ya. I'm sorry. Cuddles is gone. She, she took him. What? Who did? Duncan, tell me. My head, uh, it's still so confused. Uh, he... He dropped this. I'm Tony Ramon. I figured out the best place for a nap and meow. <sighs> Come on, sir. Oh, Ramon, it was the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. And that down oh, nowhere it's gone. And that isn't going to get me. Ah, Ramon, I'm there. Okay. If anyone hears this. Oh, my name is Cuddles, not about it. He's coming back. Here's a big say now. I... I just... I took a quick lick of Tabby's sandwich. When, uh, when she wasn't looking, it was gross. She put mustard on it. It makes me all burpy. She always judges my lunch. She says, Cuddles, a cupcake is a... Yeah, well, a sandwich with only mustard on it, Tabby, isn't a lunch either. Would you quit judging me for buying cupcakes? It's not like I do it every day. <clears throat> make sure to... I'll make a note to not tell Tabby that it was gross. Uh, why don't you put mustard, just mustard on bread? Thank you. What? Making a mental note to discuss that at some point. Desiree's here, and she's got thugs with her. She's working with Beatrice. Oh, uh, they're so big and scary. Uh, Tabby, 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 if you find this, call the police. Call the police. It's, it's Desiree, Tabby. <gasps> Cuddles. <gasps> that lying little Molly, pretending she was so scared for her well-being. Oh, and Beatrice. Her stupid fake murder and her stupid trains. Oh, I'll give them both something to be properly afraid of. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know what was happening. I, I think Cuddles thought I tricked him. Oh, never mind that now. Do you know where Platy might have taken him? Nothing Cuddles described at the junkyard sounded like a headquarters. Where does she operate out of? I, uh, the puppet place? Scary puppets? What? Scary puppets? You mean Lappy and Geronimo? Oh, I'm so sad that I know that. Yes, the, the, the big tent. A big tent? Like, oh, the abandoned amusement park? Lappy and Geronimo's land of nightmares or whatever. Yes. Right. You, listen. Go to the police. Ask for Fuzzball. Tell him everything. Do you understand? Uh, police, fuzzball, everything. Tell them to come to the abandoned amusement park right now. Yes, yes. Do you still have that Mousezilla suit? It's right here. Hand it over. What are you going to do? The police might be too late. I need to make sure he's all right. I'm going to rescue Cuddles! Slow elevator? So slow! Oh, I keep asking them to do something about it. It takes like a minute to arrive! Ugh. Right. Remember, police, platy, fuzzball, amusement park. P police, uh, uh, amusement park! Well, girls, it looks like we've got ourselves a P.I. to rescue. <laughs> Gar 
guards, right. Must be the hench tigers that Cuddles mentioned. Come on, Seven. Just tell me. Ah, oh, forget it, Ralph. I can't forget it. You're annoyed about something. I can tell. I'm not annoyed. But that scarf isn't... Wait, shut up. Someone's here. Shove off. Good evening. I am a reporter doing a piece on the, uh, history of Lappy and Geronimo. Don't care. This whole place is condemned. Too dangerous. Get out of here before something falls on you. Like a roller coaster? Like my fist. <laughs> Rude. Should be able to change unseen inside here. Time to see if this suit works as well as I hope. All right, she's gone. Just tell me, what's the matter? Ugh, fine. You want to know what's got me annoyed, Twelve? Your scarf. <gasps> what? Why? I love this scarf. It really sets off my fur. It... No, it doesn't. The scarf is orange and so is your fur. If anything, they blend together in a confusing amalgam that... Ugh. Just forget it. That's not the point. You can't wear it anymore, Twelve. Says you. I checked the handbook, and there was nothing about invalid work attire. So I think you'll find that I'm well within my rights. What handbook? We don't have a handbook. We're hench tigers. Someone wasn't paying attention during orientation, I see. And thanks to my scarf, we're now hench tigers with style. Uh, since when is style part of our remit? We're supposed to look threatening and do as we're told. I can look threatening and fabulous at the same time. Thank you very much. No, Twelve? No, you can't. And I know that because we all look the same and none of us can pull that off. Your scarf is ruining the effect. And the other hinge tigers are really concerned that in the event of an enemy incursion, the scarf will lead to a rout. Who cares about them? I have the heart of a tiger. Where? In a jar? You can't have the heart of a tiger, Twelve, because we're not real tigers. That's just what we're called. Because when someone says, a wall of hench tigers is coming towards us, they get scared. Whereas when someone says, a wall of random cats plus one with a scarf is coming towards us, the effect is significantly less imposing. Yeah, but perhaps. Right, so listen. Perhaps if we all wore scarves, they'll say, look at all those hench tigers wearing scarves. They're not afraid to express themselves. And that makes me feel insecure about myself. So I'm going to run away. Ah, oh, Twelve, do you know the zebra effect? It's what keeps hench tigers like you and me safe. We all look identical. So when we hang out in large numbers, like here, we blend together. It's intimidating. People don't see us as individuals. We're just a mass of muscle. They get scared, and they run away. And we don't have to fight anyone. So? So? If one of us decides to wear, oh, I don't know, a scarf, then suddenly they're different, able to be picked out of a group. Oh, people will say, look at that one specific hench tiger. They don't look like the others, and their scarf doesn't even go with their fur. They must be weaker than the rest, both physically and emotionally. Let's go for them first. And then, bing, bang, bosh. You got someone smacking your head with a tree branch, and the rest of us are being chased around like common house cats. Mm, that doesn't sound very likely. <sighs> Take off the scarf, Twelve. Ugh, when last did Duncan wash this? Uh, has he ever washed it? Ugh, Cuddles isn't the only one whose life might be in danger now. <laughs> hey, Duncan. Come here. Heard you lured that annoying P.I. to your junkyard to trap him. Squeak? <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Couldn't have said it better myself. Listen, let me ask you something. What do you think of Twelve Scarf? Squeak! Er, uh, squeak. You what? How could you say that? I'm a person, Duncan. I have feelings and value. Whiskers, Duncan? I was trying to be more diplomatic than that. But he, he's, he's right, Twelve. You're all meanies. I'm going to the tent. Truth hurts, Twelve. You'll get over it. That was pretty harsh, Duncan. Something got you in a bad mood today? Someone drink all your milk? Anyway, guess you're looking for Desiree? She's inside somewhere. Duncan, you working tonight? S -s -s squeak. Whoa, don't have to bite my head off. Fine, fine, no more questions. 
But since you're here, you'll need to come to the tent later. The quartermaster scheduled mandatory sensitivity training today for all staff. She heard someone say she's more of a voo don't, and now we all have to listen to a lecture on not disrespecting people's masks. And that's why you'll never get me to talk. I don't want you to talk for the tenth time. Shut up. Oh, you just love that, wouldn't you, Platty? Yes! And stop calling me that. Well, I don't want to. Platty, Platty, Platty. Meow, meow, meow. Who would ever take the Cremiston crime family seriously, huh? What are you going to do? Going to rob bake sales, Platty? <sighs> Can't we measure him, Bus? We could, but someone didn't bring anything to gag him with. Was, was it me? Okay, but they said they had to take my sister to her drama class, uh, so I was in the rush, but I don't hear so good on my own ear holes. So when you yelled at me over the phone, I got flustered, and I did. Uh, remind me, what did you bring instead of a gag? A tag from my shirt. Right. So, we won't be muzzling him, and your punishment is to stay here and listen to him spouting fluff induced madness! <laughs> Foiled by your own minions! Speaking of which, here's your mousy one too, Duncan, or as I will now call you, the trainer mouse! No cat! Your mouse cat! Come to tell me more distracting lies while you wait for your boss to kidnap me again. Why would I kidnap you again? I already caught you! I don't know! You're the criminal mastermind! You are a very annoying prisoner. Did you know that? Duncan! Stay here with Five and watch this fool! I'm going to get the airship ready. <laughs> That's right. Run away in terror from my implacable truths. You won't get away with this. All right, guys! So listen, she's gotten away with this, but only for now, there's still a chance. Join me, join the good guys, we can team up and put an end to Platy's drug empire and you'll be a hero. I'll put a good word for you in with the police, they love me. No. Come on, you can work for me, I've always wanted someone to stand threateningly behind me during interrogations. You never, you never heard a good cop? Terrifying hench tiger. No, oh, I'm sick of your voice already. The cat, stay here. I'll start guard outside. Squeak. I should have never trusted you, Duncan. This is your master plan all along. Lower my suspicions, lure me to a junkyard, make me lick a worm. You monster, how many years have you been planning this? Ten years? A hundred? No, a thousand? Cuddles, it's me. Tabby, you have been eaten by Mousezilla. Oh, no. <gasps> you were Mousezilla the whole time? I knew it. What? No, I, I got the suit from Duncan. He brought Ramon to me after you were kidnapped, and I heard everything. And now, I'm here to rescue you. Oh, wow, Tabby! No one's ever rescued me before! This is amazing! Best day ever! Alright, here's the plan. You head back to the office and call the remote. Police and I will track Platty down and stop her from escaping. Cuddles, do you feel alright? You seem manic, more than usual. I've literally never felt better, Tabby. <laughs> Tabster, Tabaroony, Taba, Wabba, Gongo, Skronk. Right. Oh, yeah. Cuddles, listen to me. I think you've been drugged. Did they give you anything? Did you lick anything? Worm. Okay, yes, the worm. Sorry about that. 
But the professor said that would be safe, so please tell me you didn't lick anything else. <laughs> I don't need to lick things, Tabio. The air is my drug. <laughs> of course, the air at the junkyard must be saturated with raw fluff powder. Oh, I hope you didn't breathe in too much of it. Hey, <laughs> I am in a cage. Can you see? Look at me. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna get you out of there. Somehow. <laughs> sir, focus. Oh, I'm really sorry, but you need this. <gasps> oh, Alfonso is a better PI than you! What did you just... But if you solve this case, sir, you can change that. No, not a case. A toad. This is the one, sir. The big, bumpy, leathery toad of a case that's gonna make us... make you famous. It'll be Alfonso's turn to be number two. So I need you to concentrate and be rational, because we're gonna have to work together to figure this out to stop that dirty Molly Platy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got this, Tabby. I'm in control. My head's uh, a bit light, but I'll push through. I... But you, you need to... Cuddles, if you so much as suggest that I go back to the office, you'll regret it. The girls and I did not come all this way to save you, only to turn around and... Uh! <laughs> Are you kidding, Tabby? I I once saw you put a guy in a chokehold for ten minutes because he pushed his girlfriend around at a bar. You are terrifying. Uh, of course, I, I want you watching my back. I, I, I was going to say, you need to get me out of this cage. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, let's do that. Duncan! Did you clog up the port a little again? Seven says it's making a noise like his stomach after he visits Porky Pete's. Squeak? Uh, I knew it! Uh, what is wrong with all of you? Go and clean it up immediately! S squeak Well, that's not my problem now, is it? You should have thought of that before you started wearing big, fat, clumsy suits all the time. Do you know how much I already have on my plate, and now you're putting this on me, too? Squeak! Oh, fine, I'll go do it like I do everything. I'm making this your problem in exchange. Kitty said to get rid of it. It's some cat's collection of trash, I don't know. <laughs> Squeakers? It's a briefcase. What does it look like? And I don't care what you do with it. Eat it, burn it, throw it in the ocean. I don't care, just make it not my problem, all right? Squeak? Do not take that tone with me. Get out of here! This must be everything Cuddles had in his briefcase. Maybe there's something in here that could... Was this a singed plushie? Oh, Whiskers, I hope he can improvise. Here's a stick? I only have one, so we'll have to share. That really won't be necessary, sir. This looks useful. I told you, Tabby. We need to patent the whip hook before someone else invents it. Right after we stop the murderer, sir. Right, yes, but straight after that. Maybe if I wrap the whip around the bars, you can pull on it or something? Perhaps I can use this to twist the bars? Tabby, it's working! The bars are bending. Almost there! 
Yes! I'm free, Cuddles Nutter Butter! Destroyer of cages! Oh, we will make them rue the day they put me in there! Tabby, here's the plan. I'm gonna get into that Mousezilla suit with you, with each of us operating one half of it. We'll explore and identify all the key locations. Dibs on top half. Once that's done, we'll feign a broken leg and fall over, oh, screaming for help. When the hench tigers gather in concern, we'll burst out of the suit like a mousy pinata. They will assume Duncan has exploded from a fluff overdose and faint. I will then tie them up while you muffle them with the scraps from the suit. Finally, we'll dress up as the hench tigers, find Platy, and work our way into her confidence over a period of weeks. Then one day, when she least expects it, justice! That's a, a very intricate plan, sir. Good work. But uh, what if we try something else first? Well, I suppose we can give that a shot. But if it all goes south, combo suit time. I Oh, 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 I think the fluff taught me karate! I don't! Oh, 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 yeah. uh, squeak! What do you want to Squeaky, squeak, squeak, squeakerino! Thanks, Doctor, but I'd rather stay here. I don't want to run into Miss Kitty again because she's so mean to me. Squeaky, squeak, 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 uh, squeaker. Your generosity is truly touching, my friend, but I'm going to stay here and think about my life. Do you ever do that? It's okay. Wonder about the steps you took that ended with you standing here in a mouse suit, talking to Cat with a painted on stride. I've made a lot of choices to get here, and sometimes when I'm laying in bed at night, they haunt me. Squeaky, squeak, 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 squeaker. Your generosity is truly to wonder about this day. I've made a lot of choices. Squeak? Squeak! Squeak! Oh, not right. Well, this should draw the hench tiger's attention. I just need to pick a suitably attention-grabbing statement. You want? Can you put some watermelon on that for me? Yeah. Yes, I know it's a hot dog. I guess the watermelon thing? Sure. Uh, squeak! What do you want to duck in? Squeaky, squeak, squeak! Uh, he can't have a skirt. No. He went for that. Oh, Ramon, it was the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life! And that, oh, no one's gone! And that isn't gonna get me! <laughs> well, how did he escape? Oh, oh Platy will blow her top if she fights out. Don't care, follow me. He must be hiding in here, Duncan. You keep an eye out till I look for him. Push this down, it should land on the hench tiger outside. Oh, but I'm gonna need some more force. Sir, come and help me push down this wall. Uh. Oh, did you hear that? I think it landed on the hench tiger outside. <laughs> He's not going anywhere, right? <laughs> It seems like all the hench tigers are in there, sir. Some kind of meeting. I can hear Platy too. I'll sneak in quickly and see what's going on. Be careful, Tabby. I will, sir. Take all the things I've got on me in case they make a noise. I need to keep a low profile. Oh, good thinking. Yeah, you're like a super spy. So remember, 
Management expects you to be the best tense tiger you can be. And if you can't, Beatrice will tie you down and run a train over you. Next agenda point. There have been more complaints of certain henches consuming other henches' lunches. Now, I, I don't want to point claws, <coughs> six, <coughs> uh, but if we could all just be respectful of one another's food, it will certainly help to maintain a positive work environment. Oh, Duncan, come here for a minute. So, guys, I know we've been having a tough time the last few days, what with the dead Montemus making the customers jittery and all. I spoke to Miss K and Miss B and got permission for a little entertainment. <laughs> They've been working on a new strain of fluff, and from what I've seen, it's gonna be a hit. Take a look at this. Duncan, breathe in. Squeak. <gasps> Ummy! Bam! Slam! I bleed! <laughs> Not in the face! Kapow! Tell my kittens, I love them. Tabby, Tabby, can you hear me? Cuddles? Why are you a floating head? <laughs> Gosh, your eyes, Tabby. <laughs> I think they blew some fluff into your face. Here, sit down, Tabs. Deep breaths. <sighs> that was incredible, though, Tabs. I heard screaming, and I ran in to save you, but you knocked them all out. What? Who? The, the, the floating inflatable clown, maybe? Oh. I don't feel good, sir. Ooh. Okay, let's get you out of that suit. It's covered in the stuff. Big breaths, okay? <sighs> okay, there you go, Taps. <coughs> Thanks for getting the fluff off me, sir. Ooh, I didn't like that. Are you feeling all right, Taps? I'm... Ugh. I feel more like myself again, sir, but my head's still swimming, and... What? What's wrong? Um, quick question. Are my legs maybe... Are they still balloons? Or blue? Wow. Um, okay, you keep resting, Tabs. Uh, I'll poke around. That looks technical. Maybe there's some info on there. Tabby, look at this! I mean, no, don't. Stay there and rest. But it's all here. The junkyard, manufacturing numbers, equipment designs. Oh, Platy's been using an airship to shuttle the fluff from the junkyard to here for distribution right across the bay at night. An airship? Sir, she said she was going to get the airship ready when I found you in the cage. Oh, Whiskers, she's probably going to try to use that to get away. That exit there has to lead to the airship. Quick, help me up. We'll make sure she doesn't... Ooh, my head. Tabby! I'm fine. Let's go. The girls and I have a few things we want to say to that kidnapping little cucumber head. Tabby, you're, you're not fine. You just sucked in a small child's weight in fluff. I barely breathed in any at the junkyard, and you saw what it did to me. It doesn't matter how I feel, sir. We can't let her get away. I know, I know, and I, I won't. You've helped me more than enough on this case already, Tabby, and you're in no shape to do anything until the fluff wears off. Don't worry. I've got this. I have a brilliant plan. Does it in any way involve disguising yourself as Mousezilla and working your way into her confidence over a period of weeks? <laughs> Not this time, Tabster. I promise. You keep resting and catch the police up on everything when they get here. I'm going to stop Platy. I don't like you doing this alone, sir, but I trust you. Go get her.
Thanks for all your help, Taps, on everything. I'll see you soon, okay? Remember, deep breaths. This isn't the first time I've been accidentally dosed with hallucinogens in a tent, sir. Oh, that's good to hear. Wait, wait what? That, I, 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 yeah, I don't get it. Just go. There's the airship. Whiskers, that thing is huge, and it's getting ready to take off. You'll have to try harder than that to escape me, Platty. Oh, platty, platty, bo batty. Come out, come out wherever you are. This is what I get for relying on other people. I suppose the hench tiger simply let you out when you asked. <laughs> I escaped, actually, with my skills and a stick and a sexy whip. No, not a sexy whip. For, for, forget that bit. Point is, it's over now, platty. You got nowhere to go, and the police are heading our way. Nowhere to go? How you tracked me this far, I'll never understand. Do you even have a brain? I'm on an airship, you buffoon. I can go anywhere I like. As for the police, well, they're welcome to all the hench tigers they can round up at that decrepit park. I'll be long gone before the sun rises. You won't get away with this? I already have, you moron. I have an airship full of fluff, a bag of bees money, and a pocket full of seeds. You and your meddling have ultimately achieved nothing. So I can't go back to Meow Meow Furrington, so what? I can take my pick of other countries and simply start over. I'll treat this whole escapade as a learning opportunity. <laughs> as for you, well... Your body can be a cautionary tale for this traitorous city when it washes up on shore tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> whoa there, I see. Okay, okay, gun time. Already, fair enough, but indulge me a little bit first. I am so tired of your whiny voice. No! You're done! Take a good look out at the city you've worked so tirelessly to help. It doesn't care. It barely knows you exist. And once we get over deep water, I'll send your body down into it. It'll forget even that much. <laughs> well then, I guess we've got something in common because it doesn't know you exist either, Platty. We have nothing in common, you worm. The city will learn what I tried to do, and the people will agree. And it will be your name that they try to forget. Huddles Nutter Butter, the cat who ruined everything. Oh, I think not, Ms. Dramatic. My assistant has my dire recorder. She knows exactly how things actually went down. Duncan will confess. Your partner in crime, Beatrice, will be arrested, and you'll be nothing but a footnote on the coffee-stained pages of this case. If anything, Edgar will emerge as the hero, the only one in this whole sorry mess who maybe tried to do something that would be good for everyone else, not just for himself. Edgar? A hero? <laughs> Never! He was a Montemue! Just because Edgar was a Montemute doesn't mean he was just treading the same path. He had lost someone he cared about. He was trying to make things better. He could have united the families, Montemute and Cachulet, under one person. He could have been negotiated with. Things could have been different. But you've set them at each other's throats now, and who knows how bad things will get before it's over. I'm glad I killed him, men. Why don't you see it? We need them to fight amongst themselves to weaken one another. The Montemus, the Catulets, the Megtheridons, they're all just cats who got lucky in life and never had to sacrifice anything for what they have. They can't change. None of them can change. And cats like you, you just keep making excuses for them. You're complicit. I don't support what they do, but that doesn't mean I believe people should go around murdering them. That doesn't make me complicit. It makes me better. It makes you the same. 
You do nothing. I have worked. I have planned. I have given everything all by myself. And cats like you want me to let them just carry on? No! They don't deserve what they have. I do. So I will take it all and do it all properly. Platy, the crime lord, here to ruin the day. Stop calling me that stupid name. She won't exist much longer. Nobody will remember her. But I'll make sure they remember Kitty. If by remember you mean hate, then sure. You think cats will praise you for creating fluff after it ruins their city? I don't care. Better to be hated than powerless. You seem to think the people will side with you even as you ignore every single individual you've abused. What about Duncan, for example? You kept him addled on fluff, making and selling drugs for you. Fluff ruined him. He had a respectable life before you. Who knows if he'll ever recover? And you want to do the same to countless others. Oh, please. He leapt at the chance to get involved. He was quite the nip user already, I suspect. Probably needed the money to keep the habit or something. I still had to do almost everything myself. He truly is useless. But at least he can do one last good thing. And help take the fall for all this. You know, the Montemus and the Catulets keep their power because they're not foolish enough to throw the people they depend on under the bus the moment the winds change. It's not a failing to need others, Platy. Do you get that? Everyone does. In some way. Family, friends, co-workers. And that is why they will all fail. Weak points. Look at you with your sad little secretary. She couldn't stop you ending up here with a gun on you, did she? Oh, she could have. But I didn't want her to go to prison for beating you senseless. Like I said. Weakness! You must realize that by running away, you're leaving the door open to B getting all the credit for this instead of you. B? Beatrice? <laughs> she can barely string a sentence together. She's moggy about trains. She couldn't mastermind a... Potato salad, yes, you've mentioned, but somehow you've missed the simple fact that all you need to do to convince people of something is to confirm their expectations. The city knows about the Magtheridons, old money weirdos who live in crazy castles. Of course one was masterminding a drug operation. It will take no convincing at all. It's her that your hench tigers are really afraid of, after all. She's the one putting heads in freezers to motivate people. She's the one running cats over with trains. I can see the headline now. Weirdo Meg Theradon kills innocent Montemu and also city's most beloved P.I. while running secret drug ring, because of course she did. They all know what I did. Nobody will fall for that pathetic lie. Maybe, 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 but my secretary, <laughs> the one you were so dismissive about, she's real smart, and she'll be pretty mad that you shot me. So I, I think, I think she'll put her writing talents to use and make sure that not a single newspaper article so much as mentions the name Platy Cremiston. It doesn't matter. I will return one day, and when I do, when this city is crying out to be saved from those monsters, then they will welcome me back with open arms. So Edgar was just someone for you to exploit, and yet you think you're better than any of the other families. Edgar was a fool. If it hadn't been me, it would have just been someone else. Or it would have been nobody, and he would have lived a long and fulfilling life. You don't know. None of us know, Platy, and you can't invoke fate like a washcloth to sweep across the past and erase what you wrote there. What I wrote? It's his own fault he died. All I did was sneak the keycard for his father's office out of his jacket at the club that night. He was already so drunk he never noticed. I was gonna leave it in my room after and tell him he dropped it if he came asking. But I left the elevator unlocked for a quick escape and he... He wasn't supposed to come back! I just wanted some dirt on Bartholomew! Platy, what are you doing? Did you steal my card? Edgar, darling. Uh, uh, I'm so glad you're here. 
We need to talk. Answer the question, Platy. Platy, look at me. I told you not to call me Platy! wasn't planned. Figures. The body being moved hardly any distance, the messy clues left all over, leaving the murder weapon in Bartholomew's safe. Very you, all in all. Well done for sticking to your brand, Platy. Selfish short-sightedness. Your stupidity is truly incredible. <laughs> Are you insulting me while I have a gun on you? Uh, for that matter, do you really think you could just climb on board and stop me? Well, I had a small hope that you'd just turn yourself in, but then the gun came out, and that wasn't entirely unexpected. You're just the sort to carry one, after all. Now, normally I'd make up a half-baked plan on the fly, same as you like to do, but not this time. No, 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 not this time. I knew exactly what to do before I climbed on board. And when I put that plan in motion, you didn't even realize it. You didn't even realize it's happening right now, and it's working. Perfectly. Plan? <laughs> what plan? Flying police cars coming to arrest me? Some unlikely homemade contraption of rubber bands and exercise weights designed to incapacitate me? Nothing that grand. See, my best friend is sitting in that big tent of yours, slowly coming down from a dangerous high that your fluff sent her on. And that made me mad. I finally understand what was going on in Edgar's head when he found out that Gumdrop died of fluff. He was like me, couldn't just stand aside and watch his friends suffer. She's pretty unstoppable, Tabby is, but that fluff did a number on her. Still, if I'd let her, she'd definitely have climbed on board and tried to claw you to shreds. But, like I said, I kinda anticipated the gun, and I would rather die than see that amazing cat get hurt anymore by the likes of you, Platty. So, I had to do this, because if I didn't, no force on Firth could have stopped Tabby, drugged or not, from doing it herself. That's your genius plan? Come after me so she won't? <laughs> That's not a plan. That's idiotic. Suicidal. Weakness. Well, half the plan. The second half is even simpler. Keep you talking until we've flown far enough away that she won't hear the gunshot. You know... Maybe I was wrong about you. I don't think others have made you weak at all. I think the weakness is just who you are. <laughs> what sort of selective world do you see through those eyes, I wonder? Then again, I don't really care. Goodbye, Cuddles. I thought it was all over for me then. I was prepared to die. What I wasn't expecting was to live, really. It was a genuine problem. Surviving the bullet almost killed me. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, cucumbers, that hurt. <laughs> How am I not dead? Just keep shimmying. Just keep shimmying. And don't die. Oh, it'd be pretty depressing to survive being shot and then fall to my death right after. Just wide enough to not get stuck on my cake hand. I mean, I mean, my love handles. Made it. <sighs> Almost there. The bullet hit my badge head on. <laughs> oh, wow. I will never again complain about how heavy it is. Wog. Duncan, you imbecile! What are you doing in the cargo hold? You're supposed to be guarding the idiot cat! Whoop, whoop, whoop! Charcoal underwear! Shut up! Now I'm stuck with you until we reach Pashan! You are so annoying. I don't want to see you once until we arrive, do you hear? Just stay down there and don't break anything! A dipsy rack! Come on, you big 
stupid cube. Pepe was right. You are the worst shape. There we go, Platty. All snug in that box. <laughs> Full of yummy fluff to give you a taste of what you put so many others through. Do they say vertical lines are slimming or fat? Nah, well, either way, you'll be behind some for the rest of your life. Lots of time to find that one out, sugar. Now, to land this thing without dying in a hugely ironic fireball. So, uh, this lever must control. Oh, whoa, what are you doing? Ship, stop turning upside down, friend. Ah! Now turn the other way. Yes. So, okay, thank you. Just stay like that. Ah, 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 ah. Why are you going up? I, I want to go down. Oh, Tabby, <laughs> Ramon, <laughs> and uh, someone help me. The ship has gone mad. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's it's fine. I, I pulled, I was pulling the up uh, lever, lever. Anyway, sorry, that's on me. <laughs> the labeling here is terrible. All right, down we go. Steady does it. Why am I upside down again? Okay, okay. I, oh, I got it. Yeah, that's okay. I'm almost there. Carefully, gently. Yeah. So, in my rush to uh, deliver the criminal straight into your paws, I aggressively deflighted the airship. But there you go. One selfish and very kidnappy murderer as requested. And then you arrived, and here we all are. The chief's not gonna believe this. It does sound pretty crazy when I explain the whole thing like that. Well, yeah. Mostly that you solved it. Hey, I am competent, you know. Yeah, yeah, you got your moment, sure. But this was a tough one. That's all I'm saying, Cuddles. Genuinely good work, though. I hope you find yourself something really nice to lick after this. I might just finish the whole bottle, but there's a couple stops I need to make first. The adrenaline from the murder attempt and the airship crash had worn off by the time I reached Scarlet's Theater. I felt exhausted. I was still a little dizzy from the fluff, and my chest ached where Platy's bullet had hit me. All I really wanted to do was go back to the office, have a sip from Billy, and give Tabby a huge hug. But I needed to end it. Edgar's death had been a cut deep into an already wounded family and the bleeding had to be stopped before it drowned this whole city. Scarlet looked like I felt, as if a ghost had stepped inside one of the many costumes around us, giving it life but lacking substance. Yet as she watched me approach, an invisible weight seemed to lift from her shoulders. You solved it, Chaton. I see it in your eyes. It was an accident. One of Bartholomew's people had ambitions. She was the one making and supplying fluff with some help from a rich backer. Edgar surprised her in Bartholomew's office, digging for dirt on him. She panicked, she hit him, and her eyes closed and she took a deep breath in. It was not Bartholomew. No. So you can call back your assassins or poisonous frogs or whatever. Nobody else has to die over this. Her breath escaped in an explosive rush, and her shoulders sagged. She suddenly seemed far older. <gasps> Thank you, Chaton. Uh -huh. I turned to leave, but paused. You know, you've been very insistent that Nip isn't that bad, and that you're not to blame for any of this. And I'll give you credit for this. You were smart enough to recognize that Edgar had a better plan than either of his parents had had in 30 years. Oh, Chaton. No, I brought your son's killer to justice. The least you can do is be quiet and listen. The market for fluff, the whole reason Platy and Beatrice were able to operate their scheme in the first place is because of you. 
You and Bartholomew, your ambitions to outdo one another have been blinding you to the consequences of your actions for so long. It is not ambition to want to be a good mother. You cannot begin to imagine what it has cost me every day to ensure he could live a good life. I don't have to imagine anything. I can walk out of here and see the city you two have twisted into your own image. The cats you've hurt. Edgar saw it, and he had a plan to fix, to at least try. That's more than either you or Bartholomew ever considered, apparently. But we'll never know if it would have worked, because in the end, he became just another victim. He only cared this time because he was your son. She was crying by then. Her expression twisted and furious. How dare you! I dare, because this is not your city! It belongs to all the cats who live here, not just the powerful ones! And maybe if I hammer that point home enough, I can crack open that stone wall around your heart and give us all hope for the future. Think about your son. Think about him constantly until the loss burns inside you like a son, and then think about doing his memory justice. Her look broke, and I saw I'd finally reached the young cat who had walked down the red carpet all those years ago. I... I don't know if I... Edgar didn't know either. He only believed it could be done. Do you? The tears coursed down a face full of fear, uncertainty, and pain. I turned and left, my footsteps the only sound in the deserted theater. I had one more stop. If visiting Scarlet had been a challenge, it was nothing compared to arriving at the Nitty Kitty. Edgar's face waited for me, forever young, forever gone. I stood there for I don't know how long, looking at him at all the flowers around his memorial. Who else had he touched in all those months? Who had he helped? Had I done this unknown cat justice? I tried, at least, as I'd promised I would. It was time. Bartholomew was looking out of the window when I entered, but he'd clearly been expecting me. He stood tall and steady, no whiskey in the air this time, nothing but the scent of expectation. Cuddles. Bartholomew? I've heard. Desiree. If all she wanted was money, she could have just asked. Money was only the start. What Platy really wanted was power. A Mag Theridon was bankrolling her, but she saw that as just a temporary arrangement. A Mag Theridon? Confusing wealth with influence once more. They will need a reminder of what happened the last time they tried that. Uh... All right. Anyway, I, I came here because I thought you might have some questions that I could answer. I have just one. Why? Why would Desiree have done this? Why go after Edgar? Why? Just bad luck. An accident. She wasn't interested in Edgar except as a means to get closer to you. You were always her goal. He simply showed up at the wrong time. She wanted to. Kill me? No, not kill, just break. Break down, I guess. She's jealous of what you have, and, and she wanted it for herself. She felt you hadn't earned it, and wanted to see you lose it so she could take the remains for herself. Hadn't earned it? Oh, Desiree, you fool. All these decades on, and I've learned nothing. I see into people, Cuddles. I find what drives them, and I use that to control them. And it works! Until it doesn't. Do you think I don't see that now? It's become painfully obvious that I have a blind spot for a certain type of cat. I tell myself I know their secrets, but I do not. One of them gave me Edgar all those long years ago, and now another has taken him away. I've answered my own question, it seems. Edgar died because of me. Honestly, Bartholomew? Yeah. The cat snorted in shocked disbelief at my calm agreement, but I was past caring. Edgar died because of your hubris. Would all of this have happened if you weren't who you are? Unlikely. One more thrust, Cuddles. The knife has not quite reached my heart. 
tough. I am not here to offer you absolution. Your actions, your choices to become this, to treat the city like your plaything, to slice it up between yourself and Scarlet, have made the cats of this city suffer for years. Don't expect any of us to open our hearts to you now. Unless you think you can threaten the pain to make it go away if you consider your power over us so complete. You... You know, you know, I think, I think that if you had a chance to give it all up to get him back but lose everything else in the process, I don't think you would. I finally saw what I had been hunting with my sharp words. Anguish. Not the look of loss or fury, but self-doubt and fear. For the first time, the cat before me looked as weak and mortal as I did, and in exchange for the small satisfaction that gave me, I had a balm. I was wrong about one thing when we last spoke. The note I found near Edgar, a gentle cat in the desert. It wasn't your fail- well, it was, but that, that wasn't why he hid it before he confronted Platy. It was a password. He was going to deliver it to the Catulets to help them bring down the Fluff Ring to win their support. Support? From the Catulets? I don't. To put an end to the rivalry between your families, Bartholomew. He didn't know who Scarlet was or your past history. She kept that from him, just as you did. Scarlet says he just wanted peace between the two families, a union to end the constant threat of conflict and make for a better city. I don't think he had any idea it would inadvertently have brought his parents back together. He was simply trying to make things better for all of us. The cat went silent for a long while, and I kept my expression neutral as I watched the tears streaming down his face. He was our son. And he was the best of both of us. He turned from me, facing the city, head bowed. I made to leave, but a final thought made me pause and turn back. Your son wanted peace between you and Scarlet. May I suggest trying to finish what he started? The big cat did not respond, but as I turned to leave, I saw his bowed head lift. Just a little. And then I left. Tossed the club key on the floor on my way out. I won't be going back. I'm done with him. With both of them. Wow. That's an incredible story when you put it all together like that, sir. I still can't believe how quickly you subdued Platy. What a novel use of a pile of rubber bands and exercise weights. <laughs> yeah, easy as pie. <laughs> And what luck that she was just standing right next to that open crate of fluff to fall into. <laughs> I'm just glad you weren't in any danger. None at all, Tabby. I had a plan the whole time. Don't need to worry about me one bit. Better keep it that way, mister. Do you think any of this will get through to Bartholomew or Scarlet? Make them reconsider what they do to the city. I honestly don't know, Tabs. I don't think they'll stay as they are, but whether things from here get better or worse, who knows? The whole city waits breathlessly to see. Did Fuzzball call while I was out, by the way? He said he was gonna send some people around to grab Beatrice at the costume shop. <laughs> no dice on that, sir. The chief called. With congratulations, by the way. But he said that when they got to the costume shop, it was already cleared out. The only thing left was mannequins posed in, um... <clears throat> rude positions. Beatrice was apparently competent enough to know when the jig was up. Probably skipped town the moment she got wind of Platy's arrest. With her resources, she could be anywhere by now. <sighs> Whiskers. Uh, at least we've stopped the supply of fluff, but it feels like we've missed the bigger fish. We didn't just stop fluff, sir. We caught a murderer. You did good. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I, I just mean... Tabby, is there something wrong with me? Wrong with you? Oh, sir, of course not. Why are you saying that? No reason, really. Just something someone said. I guess I do feel... I, I, I mean, I just worry that I don't see the city like everyone else. Like, when I go out there, I, I see a different world. I feel like maybe I don't see the grime and the mess and the worst in people. 
I mean, like, I see it, but I also don't, if that makes sense. Maybe if I'd been more focused and less helpful, I could have caught Platy sooner. Maybe then they would have caught Beatrice. I don't know. Tabby, do I choose not to see how bad things really are in the city sometimes? And does that make me worse at my job? No. Listen to me, Cuddles. I chose to work for you because you don't see the world like everyone else. It was clear from day one, believe me. The way you see everything in the world as an opportunity, the way you talk and listen to the cats you meet as if they exist, as if they matter, the way you don't stop trying until you find a way. Other people see it too, sir. They see how you act, how you shine a light into the city's dark places, and that gives them hope. And they need hope, sir. If you had to be less you to catch Beatrice, <laughs> well, I don't like that trade. Because you, as you are, are what the city needs more of. More cats taking on the criminals. More cats helping the little guy. More cats getting excited about the little things that happen every day. More cuddles. Oh, Tabs. You're gonna make me tear up. Thank you. That's actually made me feel better. Kinda feel like you know me better than I know myself sometimes. Anytime, sir. But with all that said, you do have some faults. One in particular comes to mind. Okay, Cuddles, I'll need a truthful answer to this question. Did you lick the mustard off my sandwich one day? I... Uh... You said as much on Ramon, Cuddles. I heard it very clearly. Ramon, you betray her! I, I mean, that... I was terrified. Yeah, there was a... A thing. I, I didn't know what I was saying. Fluff madness. Oh, my head. Come on, Tab. Do you really think I'm capable of that? I respect your sandwiches too much. Cuddles, you are absolutely capable of licking anything in the entire world. So I need to know if I ate a sandwich that you had previously licked. Yeah, but... Like, do you really need to know? Though, in the grand scheme of things, tongues appear, things get licked, sandwiches get eaten, first rolls on. What even is licking, if you really think about it, Tabs? Whoop, telephone call, gotta get this, Tab. Sorry, could be another case, hey! <laughs> I am not done with you, mister! Nutter Butter Investigations. We don't like sandwiches. How can I help you? <laughs> Hi there. I'm looking for a short cat who can't keep his tongue in his mouth. Trick! Oh, so good to hear from you. Tabby, it's Trick. Hi, Trick. How's things in Pashan? Well, that's why I'm calling, bro. I think I need your help. Something is happening here, something big, and I need help investigating it because I don't think the honey's going to be enough this time.
Ramon, it was the biggest scene I've ever seen in my life. 